Masters. Live from Augusta National with Mark Chapman on 5 Sports Extra and BBC Sounds. Welcome to Augusta National, the 88th Masters second round. Smattering of applause just dying down in the background there here on 15 where Tiger Woods has just uh, made his birdie putt. We'll tell you where he is very shortly. Our overnight leader was Bryson DeChambeau and he is still there with the world number one alongside him, Alistair Bruce Ball. Hotting up very nicely in the Augusta sunshine. Bryson DeChambeau playing the 10th, seven under par, level par for his round today. Scotty Scheffler, remember him? Well, he's picked up exactly from where he left off last night. On the fourth at the moment, birdie the second, also at seven under par. Max Homer has kept it going well. He's got a few holes still of his second round of play. He's at six under. Danny Willett chipped in or pitched in, shall I say, from 95 yards for Eagle on the par five eight today. He's at five under and he's also into his back nine. Clubhouse leader, Denmark's Nikolai Hoygaard at four under par. New Zealand's Ryan Fox also on that mark at four under par to pick out a couple of others. Ludwig Ober going well in his first Masters at two under. Matt Fitzpatrick Patrick also on the mark at two under par. Rory McIlroy's at one under. He's playing alongside Scotty Scheffler, so he is playing the fourth. He mi he's missed the green short left. And Tiger Woods, Mark, in front of you. I think he's going to be here for the weekend, currently at one over par. Yeah, uh, thanks to uh, that birdie. The cut is projected at the moment on four over par. It is a glorious day here in Augusta, Georgia. We had the, the rain yesterday. Yesterday morning, it meant a delayed start. So a few of the first round uh, groups had to finish their first round this morning and then they were straight into their second round. But it is a cloudless blue sky this Friday afternoon uh, here in the Southern State. And there is wind, which is testing the players a little bit, but it leads to a perfect temperature for the patrons here. That's how the spectators are known. So. It, the wind just takes a little bit of the heat of the sun uh, away uh, and it is a glorious afternoon to be watching golf. Let's just tidy up what's happened here on 15, first of all, because it is relevant to the leaderboard in Max Homer. And as Ali has said with Tiger Woods, it is relevant to the cut. And you will hear the applause in the background for Tiger as he makes his way onto the par 3 16th tee. John Murray is alongside me here. Well, Tiger Woods has hit the best shot that we've seen hit today. Okay. Off the tee at 15, the par 5 15th, he was on the top of the hill probably 250 yards or so from the green and, and only a handful of players have gone for this in two because it's against the wind today but Woods hit a magnificent shot in which was 25 yards left of the hole it, it's the only shot that we've seen land on the green in two today so he had the eagle put he wasn't able to hold that but he's rolled it in from close range which has taken him back to one over par for the tournament and with the cut set currently projected to be at four over it looks very likely barring something going very wrong over the course of the the final three holes that tiger woods will be here at the weekend and will therefore get the record for the most consecutive cuts made at the masters which will be 24 which will delight him it will delight uh the people who run uh, the Masters. It will delight the TV companies as well that Tiger will be here for the weekend. Just having a chat with his caddy uh, behind us, just in the shadows of one of the loblolly pines as he sizes up his tee shot on 16. So whilst he does that, let's head over to Amen Corner. Ian Carter and Andrew McGee are there for us with eyes on Danny Willett, who started the day four under, is now five under playing 12. Yeah, remarkable performance performance this from the 2016 champion playing his first tournament since September having undergone sh shoulder surgery he's just made a textbook par on the very difficult par for 11th and we have the classic scenario at Amen Corner again today with the flag on the 12th pointing in one direction directly away from the players and if they glance over to the left the flag 
That bright yellow flag on the 11th green is pointing in the opposite direction. Willett is standing, hands on hips, just laughing. He's been waiting to play this tee shot because up ahead of him, Jose Mario Lothabal racked up a triple bogey, six after visiting the water. The only player, been here for a good hour and a bit, and uh, he's the only player who's actually found the water while I've been watching, but now... Willett is pulling the club, Andrew McGee. Just put into context the performance we've seen from the Englishman so far. Oh, it's been terrific, and it's it's, it's interesting to see the, the first day scores. The, the boys get off to a hot start, but today things are getting much tighter. The lowest score we see, what, a under, couple under par, Danny Willett over the ball, 152 yards, golden bell, number 12, ball's in the air, he likes it. Yeah, it's just flying a little bit to the left. If the distance is OK, that should be fine. And it's just a fraction long, just a fraction long, but no real trouble for Willett on this uh, treacherous, treacherous par three that is so treacherous in these conditions. Well, the conditions are dictating everything. Everybody's staring up at the tops of these big loblolly pines to get it to get some kind of inkling of what it might do. But the left of this pin is the safe place to play. If you're right of this pin, you have made a mistake. Let's, uh, let's bring me back just here to 16, where Tiger Woods has continued his recent imperious form and put that, what, within 15, 20 feet of the pin, which is cut back right today on 16? Yeah, I would say, I would say 20 feet, probably. That's where Tyrrell Hatton was uh, a few minutes ago, and he left his put just short uh, Tyrrell Hatton, which, um, if I remember rightly, that was him at two over, wasn't it, for the, uh, for the tournament at the time. The other thing we should say, Max Holmes who's about to tee off on the 16th so this is the par 3 16th over the water Max Homer did not make any forward move at the par 5 15th he had a 25 footer for birdie but wasn't able to hold it so he remains in third the tall bearded American Ryder Cup player last year six under par and here's his tee shot at the 16th there's a nice murmur about it from the stands and there should be too it's right on line lands short and then rolls away to the left and max homer has a real live birdie chance there from round about 10 feet that would take him were he to hold it into a share of the lead that's a sensational shot from Max Homer as he tries to get level with Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler at the top of that leaderboard and Scotty Scheffler just continues serenely on his way doesn't he Alistair Bruce Ball yeah he does he and Rory McIlroy have just completed the par 3 fourth playing 226 yards today par 3 where they're up high they sort of play over a valley to an enormous green bunker left bunker front right Rory McIlroy uh, missed that green front left Trish, but I mean, knock, knock the chip pretty close, about four footer to save his par and Scheffler, probably slightly longer for his par putt on that green but absolutely rock steady, wasn't he? Yeah, it wasn't, what do you think six, no, not even six months ago three months ago, looking at Scheffler over that sort of length putt, you thought 50-50 mm, didn't have much confidence but all of a sudden he's gone to the mallet putter he's won back to back events and he just looks as solid as a rock over everything at the moment. Yeah, so Scotty Scheffler uh, the birdie on the second, otherwise blemish free uh, as it was yesterday as well, seven under par sharing the lead mark with Bryson DeChambeau and Rory McElroy remains at one under par but again Mark we've seen that contrast between McElroy and Scheffler over the first couple of holes Scheffler just plotting his way around beautifully stress-free putting himself in the right positions giving himself the chances first couple of holes McElroy off the tee found bunkers you know managed to to play the brilliant golf shots to sort of extricate himself from the trouble but in terms of trying to make ground on Scheffler and move forward he's just going to have to try try and sort of match the consistency and the brilliance of uh, of Scheffler because at the moment Scheffler is not putting a foot wrong Trish just uh uh, look, the, the majority of people listening to us will, will love their golf, I, I would imagine, and that's where, why they're with us this Friday evening on Sports Section. We do go on to Five Live, by the way, at nine o'clock as well. Just to explain, though, the difference that a mallet putter will have made for Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, well, really, to be perfectly honest, apart from, you know, it's the feel more than anything. He had like a, a sort of like ping, ping type, um, that type of putter, uh, what do you call it? The um, like the ping answer, that Is type of looking. No, it's not no. a blade. No, but the you know the the single a single length. Um, right. And and he's, but a mallet putter is a bigger headed putter. And and what it, and also it's probably. Um, 
uh, swing weighted as well. So it, 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 it gives you so much more leeway. With, with, uh, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm explaining this really well. Is Andrew there? Can we go to Andrew? Don't talk, talk to me. Okay. About, no, I'll start again. Basically, the gist of it is it gives you a lot more... Uh, sweet spot to hit with and also when you go to something completely different when you've been struggling with something and you suddenly are looking at something that is you know just the complete opposite to what you've had before and and all of a sudden putts start going in that's all it's about chappers at the end of the day it's about seeing something that actually you get some confidence with and he's racked with confidence at uh, the moment mark scotty scheffler has uh, played his drive off the fifth tee challenging par four front nine of course he's found the middle of the fairway bryson de chambeau joint leader soon going to be in the uh, sight of ian carter and andrew mcgee he's hit his tee shot down the right hand side uh, of the par 4 11th both he and scheffler uh, seven under par so de chambeau uh, very soon will be under the watchful gaze of, of Ian and Andrew at Amen Corner. Uh, Ian is watching Danny Willer, Andrew alongside him. Maybe he, he could add something to them. <laughs> 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 So Thank put, you, Jeffers. I'm just trying to add, put that diplomatic literature. Maybe he could add something to the mallet putter discussion. That was all How I was saying. How about face balance? Thank you. That's the word That's I was the looking words for. That's the right there. Face balanced. It feels so much more solid when you grab a face balance putter after putting with a ping answer style putter that's more heel weighted. Okay, there's the answer. And am I right in thinking as well, Ian? Is he is he the one? who has talked about he doesn't use the, the, the ball manufacturer's name anymore to line it up because he has the mallet putter. Exactly. He feels that it's better to use the lines on the putter, yeah. um, which are longer because of the mallet, which is a bigger head, um, and, and, and hits a, a sort of plain golf ball, whereas you see so many players using the line on the ball, actually drawing a straight line on the ball to line up you know, the, the, where they want to set the ball off. Now, here's Danny Willett looking for an unlikely birdie on the 12th. He's missed the green to the left. He's putting from just off the green. Done a lot of gardening so far. And now sends the ball forward and watches as the ball heads towards the hole. The flag gently wafting in the breeze. And it's just gone by the hole. Ten feet, Ten feet by the hole. Yeah, it's gone through by 10 feet so a real tester now for Willett to make sure he doesn't drop a shot here and remain at five under par and within two shots of the lead which of course is held by Scotty Scheffler who is playing the fifth and Bryson DeChambeau who's going to be hoving into view for us here on the 11th very shortly. John Murray just watching Tiger Woods away in the distance on the 16th green remember his tee shot we told you about it 20 25 feet away and it was like watching the tiger woods of old really this is his 26th masters how many times we've seen him in this sort of scenario in this place in this sunshine walking around a putt that he really liked the look of and he knows the importance of it however it didn't drop so birdie on 15 but uh, he should he should haul out for his par three on the 16th to remain at one over and very shortly we will have max homer putting for birdie on 16. Uh, okay uh, bryson dechambeau and scotty scheffler are both on seven under max homer has this opportunity to join him john just keeping an eye as well on brooks kepka tell you about that in a moment but this is the chance this is the chance for homer rolls the ball ever so gently down towards the hole and there's a bend of the knees which which tells you those those legs in those light blue trousers knew that that wasn't going to drop so it is a par par three for max homer in third place at the moment on six under and he stays six under with two to play yeah we'll tell you about brooks Kepka shortly ian danny willett using the line on the ball and very carefully lining it up in the direction on the line that he wants to take for this 10-footer to save par and remain within two shots of the lead. The 2016 champion, Danny Willett from Sheffield, settles over this now. Glance at the hole. Putter head is behind the ball. A rock of the shoulders will trigger the ball on its journey towards the hole almost motionless over it now the ball heads forward will it disappear no it won't misses just on the left side and he'll tap in for a four a drop shot and danny willett slips back to four under par and goes to the 13th tee level par for his round here's 
it, it, what, here's what it looks like, Ian, isn't it, really? That, that this is going to be really bunched. I mean, we had a quick touch on it on, on Five Live earlier. But, but nobody, and, and Andrew mentioned earlier, you know, that the lowest score out there has probably been a, a 69 or a 70, really, I, I would have thought, which we can have a look at in a moment. So everything's really bunched. But I would imagine in the back of most people's minds, and it may be in some of the players' minds, that if anybody is going to go clear here, it's Scheffler. You would think so. It's the quality of the ball striking. And, it's you know, it's a phrase that we rely on, but I think probably way too much. But on a day like this where there is such a, a, a requirement by the golf course for precision and the elements are conspiring against you, the quality of that strike is what can separate you from the rest. And I don't think it's any coincidence that someone like Ludwig Ober has gone from one over par to two under par today in these conditions on this golf course on his debut. And we know that he is a wonderful ball striker. And by that we mean someone who just finds the middle of the club time and time again. And as we know, Scheffler does that more than anybody else in the game right now. Now, and that's why he's such a danger. And, and also, Bryson DeChambeau has designed has designed his irons himself so that even if he doesn't find the middle of his iron, they're designed in such a way that they should help him. And we might discuss that a little bit later on. It's all to do uh, with what is termed technically a bulge. <laughs> Alistair Bruce Ball. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Tiger Woods, big roars for his tee shot, which is absolutely striked down the middle of the par 4 17th. It climbs up the hill and slowly comes to rest in the middle of the fairway. One over par uh, for the Masters. Two holes to play in this second round. Just looking at the uh, the leaderboard on the Masters app, Trish Johnson, it looks like the projected cut has gone out to five over par, but Tiger Woods is going to set, and we know this now, really, unless there's an absolute disaster on 17 and 18 for him, he's going to set another Masters. <laughs> record it is going to be a 24th <laughs> consecutive cut made you you've been watching a couple of the swings from mm. from back at base here via the tv pictures you think he's swinging it really nicely don't oh, you i think he looks great i think his body is you know it's not hurting him at the moment because he's just getting through the ball so well so often when he's he's got pain in his legs or his hips or whatever he gets the club you know behind him and he leaves it behind him because he just can't get his his hands and his body through quick enough and at the moment he's swinging it superbly right here's the man with the right foot swinging Scotty Scheffler joint leader seven under par second shot into the par four fifth climbs the uh, false front to the right of this green and the ball then just starts to take the slope and bend in towards the hole you can hear the applause for that second shot again very steady very safe left himself maybe 20 25 feet there yeah one of the other things I think is interesting about Scheffler and his putting going to the mallet putter is more about the fact the ball is more important about the line on the ball I think Scheffler is a very field place uh, player you know field based and doesn't need to be concentrating too much on things by getting rid of that exactness of putting the ball down and having the line on it so you know so specifically I think he's freed his freed his mind up to putt better Ian Carter we're getting ready to hand it to you we're looking at Bryson DeChambeau in the middle of the 11th fairway uh, he's to the right of this fairway he's probably out of sight of you at the moment but he's getting ready to strike his second shot towards the 11th green you heard the swish you heard the contact DeChambeau is looking up towards the green Ian Carter can you see the ball yes it lands to the right and short of the green it's been the bailout place for all of these players he's got himself to a position where if he hits a low chip then he can't go far enough right to be able to keep the ball on a line that would actually go into the hole because we've seen so many chips from where he's going to be hitting from that have swayed away to the left but that is the safe play he should be able to get up and down from there and remain at seven under. Max Homer just one shot off the lead so you've got DeChambeau seven under playing the 11th Scotty Scheffler on the uh, fifth green in two he's at seven under par there the joint leaders and Max Homer's just hit his tee shot mark uh, off the 17th tee playing alongside Tiger Woods started the day at five under par one under for his round at the moment but has found the fairway uh, on the 17th and the greatest irony today Mark lots of conversation yesterday about me not having a pair of binoculars so I duly trudged uh, yeah. towards the merchant dice outlet uh, to pay quite a bit of money for a pair of binoculars today got into the uh, the course for work and I was promptly told that I was sitting in the uh, in the media center for the rest of the day in front of all the TV screens and doing the leaderboard so I don't need them <laughs> so do you have them now? I do yeah I right do, yeah. okay in Masters Green they're okay. magnificent and did you lend them to Ian who, no, uh, who is out mine. on Amy no, oh, no, okay. no don't touch don't even, don't even don't even 
point at okay. those. The team player ethic coming through loud and clear on Five Lives golf coverage. <laughs> Catherine Downs, is anybody... Co- well, actually, they won't be quite coming into view yet because I can see Max Homer and Tiger Woods walking down the 17th fairway in front of us. So I won't go, won't go to you just yet. OK, Hi- I can see the only ball I can see on the fairway, though, and I'm, I'm peering through the trees. There's a lot of people here now, as you can imagine, that, yeah. that tiger tide that floods around the course with them. I am peering through the people, through the trees, using my master's green binoculars right, as well. And the only ball I can see on the fairway is that of Tiger Woods, right in the centre of the 17th fairway. Not sure where Max Homer and uh, Jason Day have ended up, but Tiger Woods is in A1 position with the wind behind coming up the hill with a couple of holes left to play. Uh, we, t- we talk often, don't we, about the uh, the crowds here and who is following who and where the sparse crowds are and the, the big galleries. And obviously the biggest is always with Tiger, no matter who he is playing with. They, that is where they tend to be, seven, eight, ten deep on the fairways or round the green watching. Uh, the, the group here on 15, which was Brooks Kepka and Brian Harmon, they finished putting on 15. And when they finished, half this gallery got up and left John Murray. And that's despite the fact that coming down next, we have Herbert, who is two under, but we also have Jordan Spieth, who's having a horrible tournament. I mean, he is nine over. And following them, you know, we've still got Dustin Johnson and Morikawa and Fleetwood, but it was almost as if Woods has gone through, Kepka's gone through, we're off. And I think certainly with Tiger Woods, he's always been the draw, as we, we discussed, didn't we, earlier in the week, that famous day here in 97 on the final day, which drew a record TV audience of 44 million. So that speaks for itself. He's had that for his whole life, his whole career. But now I think we've got to a point whereby there is certainly an element of not many more chances to see. And of course, he's not played in a t- tournament since, since right early in the year when he withdrew uh, from the Genesis. So, um, you know, to see him now and also to have a glimpse of him yesterday and think, actually, as Trish has been saying, he looks okay. He actually, there are def- definitely elements there of the, the great Tiger still, still within him. We, um, we talk, don't we, every year on our coverage that no technology is allowed out on the course. Uh, it, we're not allowed to bring phones out or iPads out. The, the, none of the patrons here are allowed to bring phones out either. It's all about the big white leaderboards. That's where you get your information from. And they've just uh, taken one name off and put a yeah, new name on away. that leaderboard uh, of Patrick Cantley, and that has brought absolutely no reaction from anybody. <laughs> Ian. I wonder why, I wonder why. Here is Bryson DeChambeau, and just a word on where this flag is located on the 11th, right at the back of the green, and it's rattling away in the hole at the moment as the breeze gusts up, and he's chipping down breeze. The ball will break from right to left out of the shadows, and the hole sitting in a portion of sunlight here, and he just rehearses the takeaway with his... Wedge, all standard length irons for Bryson DeChambeau, and then he lands it just past the elbow of the bunker, and then it goes forward, and it was the percentage plays, put it to maybe 10, 11 feet, something like that, but kept it under the hole. We've seen it time and time again. I mean, when are they going to move this green to the right? Because <laughs> everybody is, to, is playing it safe. This is basically a par five. We've only seen a few fours and mostly fives, but uh, you have to make you know, 10, 12 footers for, for fours on this hole right now. But uh, here we go, here we go, Amen corner doing its thing. Yeah, the wind isn't helping. The, the hole measures 520 yards. You've got Ike's Pond to the left, and with the flag all the way at the back, if you go pin hunting, then you bring the water into play and all sorts of potential trouble. Yeah, we'll never see a ball left of this pen. Never. So, I mean, these, these guys are bailing out to the right, let's say 30 yards right of this flag stick. 11 is always played the hardest hole, I believe it is this week also, except for maybe number 18, if we can check that, ABB. But I think 11 is always the one, just a five is not terrible. We'll have a look at that for you. I can also see that Tiger Woods' second shot, Cat, is on its way to you at the 17th. He's launched it from the middle of the fairway. Where has it ended up? It went right at the flag and almost plunged into the hole on the toss, but it skipped through the back of the green and will have scuttled down that steep slope over the back of 17. The wind whistling up the fairway right behind Tiger Woods, and he just got a little bit too much on it, so it's gone through the back of the green and is nestled up against the grandstand and the spectators through the back of 17. 
Tiger Woods at one over par should make the cut comfortably. Uh, the cut projected currently at four over playing alongside Jason Day, the former world number one who's at three over. So he's got some work to do to make sure he stays within that cut line. And Max Homer next to play at six under par, standing in the shadows down the right hand side in his sky blue trousers. Ali. Can you see him? Can I can see yeah, him, well, yeah. Well, keep got a good then, view right. of him. So his, his drive, his tee shot from the 17th has uh, just rolled down that right hand side into just a little dip. He's safely on the short stuff, those beautifully green manicured fairways. And he's uh, come to rest in a pool of shadow from one of those big overhanging pine trees down the right hand side, launching his ball high up into the sky, the blue cloudless sky that matches his trousers. And it's plunged down onto the green on 17 and stopped dead about 25 feet or so from the pin. So Max Homer with a good look at birdie here on the 17th, currently at six under par, one off the lead. Ali, back to you for a bit of Scotty Scheffler update. Yes, Scotty Scheffler, birdie putt uh, on the fifth is not really going to threaten the hole. He looks a little bit bemused by it, but again, not a problem for him. He's only a, a foot or so away. He's going to tap that in for par shortly. He's our joint leader at seven under par alongside Bryson DeChambeau. Max Homer safely onto the 17th green in two at six under par. And Nikolai Hoygaard, our clubhouse leader at four under par. Trish Johnson, uh, talk our listeners through the woes of Rory McIlroy on the par four fifth. So while Scotty Scheffler continues to plot his way uh, around the golf course, Rory McIlroy came up short of that green in two. Then what happened? Well, it was the most extraordinary shot I think I've ever seen Rory play. He had about 30 yards to a back pin, admittedly, but about five yards behind uh, the pin. And he hit a wedge shot that pitched way too far. And he knew it the moment he hit it. He put his head in his hands. And it went all the way over the back and left him almost an impossible chip. So he's basically missed the green from 30 yards and he's now knocked it back and he's got about eight feet for his bogey. Yeah, so Rory McIlroy uh, is going to uh, definitely drop at least one shot there, Mark, uh, on the fifth. In fact, we've got him right in front of our eyes now. McIlroy putting for bogey. This is a good six, seven feet as well. Pure strike of the ball and right into the heart of the hole. So that actually, the second chip, the up and down from the back of the green, the position he put himself in, that is fabulous work. You can tell, I mean, he closes his eyes, he shakes his head, he then looks up to the heavens and he can't believe the mistake he's made, as Trisha said, with the first pitch from the front of the green. He drops back to level par. It's seven shots off the lead. Uh, I've got so many questions to ask about McElroy and Scheffler playing together, which we'll do with Trish and Andrew shortly. Ian? Bryson DeChambeau putting to retain a share of the lead on the 11th green, having chipped up to probably 10 feet. And all of the journey of this ball will be in brilliant sunshine here. Andrew, you've taken this this putt many a time, I'm sure. What's the break? Yeah, this is back up the hill, so he can give, he can give it a good hit. This is not one of those defensive putts. He can, he can hit this one. It's right to left, and it is in the sunlight. The ball is on its way and up towards the hole, but not quite giving it enough. It's come up just short, so it's a drop shot at the 11th. There have been plenty of those today, but this is significant for the top of the leaderboard. All of those leaderboards around the golf course are going to reflect this very, very shortly because when the number is put in underneath the, the number 11, it will be a six. To Shombo back to six under par, and that means out on his own in front for the first time at the 88th Masters is the world number one, Scotty Scheffler, at seven under par. Um, although, Scheffler might drop a shot as well, Ali. Well, he has. He has, Mark. That is the first mistake we've seen Scotty Scheffler make. I would say that putt is two feet no more. We're watching it, the replay of it, from right behind the putt ahead, and it's one of those that has hit the left edge of the hole, Trish. It's very nearly dropped, and it's completely whipped round the back of the hole, horseshoed, and spat out again. So it's going to be a drop shot for Scheffler, first of the uh, first well, of the Masters, back to six under. And, and that means he's six under, Bryson is six under, Max Homer is six under, and Kat is watching him on 17. Yeah, and he's in close, is uh, Max Homer, about uh, 25 feet or so for his birdie coming up. Just watching Tiger Woods, whose ball flew through the back of the green on 17. I thought it might have got up against the spectators in the grandstand because it was coming in at some whack, but he's managed to uh, to slow it down obviously as it bounced and uh, maybe had some backspin on it so he's just slightly off the green just chipping up now over the ridge of the green and sidling up to 
towards the hole. Oh, I think he wanted to be a lot closer than that. He's about five foot or so from the pin, wearing a very classy outfit today, Tiger Woods, kind of creamy coloured trousers and a mocha coloured, coffee coloured T-shirt with a, a white baseball cap, just bending down slightly deliberately. We all know about the problems he's had with that leg after the car crash and all the pins and, and rods and poles in there keeping his leg together. I saw as well as he was walking up the hill on 17 to his uh, his tee shot that he, he opened his chest and his arms wide just to stretch out those shoulders, obviously feeling a little bit of aches and pains. We heard him say in his press conference that he aches every day. And these have been two really tough physical rounds of golf for all the players, but uh, with all the physical issues that uh, Tiger Woods is dealing with, uh, surely he's had a lot of physio and, and rest well, he's overnight. Played, he's played 20 plus holes today hasn't he? He has, Cam. yeah, and he's just just going down on his haunches behind the ball at the moment to have a look at his uh, putt to save his par and that was a really deliberate dip of the knees, very slow, very using the, the handle of the putter to prop himself up. Next to play, Mark, is uh, Max Homer who'll be putting for his birdie that would give him the outright lead here on the 17th on day two of the 88 Masters. The wind was once again getting up around this cauldron on the 17th, whipping the white sand out of the bunkers. And Max Homer's white T-shirt tugging in the wind above his sky blue trousers. Standing behind the ball now, very gentle touch as it comes over the crest of the ridge on the 17th green and sidles past the hole on the left-hand side just by a couple of feet or so. So it should be a stress-free par for Max Homer. He will go to the final tee on six under par and in a share of the lead, Ian. Bryson DeChambeau on the 12th tee, 152 yards today, this shortest hole on the course. The wind coming in off the right, and he sends this on its way, climbing up to its apex, and now coming down, looking on a very, very good line indeed. And that looks a superb tee shot from Bryson DeChambeau, and he's carved the opportunity for a bounce back bay, uh, birdie here, Andrew McGee. Yeah, a very calm swing, just past the hole, about 12 feet. Just carry the gaping bunker in the front. Eight paces after that is the flag stick, and that's where you want to land the ball, which he just did. Superb stuff from Bryson DeChambeau then, Mark, as he marches off to the 12th green, looking to bounce back from the bogey at the 11th, which means he shares the lead at six under par with Homer and Scheffler. So Andrew asked the question 10 minutes ago or so whether, whether, 18, whether 18 was still playing the hardest on the course, maybe 17 and 18. Um, and, and normally with Ian, we just throw that there when he's in front of the monitors and, and he gives it to us straight away being a bit more gentle with Ali who is in this role for the first time today so that's been a good 10 minutes <laughs> yeah it's taken a while actually to be fair to Trish she was on it yeah. within about a minute and I was still scrambling around sort of flicking through notebooks and looking at leaderboards and all sorts so today the 11th is the hardest hole. Scotty Scheffler, by the way, we're looking at on the tee at the par three six. The pin is on the lower tier here at the six, and he's missed the green to the left-hand side, and the ball just takes the slope and runs away towards the feet of the spectators uh, in the shade of the pines, and then the camera angle just widens a little bit for us, Trish. So in terms of the sort of chip that he's got to play from the side of that green very quickly before Tiger putts on the 17th, what yeah, do you not, think? Not the easiest, up the slope, and then it'll be gently down the slope, so he's got to judge the first bounce specifically but uh, very strange moment that watching him miss that little short one and it was a horror putt as well pulled it straight off the blade um, nearly went in but uh, no he, that will look, looks like he's you know, a little bit shaky for a couple yeah, of minutes first sign of frailty from Scotty Scheffler the 11th the hardest hole on the golf course so far today it was second hardest yesterday the 18th was the, the hardest anything else you want Mark um, well what's the 18th today oh, I've absolutely no idea here's Cap <laughs> <laughs> I'll step in here shall I before it turns nasty Tiger Woods putting for his par then on the 17th still got about five and a half feet or so to save his par here as the five-time champion looking to make the 24th consecutive cut <laughs> and the crowd rising to their feet applauding their great champion they've uh, followed him all around the course on this second day the uh, security guard at the front of the grandstand here on 17 having to indicate to everyone sit down sit down max homer's still got to putt for his par but tiger woods has got the job done here on the 17th he, he saves his par after leaving it a bit short from over the back of the green he will stay at one over par comfortably within the projected cut line at four over par as he heads to the 18th and max homer 
the joint leader just tidying up for his par as well. So he will go to the last at six under in a share of the lead on this day two with Bryson DeChambeau and the world number one, Scotty Scheffler, Mark. Uh, we, uh, the question I was going to ask earlier, Trish, in, in relation to Scheffler and McElroy, and maybe it's less appropriate now because <laughs> Scheffler's bogeyed one and has just uh, just made a mistake on the sixth as well, is you know, McElroy talked effusively about Scheffler's mm. efficiency after the round yesterday. Scheffler was asked about his efficiency in his press conference and just talked about limiting mistakes. That's all it is. It's important. Keep the momentum of a round going. When you get in challenging spots, just pitch it up there nice and close and, and, and try and get, get off with your par. It, when you're in a tournament situation, not in a match play, is, is there mm. anything you can do just to try and imitate what your partner is or one of your playing partners is doing <coughs> no no because because obviously you'd be changing your game plan so well, you, yeah. you have your own you know your own design and what you want to do and I think the difficulty is what Rory said last night he's basically he's almost admitting the fact that Scheffler is playing so well and making so few mistakes that no one's going to beat him that's pretty much what he said you know, if you if you if you get listen to his whole interview, mm. and that, I mean, if you're Sheffield, you're just thinking, well, what a lovely moment. It's like Tiger in his pomp, wasn't it? it? Everybody was beaten by Tiger in his pomp before he even teed off, because once his name got to the top of the leaderboard, it was as though, well, he never loses from the front, and Scheffler has got this aura about him at the moment that the other players know if he's just playing so incredibly well and to hit I was really surprised to hear Rory give that sort of compliment out to someone that he knows that is you know obviously the number one player in the world but it's so difficult because Rory does make mistakes he makes incredible amount of birdies but a load of mistakes and Scheffler just very rarely makes one we, we, oh, we, we, yes, we've got on. Tiger Woods on the 18th tee here uh, in this sort of milk chocolate brown polo shirt that Kat so beautifully uh, described Kat you can see him there can't you I can I can see his ball flying past me just leaking to the left here I know that there are bunkers down that uh, left hand side those big sprawling white bunkers it was curling round the pine trees that are craning their necks they lean in don't they the pine trees like the, the bones of whales leaning over the fairway <laughs> as if they want to get a better look at Tiger Woods and do you know what for Tiger Woods this the fairway is optically narrowed because of the depth of the spectators either side you know normally if you can see a bit of grass both sides you know after a string of a string of patrons looking over the rope it doesn't look quite so narrow but because there are so many people here you can see that the the narrowness of the fairway is highlighted by the fact that there are you know 10 deep around the the ropes here but yeah, Tiger Woods going down the left-hand side, I think, there, Found Ali. the fairway, yeah. Flirted with the branches of the tall pines away to the left, but had that bit of fade on it. So Mark safely uh, to the ah. left-hand side of the 18th fairway. On, on one of the hardest holes. Uh, uh, it's number the, three, th Thank Chappers. you, Trish. Number thank three. You, he knew Trish. that. Alistair knew that. Right. He's just, uh, <laughs> he's, he's playing the game. Andrew, are you, are you, <laughs> were, were you, like Trish, surprised at McElroy's comments yesterday after the round about Scheffler? Okay, yeah. Andrew was uh, just intently looking through his binoculars right. there, which just knocked off his ability to be able to tell Listen. you whether or not he was surprised at the comments that McElroy made that was so praiseworthy of Scotty Scheffler yesterday. I just think it's a bit of game playing also, you know, when you're playing together with the, the two heavyweights like that, I think it's just a little bit of maybe down a needle, I'm getting his head a little bit because they had to play the gate together today. but. I mean, these guys all get along so well. I mean, it's just everybody is so nice to each other anymore. I want to see some antagonism. <laughs> out there. I want to see some fighting. Yeah, that, well, I was going to say, they weren't all nice to each other at the Ryder Co-op. Well, um, I have to say, I've got a book that's just come out called Golf Wars. So <laughs> just thought I'd get that in. Um, for the 20th time on our coverage. No, Dan first, actually. Second, actually. Danny, mm. Danny Willett for birdie, Ali. Yeah, Danny Willett uh, for birdie on the 13th from about 18 feet. He wasn't delighted with the pitch he hit into the par 5 13th and he's just missed the putt uh, left edge of the hole round the back of the hole it went Max Homer's found the bunker up the left of the 18th fairway Scotty Scheffler then chipping up the slope from the side of the 6th green he's judged it beautifully it's not going to drop is it from Scheffler just pulls up right to the edge the left edge of the hole on the 6th he can blow that in practically he's inches away and having just made the mistake on the 5th with the short putt then missed the 6th green Trish Johnson mm. What a response. Yeah, fantastic. I think it's a very... He's, uh, his short game is massively underestimated, probably because his iron play is so flipping good that he hardly ever has to actually chip. But when he has to, it is absolutely top-notch. So Scheffler, six under. DeChambeau, six under. Max Homer going up.
up the 18th, but he's found the bunker at six under. Hoygaard at four under. And Danny Willett, who didn't make the birdie uh, on the 13th, remains at four under Palmer. Birdie opportunity here on 16 for Ludwig Erber on his first Masters appearance. Yes, not only his first Masters appearance, his first major appearance on the 16th from 10 feet, and he's rolled it right in the middle. And therefore, this Swedish Ryder Cup rookie from last year Ludwig Aubert in the sunshine here has moved to within three shots of the lead. This is That's some performance. It really is. Uh, three under for him. Patrick Cantlay is also on three under. Ryan Fox is on four under. Ian Carter watching one of the joint leaders. After his brilliant tee shot to the back of the green of the 12th, here is Bryson DeChambeau for the outright lead once again, putting from 10 feet. Hunched shoulders, straight arms. Stock still then sends the ball forward and into the hole and it is a bounce back birdie and Bryson DeChambeau gets the birdie that takes him back to seven under par and the outright lead. What a bounce back here on this very difficult 12th today. Playing the shortest of any hole but I bet you it might be the most over par for a couple triples we've seen, a double. Beautiful bounce back Bryson DeChambeau, seven under par. He's not going away. Well, he's not going away. And I reckon, Andrew, there would have been a lot of people thinking maybe, look, yes, he had a very good opening round. He's had a good opening round here before in his career. But I think there would have, a lot of pe there would have been a lot of people doubting whether he would drop back. To, I'm with oh, you. Sorry, would, thinking that he would drop I'm, back. I'm with you. I mean, uh, it's, it's kind of not easy, but to come out with a flyer on the first hole, it's, you know, you're not really in the tournament yet until you get going. And those first three birdies in the first three holes yesterday got him going. And he's in the mix now, and he is holding his medal very nicely. I am surprised. That was well said there, Chappers. Um, he could have just shot a nice little 75 today, and we all would have said, that's about right. Mm. And I mean, we, we watched an interview together, didn't we, Ian, with, with Bryson after his round yesterday. We'll come on to the technical side of things a, a, a little bit later on. But he, he seemed so calm and relaxed in that interview yesterday. It, he is, as he himself said post-round, he, he's a different man. He said he feels much more comfortable in his own skin. He was always something of a maverick, something of an outsider, obviously plays the game in a unique way, all his irons. We forget to talk about this because it's been so ingrained into his career, but all his irons are the same length. You know, he's the only player who does that. He has gone through, obviously, the dietary uh, issues of, of, of trying to bulk up and, and increase speed and length that way, and then discovering that that was bad for him, discovering what he was uh, allergic to, in, in, in essence, and has changed his diet. And he looks extremely healthy. He looks very, very well built still but a much more complete golfer i would say he, and he's 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 golfing his ball rather than just having to smash it trying to smash well, it and smash courses into smithereens he, he was asked actually andrew yesterday after the round you've had the mad scientist phase you've had the bulky basher phase and what phase do you think you are in now and he said the golf phase i'd say the golf phase for sure Wow, that's so analytical, isn't it? I mean, most people would never be that deep with all that, but uh, it's, it's amazing. He has softened his swing. I think it was he was getting injured. You can't swing that hard. Look at Tiger swinging that hard for so many years. He's pretty banged up, but uh, well done, Bryson. You, you figured it out. Most people don't. Uh, we've just got some Tommy Fleetwood news in front of us. Colin, Mor Colin Morikawa as well, who's in the red numbers. Yeah, Colin Morikawa is uh, the former Open champion, two under par. And Tommy Fleetwood has just got it back to level par for the tournament with a, a birdie here at the par 5 15th and a little bump of the fists with his, his caddy this week, who is not Ian Finnis, as it usually is, because he's not so well, so hasn't been able to come here. So Tommy Fleetwood is using a, a caddy master from the Augusta National and I've watched them over the course of the last few days. They've clearly got a really good understanding together. And, uh, and there we are, back to, to level part of the tournament, Tommy Fleetwood. Bryson birdied 12. He's now on the 13th tee. Ali? Yeah, Basher Bryson has just bashed it miles right down the 13th into the pine straw towards the paper.
patrons who are sort of in the dappled shade of the trees. It's a lovely walk down there, down the right-hand side of the 13th. It's one of those holes we don't actually have a commentary position on, but it's a magnificent par five uh, here at Augusta. Jack Nicholas rates it as, as one of the key holes. Uh, two shots here, the drive and the second shot uh, on the par five 13th. Absolutely crucial to your chances of success at the Masters. And Bryson DeChambeau, Trish, has set that off down the right-hand side. It's a big swinging dog leg right to left. It's, it's one of the most picturesque spots on the golf course because the golfers go back up into the hills. They're totally on their own, surrounded by that blanket of pink flowers in the background. And it never turned that. That one just went dead straight and kept going and has, and has missed the corner. Yeah, and he's going to be yeah, he's going to be lucky if he's got any sort of shot there as well. It's going to be a difficult and he's going to leave himself quite a long distance. It's 545 yards, that 13th hole these days. It's, uh, it used to be a, a pretty straightforward two-shotter if you could turn it around the corner. Not anymore. It's a real monster of a hole. Five times Masters champion Tiger Woods. Been a relatively long day for him today and I can just see him stretching off the back again. Uh, he's left-hand side of the 18th fairway. Beautiful afternoon for golf at Augusta. Got a great look up the hill towards the 18th. The size of the galleries down the left-hand side of this hole, utterly ridiculous. Classic Tiger Woods. Now he set this off to the left, way to the left, and the camera focuses in on the green, but the ball was going nowhere near that. It's got to pan away to the right-hand side, and Tiger Woods has come up way short, Trish, and way left, and he's having, he's having a right laugh with his caddy there. He, he can't quite believe it. No, it was a shocker, wasn't it? Not the sort of shot he wanted to finish off with, and he's left himself about as tough a shot as you can possibly have, really. It's over that bunker, and it's downwind. As you can see, the, the wind is whizzing, and all the sand from the front yeah. bunker is flying out. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough shot. Like a minor sandstorm being whipped up from the bright white bunkers to the left of the 18th. Max Homer is in one of those, the first one. Pure clean contact of the ball. That's heading to the front of the green. Bounces once, it's going to roll, and it's going to roll and roll up the slope. Wind is blowing furiously. The flag is being tugged on top of the flagstick, but now it takes the slope and comes back down towards the whole Sandy Lyle style. 1988, a whooping and a hollering around the 18th green. Brilliant from Max Homer. Yeah, a fantastic shot. He had a perfect lie, to be fair. He wasn't close to the front edge of the bunker, so not a difficult shot for these guys, but nonetheless, he's ex executed that to perfection. Right, now eyes on Scotty Scheffler. Brilliant up and down on the par 3-6. Bryson DeChambeau, the leader, 7 under par, playing the par 5 13th. He's missed the fairway to the right. Max Homer on the green in 2 on 18 at 6 under. Scotty Scheffler, world number 1, surrounded by patrons either side. Narrow, tight fairway. Looks like he might miss this right. Couple of shouts of four right. Not one from Scheffler, and it goes skipping into the pine straw and through the legs of a couple of the spectators away to the right. So Scotty Scheffler, just in the latter stages of the front nine here of the second round, just a couple of... Um, Slightly off shots, Trish. He's missed that fairway to the right. Yeah, do you know what? A couple of weeks ago, um, I think it was the it was the tournament he, he actually finished second in, and there was he played magnificently in the first round, and it was flawless. And then all of a sudden, in the second round, as we just uh, that's yeah, Ryan, so Fox's was Ryan Fox, ball. wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh, on the eleventh, no, that down. might find the water behind the eleventh green. It doesn't. Yeah, and, and he just every now and again he just has that sort of one round where. Yeah, he might hit some really poor shots, and then all of a sudden, most players would be struggling. Then he comes out the next day, firing again. So he's just going through a little period in this, but he's not dropping many shots. No, he's not, but he's giving a little bit of hope to the field, although they won't know exactly what is going on with Scheffler's round at the moment. Tiger Woods has made his way to the ball, short left of the 18th green. Projected cut mark at the moment is five over par. Current cut mark is at four over par, but I think projected cut because of the breeze may push it out one further. Tiger Woods is comfortably making that. He's going to break the record. It's going to be 24 consecutive cuts made, but he's the kind of guy we know who'll be absolutely desperate to get up and down. He's still going to be thinking about trying to win this tournament over the weekend, even though he is currently eight shots back. Players in danger of missing the cut out on the golf course at the moment, though, while we wait for Woods to chip. John Rahm, defending champion, uh, is three over par. Uh, seven holes of his second round played. Hideki Matsuyama, a lot of people fancied him uh, this week, has been in good form, particularly uh, the short game has been very sharp, but he's at four over par. Victor Hovland with a treble bogey, eight on the par five second today, is currently at six over par. Justin Rose finished seven over. Brian Harmon at the end of his first round today finished six, six, 
six. Treble bogey, double bogey, double bogey. He's at eight over par with one to play. Jordan Spieth also at eight over par with a couple to play. And Dustin Johnson has not had a good week here at Augusta. He's 11 over par. So Trish Johnson taught me through this. You, you think, well, you said this is very, very tricky. Well, it is. First of all, it's straight downwind, and that's not helpful at all. So he's got. A, he's got. Looks like he's just got to go over the edge of the bunker. This is. This is trust. You can see in his practice strokes, he's letting the club head just get past his hands. He wants this. He's got the club face wide open, um, and he's just got to play a shot. This is. This needs bravery, and it needs trust in your technique. So he's got to get this over the bunker as close as he can and get it to stop as soon as he can. And he's taken an almighty swipe at it, straight up in the air. Lands down on the putting surface, rolls to the right-hand side of the hole. He's knocked it to within about four feet and the galleries absolutely love it. And Tiger Woods has that for par. Uh, to get to the halfway stage of this year's Masters at one over par, currently eight shots off the lead. But, I mean, given the fact he's played just over one round of competitive golf so far this year, it's been brilliant to watch from Tiger. You watched him through Amen Corner mm. yesterday and some of the short game skills, and we're just getting a close-up there, <laughs> Trish, of the contact of shiny club head on ball off that beautiful green carpet of grass. Yeah, it takes a lot of guts, that one. You're wide open, club face, not, and as tight as, as, tight as these lies are going to get. So Tiger Woods with that four-footer to come on the 18th. Danny Willett is on the 14th, 148 yards for his second shot uh, into the green. There's a huge false front, big slope at the front of this green. It's just climbed over that, but what happens then? It takes the slope and it moves away to the right. And this green is absolutely enormous. <laughs> and this is the one I think that Ben Crenshaw, two times Masters winner, says is the most three-puttable green mm -hmm in world golf and Danny Willett has an absolutely enormous part. I mean, that's got to be just shy of 100 feet across the 14th green. Zalatoris very nearly uh, chipping in uh, on the 14th. He's currently at one under. That is six shots off the lead. But uh, Danny Willett, that's going to be all about <laughs> judgment of pace. That's going to be a tricky one. Well, it's not just judgment of pace, it's judgment of about three or four different borrows yeah. as well. So back to the 18th. Uh, this is second round of the Masters. Uh, Friday afternoon here in Augusta. Ooh. Sand is blowing up around the 18th. That's putting Jason Day off his putt. Leaderboard at the moment. Bryson DeChambeau at seven under par. Max Homer on this 18th green with a birdie chance to come, actually. Uh, he's at six under. Scotty Scheffler at six under par. We're yet to see where his tee shot uh, ended up precisely to the right of the seventh fairway. Uh, Nikolai Hoygaard in the clubhouse at four under par. Unfortunately for him, he bogeyed the 17th and the 18th. And Danny Willett with that monster putt to come on the 14th at four under par, as is Ryan Fox. But we saw the New Zealanders ball, his second shot on the par for 11th. Ian will have eyes on that. Go scooting right through the back of that green and just stopping short uh, of Ray's Creek running behind the green. Ludwig Ober currently at three under par as well four shots off the lead. We're watching Jason Day putting on the 18th green before Tiger Woods and Max Homer get to go. That one just pulls up short. I think he's going to be here for the weekend, though. The Australian in the baggy trousers, black baggy trousers uh, today. They're not quite as ridiculous as, as was advertised by... Uh, members of our, our commentary no, team no, yesterday. He's, he's changed. He's changed, he's them, changed he? the outfit. The outfit he had on this morning was totally ridiculous. <laughs> it wasn't just the trousers either, it was the top as well, but he's gone back to being uh, pretty regular uh, regular clothing this afternoon. That, that actually, Mark, was a bogey for Jason Day. Four over. That is right on the cut line at the moment. It may move further out. Max Homer's birdie putt to come. What, what have you got at the moment? Uh, nothing, mate. Me oh, okay. and John were just listening, enjoying listening to oh, the good. Alistair Bruce Ball show on, <laughs> on Sports Extra. The only thing I can tell you is that normally... Uh, well, all, all the time here at the Masters, you just see everybody wearing some, some kind of golf clothing or being quite smart because they're in some of the corporate areas or, or some addresses or so, so on and so forth. And a bloke to the right of me, probably 20 yards away hang in the sec, gallery. Hang on a sec, Mark. Hang on a sec. Oh, Max back, Homer. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> For birdie, oh, down the hill. He wants it to go left to right, and it didn't move. It stayed on line, and it's 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 a foot away. I'm sure he'll tap it in for par. 
No, it's a strange putt because if you remember when Rory holed his bunker shot um, last year or the year before, was it? Uh, you, you, when it comes down that slope, it's definitely coming in right to left. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't know that. Yeah, Mark Chapman with the story to finish. Max Homer taps in. So Max Homer at the halfway stage of this Masters, six under par overall, started the day at five under par. So he's rounding 71. He's in great position, Mark. He's, he's got a football shirt on, like a UK football. Did you <laughs> recognise that, John? I actually didn't see it. Where, where was oh, it? right. Well, he's just gone and sat down over there. But it was a AFC Richmond shirt from Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. <laughs> which, uh. is, which is the first one that I have seen out here. Do you watch Ted Lasso? Actually, no. You should, honestly. Oh, it's great. really it's brilliant. brilliant. I've, heard yeah. it, I've, heard it, I've heard it recommended yeah. by, by many. Um, um, and, and just a little point on Jason Day's trousers. Mm. I mean, is it ridiculous to say that in very, very blustery conditions that those big baggy trousers... Might actually have been a distraction. Andrew, uh, Andrew McGee, would big, big baggy trousers in windy conditions have put you off? <laughs> yeah, I mean that reminded me of something I would have wore back in 1982 <laughs> with pleats. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even look new, did they? They looked like they were old. Mark, Mark cargo pants. <laughs> remarkable <laughs> scenes up remarkable. at the 18th green. Tiger Woods go. is sheltering from a sandstorm here, so the, so the wind is absolutely gusting up. He's got a four-footer to come here for par, uh, to 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 finish at one over par overall for the Masters but at the moment he, he, he can't putt he's got his left hand on the visor of his white baseball cap <laughs> just to prevent that that sand it's up as a shield to mm. prevent the sand blowing into his eyes it's properly whipping up from the bunkers and blowing across the green but, but his focus remains absolutely rock solid on that hole he now just gets down on his haunches Mark's behind the ball. We're going to come back to that in a second because suddenly we whiz back to the right of the seventh fairway. Scotty Scheffler on the pine straw. He's got to try and work this one from left to right. And we can see that ball taking that turn up towards the uh, bunkers, short of this green. And he's rolled it into one of the bunkers that protects the front of that shallow seventh green. Right, the sand is not blowing in Tiger Woods' eyes anymore. Can he roll this in? Of course he can. Tiger Woods is going to be here for the weekend. It's another Masters record for the great man. 24 consecutive cuts made. Gets an enormous hug from Jason Day. I think that's taken quite a lot of effort for Tiger Woods. But he's still got the shots, we know that. He's still got the desire, we know that. He set another record here at Augusta National. And he may not win the Masters this year but they still come out to see him play, and that is the reason why, Trish. He's been a very, very, very special golfer throughout his entire career, and when he gets out there, and when he can play, particularly on a golf course that he absolutely loves, he's still a magician. He's still the man, there's no two ways about it. He's the man that moves the needle, he's the man that everybody wants to watch, without a shadow of a doubt. He's the man that the other players respect more than anyone else, certainly golf-wise. And you can see the camaraderie there and the just the friendship, really, between Homer, Jason Day and the congratulations on the 18th green. Of, and, and also his reaction, you know, making that cut. You wouldn't have thought years ago that would have meant nothing to him because it was just a, an automatic, but that does mean a great deal. Big smiles on the 18th green, Mark, for Tiger Woods. And now big smiles as well because the, the patrons here are really close and he's marching off the 18th and he does look tired and it does look like that's taken a bit out of him, but he does permit himself a smile. I think he's so really enjoyed that today. He's finished on what? He's won over, he's so level par for his right. round today, 72 today. So and, and Max Homer is the leader in the clubhouse, Ian Carter, on six under. Look, it's highly unlikely that Tiger Woods is going to win the Masters, but... You know, if Homer on six under is the lead by at the end of the day, and bearing in mind out on the course, there's Bryson DeChambeau on, on seven under. That's the only person who is ahead of Homer, and Homer is safely in the clubhouse. He's only seven shots yeah. off, you know. Yeah, exactly. And given his record and his ability and so on and so forth, he, he more importantly, will not think he is out of it. Well... When when Scotty Scheffler wrote uh, won the Players Championship, I found myself writing a piece that was kind of comparing him to Tiger Woods, and what I was doing was comparing him to Tiger Woods in his pomp. And all the things that we've been saying about Scheffler, about his ability not to make too many mistakes, to be able to strike the balls with such certainty and play with such authority, they are all the hallmarks of Tiger Woods' career when fit. And you know he looks like he's moving 
very, very well. He will draw an awful lot of confidence from this. And to me, that is just a remarkable performance to be in the house at the halfway stage, comfortably, in, comfortably into the weekend, given how little golf he has played in the last year. That is utterly, utterly astonishing. And it's just another occasion where we have to say those words with regard to Tiger Woods. And I agree with you. You know, anything could happen over the weekend, particularly with his know-how around here. And some of the stuff I'm being told it would imply that Bryson DeChambeau might be coming back to the field here, Ali. Yeah, well, we'll tell you about that in a second. We've got eyes on Scotty Scheffler at the moment. So in the bunker on the par four seventh in two, full swing. The ball comes flying out of the sand, skids forward off a downslope, goes rolling a fair way past the hole and just off the back of the green, just onto the fringe, back right of the seventh, green maybe 12 14 feet or so for Scotty Scheffler's pass the mistake came off the tee missed the right hand side Trish and um, that that bunker shot came out and it really skipped forward from that first bounce yeah really did he didn't quite judge the first bounce at all and uh, yeah he's going to the only thing he's got going for there is he'll be putting straight back into the wind so he can be a little bit more aggressive than he normally could uh, Bryson DeChambeau, Mark, we've seen some slightly odd shots of him. So if you remember, the last time we were talking about him was his big booming drive down the right-hand side uh, of the par 5 13th. While I'm looking at Danny Willett's putt coming speeding across the 14th, that is fabulous judgment from Danny Willett from long, long range to knock that in to within about a foot or so. So he should be able to tap that in and stay at four under par. We're now seeing Bryson DeChambeau to the right of the 13th, about to play his third shot. I beg your pardon, not to the right of the 13th. He's gone beyond the right of the 13th. He's actually to the left of the 14th. He's deliberately played the ball out there. And one of the things he's also had to do, Trish, <laughs> is remove one of the enormous wooden posts with all the arrows attached mm. for the patrons. So it points where to go to the 15th green, 16th green, clubhouse and all that. And we had this amazing shot of Bryson DeChambeau I mean, it, it's taller than him. It's massive, and he's got it. He's got it up on his up on his shoulder. He's carrying it on his shoulder, and then some. I'm not sure who the fellow was, but someone has actually come over to help him. Basically, yeah. it's a heavy piece of kit that is. But he's a big fella, and he's as strong as an ox. Interesting on the strategy front here, though, Trish. I mean, he's, he's deliberately oh, put yeah. it out here, isn't he? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, he's hit it as far down as he can, rather than just. The trouble is, if he doesn't hit it to the right hand side, he's going to have a lot further in. Now he's got a pretty good angle into the flank, to be perfectly honest. He's going straight up the green and he's probably got about 100 and, I don't know, about 125, 130 yards. So he's still got a pretty good chance of, you know, making birdie. The only yeah. snag with this today, we've not seen one player, because that pin is right at the back, no one wants to hit it up that slope because if it takes one firm bounce, it's over the back and you are not getting up and down. Par 5, 13th, one of uh, the famous holes here at Augusta, called Azalea, 545 yards. The spectators to the left of the 14th fairway, getting a bit of a, a bonus here of a close-up of Bryson DeChambeau. Pin is cut back left, and you're hitting to a... It's, it's a big green, it's a wide green, it's like a tabletop, but Ray's Creek just snakes its way all the way around the front of that green. Pin back left, Bryson DeChambeau's third shot on its oh. way, bounces once, just short of the flag, skids to a halt, backs off to the left, and he's left in Himself, maybe 12 feet or so for birdie. Brilliant shot. Best shot we've seen into that hole today from the weirdest angle that you could possibly imagine, but well, it wasn't so so uh, weird, weird a shot. But, yeah, he looks him top top f uh, fettle to me. He's uh, very confident, and he looks fit as a fiddle, doesn't he? He really does. Clubhouse leader Max Homer, six under par. Bryson DeChambeau, birdie putt to come on the 13th at seven under par. Scotty Scheffler at six under, but he's got a tester to save his par on the par four seventh. And uh, Nikolai Hoygaard and Danny Willett, both at four under par Hoygaard having completed his second round already today Mark uh, just want to get details of Ludwig Erber and his par on 17 Kat yes he, uh, he managed to sink the putt in the end uh, he was through the back of the green in two put it to within about uh, 15 feet maybe seven feet and then tap that one in so no problem for Ludwig Aubert on uh, the 17th he's just teed off on the 18th though and could be in a spot of bother ball flying on the wind that's belting in from left to right and heading towards those trees down the right hand side and from where I'm staying I couldn't see where it landed but it did look like it was heading on a dangerous trajectory a word as well Mark for the 2015 champion Jordan Spieth he dropped a shot here again on the 17th 
17th, so he moves to nine over par and he'll miss the cut for only the second time here at Augusta. Yeah, he has had a, a terrible couple of days, but many of the big names have actually. Just a little bit lower down the leaderboard, Patrick Cantlay's dropped a shot on ninth and he is now two under. Uh, Lucas Glover has gone onto the leaderboard at two under. Matt Fitzpatrick is there as he approaches the turn. He is also on two under. The Masters, live from Augusta National with Mark Chapman on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Good evening. Uh, welcome to Augusta. The sun is shining. If you're listening to us on Sports Extra, our coverage continues all the way through until the final putt is sunk here on second round Friday. If you've been uh, on Five Live this evening listening to Darren and the team, then thank you for staying here and being with us for the next hour for our golf coverage. Uh, Saturday and Sunday night for the final two rounds will be uninterrupted on Five Live uh, as well from, I think, 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock on both evenings but Saturday and Sunday night the golf will be uh, here on Five Live. Nine o'clock Saturday, eight o'clock on Sunday. Let's just uh, uh, give you a leaderboard first of all. Um, it is tight. It is very, very tight. Alistair Bruce Paul. Could change in the next couple of minutes or so uh, in terms of right at the top of the leaderboard. Bryson DeChambeau with the 12-footer to come on the par 5 13th. He's played it in a rather unusual way, but the third shot, fantastic. He's at seven under. Under par. Max Homer, the clubhouse leader, six under par. Strange birdie attempt on the 18th, didn't drop, but two very good rounds for him. Scotty Scheffler, uh, he's got a sort of 12-foot par putt to come from the back of the seventh. Just had a little wobble early in the second round. Six under par, though, just one shot off the lead. Nikolai Hoygaard, the Dane, fabulous masters for him so far. Bogey's at 17 and 18 today, but four under par, that's just three shots off the lead. Danny Willett as well, four holes to play today, uh, is at four under par. Ludwig Ober going up the 18th, playing his very first major, let alone his first Masters. He is at three under par. Not really happening for Rory McIlroy again. Drop shot on the par four seventh for McIlroy. He's at one over, but Tiger Woods in at the halfway stage at one over par. He set a Masters record though. 24 consecutive cuts made. A fabulous up and down from the front left of the 18th green, and the ovation was something else uh, as he marched off the golf course here. Brilliance from Tiger Tiger Woods again. Can he win it? Can he? I don't know. Probably too far away, but he's treated the patrons to something special uh, again today. DeChambeau leading by one mark at seven under par. Well, Alistair says too far away, and now all, by all common consensus, you would think too far away, but I'm sitting here above the 15th green. He hit the best shot that we have seen all afternoon into the 15th. His second shot to within 20, 25 feet to give him an eagle opportunity, which he didn't sink, but it was a birdie. But, but in these conditions, correspondent Ian Carter, who is at Amen corner for us today. So that's over the 11th green and the and the 12th tee. In these conditions, with his knowledge of this golf course and its conditions, he is hitting the ball beautifully. He is hitting the ball beautifully. He knows his way round this golf course. He knows where to miss. He knows everything that there is to know. There is no one in this field who knows how better to play this golf course. And he doesn't make mistakes when he's on song. And so Yes, it's a it's a real stretch to see him contending come come Sunday, but to have made it to where he has made it and Scotty Scheffler, sorry to jump in, guys. Scotty Scheffler trying to save par on the seventh. He's missed it. Couple of mistakes from Scotty Scheffler today. Very short putt missed on the par four fifth. That was more challenging. It was the drive that cost him uh, on the seventh. He missed to the right. Could only knock it into the bunkers at the front of the green and then knock that 12 feet past the hole and putting from the fringe. Scotty. Scheffler has missed and has dropped back to five under par. So he's two behind Bryson DeChambeau. Rory McIlroy dropping a shot there as well. He's dropped back to one over. So if you've been listening on Sports Extra, you would know that we discussed Scotty Scheffler's remarkable consistency and patience <laughs> and not making mistakes <laughs> and the benefit of the mallet putter. And, and probably since that conversation that lasted a good six or seven minutes, he's, he's going backwards, Andrew McGee. <laughs> It's tough out here, Choppers. I'm not sure where you're sitting, but we've just witnessed another triple bogey here on number 12. Zach Johnson flew it almost into Augusta Country Club in the bushes over the screen, came back to the tee, which is very embarrassing. Um, but uh, it's very, very difficult. This wind is swirling. 
guys are being just completely befuddled by it. I mean, you played here seven times, so get, given your knowledge of that, and you're you're out next to Ian on Amen Corner, if you're Max Homer in the clubhouse oh. on six under, are you thinking, I, I could well be in the lead come the end of the day? Well, he, he probably will be, and what a great position, what a great feeling to be off the course after a long day, putting your feet up, watching a little bit of telly, see what the other mates are doing, but uh, uh, yeah, Max Homer is just, I mean, his best finish ever here was what, tied for 18th, so he's a loving alley. Sorry to jump in, Bryson DeChambeau, that looks really good, it is good, the 13th, he's made a birdie, and the lead is two shots for Bryson DeChambeau, he's got it to eight under par, missed the fairway on the right, then strategically played all the way across the 14th fairway to set himself up for the best pitch into that 13th green, and as soon as that putter left the blade, Trish Johnson, it never looked anywhere else. Bryson DeChambeau, eight under par, two shots ahead of Max Homer. Yeah, it was a beauty, wasn't it? Up the hill, left to right, had all the pace on it, just a perfect putt, never looked anywhere else, and he knew it the moment he hit it. What a great birdie that was from a, a very, very poor drive. You, Trish Johnson, uh, LPGA Tour winner, US <laughs> Open winner, tips. Senior Open. So, yeah, I know, I keep leaving that You've out. You've got to put you, that in, mate. OK, I'm done, you know, all right. I love you, but that's just not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, you tipped Max Homer at the start of the week. You were the one that went for him. So what have you seen in him that has pointed you in his direction? I just love everything about his game. I, I, I think he, you know, he just technically he's very, very correct. Uh, there's not a lot that can go wrong in any part of his game. Uh, his short game is sensational. He puts really well. And I love his attitude. I think he's got a very sort of carefree attitude. It's almost as though golf is not the... He's a bit like Scotty Scheffler. It's not the be-all and end-all. Um, everybody makes it so important. But he just looks like he enjoys playing golf. And I, I just think he... I said earlier, you know, he rates himself. He knows how good he is. But he hasn't got that arrogance. You know, I, I like watching him because I, I like his body, uh, body language, you know, his demeanour. And he just is a top top player and I think it's inevitable he will win a major. Um, we talk about people enjoying golf. Um, Danny Willett last night after his first round having come back from shoulder surgery talked about this being a freebie. He talked about himself having freedom playing here. He hadn't hit a shot in anger for many months. Stood on the first tee. He was talking about feeling nervous but he had a brilliant round yesterday. Shot a 68 so that was four under par and he is, on, he is in front of us here on the par 5 15th. John Murray. Yes, he's playing the, the 15th in a textbook fashion. I'm just looking down at him now. The winner here back in 2016, he's gone very sandy today, sort of two-tone sandy colours. Uh, but he, he laid up with his second shot to round about 60 yards short of the water in front of the 15th green, green and his approach shot bang on line towards the flag. The hole is at the back right today, just fluttering away there. And it was right on line, and he has given himself a birdie chance here from round about 12 feet. And that that would take Danny Willard to five under par, sort of within three shots of the lead. And um, and when you talk about him talking about what he did, of course, with Danny Willard, he always talks about what we did, doesn't he? Which is a little thing. He actually talked about how we had a shoulder operation. <laughs> no, you didn't. You had a shoulder operation. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to Bryson on 14. Ali. <laughs> Yeah, Bryson DeChambeau has gone with the fairway wood uh, off the 14th tee. It's the only hole here at Augusta National without any bunkers. It was the one we were telling you about a little while ago on Five uh, Sports. Extra enormous green with huge contours in it. And Danny Willett uh, negotiated that magnificently. A, a two-putt that he got off that green with the first one from, from a long way away. Um, DeChambeau's tee shot fading left to right, Trish. I mean, very safe. It's just rolled off, off the fairway into that, into that first cut here at... Augusta. Yeah, I don't think it's going to make an awful lot of difference to him. Um, uh, yeah, he just uh, just up the right hand side would have been handier, I guess, if he stayed in the fairway. But uh, no real problem for someone with his uh, his ability to hit the ball so high. So he's eight under. Uh, Mark is a two shot lead over Max Homer and Scotty Scheffler, of course, going going the wrong way uh, for once at the moment at five under par, having dropped the shots uh, at the fifth and the seventh. And Danny Willett with the opportunity here to go level with Scotty Scheffler on five under. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Maybe half an hour or so ago. I'm not sure it'll be Danny Willett to play next. His playing partners are well out of it and really battling to make the clut. The, uh, the German Stefan Jaeger is nine over uh, and Austin Eckroth, another winner this season on the PGA Tour, is six over par. Well, 
Well, whilst we wait for Danny Willett, should, should we go from Augusta to Plymouth? Why not? John Akers? I don't have to whisper as well, do I actually? No. Plymouth won. Leicester nil here, and uh, they weren't expecting it, this home crowd. They really weren't, but Plymouth have been really good for their lead. Bundu it was in the first half in the 21st minute. Leicester have come out the second half and have looked better, but they've lost their last two, 1-0 away from home, Leicester, and this home crowd are really up for it. Plymouth won Leicester nil. Can I, can I just say, if you're a Leicester fan and you can hear Trish Johnson giggling, that no, isn't, isn't... That's not me giggling. Well, it, well, it was, and I didn't know whether you might... I don't know whether that's just me that can hear that or whether everybody can hear no. that. And just to, just to explain, that, that's only because, obviously, our gold correspondent uh, is a Leicester fan and, in Ian and, Carter. And, and I was punching yes. the air as an Ipswich fan. Yes. That's what, that's what yes. Trish I was, was not giggling. No that. That's no. not fair to Ian. No. no, I wouldn't do that to <laughs> him. Okay. Okay. I would. Noted. Yeah. Thank Are you, you all right? Are you all right there? Thank you. Not really. No. Uh, What's oh, well, I mean, there are a few compensations, aren't there? Yes, I mean, there are. Amen I mean, corner, you're so. not in the away end at home park at the exactly. moment. You are at Amen Corner. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll move quickly on from the football to Danny Willett. Please do. Yes, Danny Willett, the uh, way is just being cleared for him here on the 15th at this stage of the afternoon. I mean, it's a magnificent scene in front of us. The, uh, the warmth of the Augusta National. It is a, a sun-splashed scene here so many different colours in the stands and around behind the ropes of the spectators, the patrons, mm. and inside, Danny Willett. And this, is, this is quite a story, having not played in a tournament since September. Mm. So he's slipped out now to 260 in the world rankings, but if you've won the Masters, you can always come back and play. And here he is, right in contention. No one expected this. The Yorkshireman is having a look at this. This is a birdie chance on the 15th. This is 12 feet. He has a look at it from behind and then steps up. And there's just a slight movement as he shifts from foot to foot. He's putting into the very edges of the shadows of the tall pine trees behind the green. On its way now towards the hole for birdie. Just slips by on the left-hand side. Chance not taken, but he should finish that off to remain at four under par. Yeah, so he will stay on four under. So that's four off the lead of Bryson DeChambeau, who is on the, well, for the second time this afternoon, is on the par four 14th, having used their, <laughs> that hole to get onto the 13th a few moments ago. You've got Max Homer in the clubhouse on six under. Then you have Scotty Scheffler on five under. Nikolai Hoygaard has finished his round as well on four under. Will it four under? Then Ludwig Erber, he is on three under. And I'm assuming, Ali, you have got a, a sight of the Swede on 18, have you? Not yet. Well, we will do shortly, Mark. Scotty Scheffler we're watching uh, at the moment. So having dropped the shot on the par 4 7th, he's just blasted a fairway wood just up short right uh, of the par 5 8th green. So he'll be looking to get that up and down uh, to get himself a birdie and get himself back to 6 under par. And now we see Ludwig Ober, the tall Swede. Everything seems to come so easy for him. Chipping from the front of the 18th green bounces it into the putting surface beyond the flag. Is it going to use the slope and roll back to the hole? No, it's not. He looks disappointed with that, Trish. Yeah, then, well, he should be disappointed. He's knocked it 15 foot past. I'm not quite sure what he was trying to do there because it was never going to come all the way back down. Um, yeah, he's played that very poorly. He's three under par then. Uh, five shots off DeChambeau's uh, lead. Another shot comes firing into the par five eighth green. That's Xander Schoffle, uh, who's really caught that flush and knocked it uh, beyond the green, over the back, down the slope to the back of the green. The pin here today What's is he on, Ali? on the back right. Now, you see... Xander Schoffler, I'm going to have to find him now, aren't I? Oh, well, I thought he was on your screen. Yeah, he was, but the score didn't come up, so I recognised oh. him. He's one over par, we think, okay. Mark. Mm -hmm. OK, so let me just check that. Yes, he is one over par. I can confirm. OK, if you are if you, if you are with us on, on Five Live, we've mixed things up and haven't been listening on Sports Social. We've mixed things up a little bit this afternoon and put Ali in charge of the computers <laughs> and, the, and the facts and the stats and the, the scoring. And at times, I think Statman Dave from the Fantasy 606 pod will be will be enjoying Ali's struggles as he tries to navigate through the hardest played hole on the course for example which is still 11 I'm assuming yes the big O-Bear on the 18th oh. well that's a brilliant putt that is a brilliant putt from outside of 10 feet down the slope on the 18th for a bogey so we didn't see the troubles that he got into on that 18th so he's in at two under par at the halfway stage so a disappointing drop shot but still 
on a Masters debut, some performance from Ludwig Ober. Rory McIlroy, we are now watching with an iron in his hand, third shot here into the par 5 eighth. He's all in whites and creams today. White baseball cap on his head. Huge divot gets thrown forward from the pitch shot and it's left of the flag. It's slightly long and it teeters on the back of the green, but it doesn't take the slope and roll to the bottom. It's going to be a left to right putt from the back of the eighth green. It just seems a little off again, Trish, at the moment. From yeah, he's not totally on his game. Uh, the fact that he's got such a long shot into the eighth hole when the other two players have comfortably reached uh, would suggest he's, he's a little all over the shop. It's interesting, isn't it? He's obviously been to see Butch Harmon and he's got that uh, pre-shot. I've never seen him do that before. He's got that sort of pre-shot where he's trying to get the feel of getting the club going back just you know just before he hits it to get it in the right position and uh, obviously it you know it'll take time to work in but uh, he's not on it at the moment uh, Jordan Spieth has made a par on the 18th but that is no good for him nine over par for the Masters this year he's normally brilliant round Augusta not this year so Jordan Spieth won't be here for the weekend Bryson DeChambeau our leader by two eight under par ball in the first cut of rough Pine trees just to his right. He's had a little bump and run almost here, trying to go round the trees, running it in, up the slope at the front of the green. The ball needs to keep going, but as soon as it gets onto the front of that green, it'll be thrown away to the right, and it's not got the gas to climb the hill. Uh, away it goes. Scotty Scheffler now pitching in uh, with his fourth shot at the par five, eighth. Magnificent judgment. Clips it beautifully off the turf, and he's knocked it to about three feet, and he'll have that uh, for a birdie to get himself back to six under par mark. Talked about uh, there, Ali Jordan Spieth, and he won't be here for the weekend. Another former champion has had an absolutely horrific day, Cat. Seen uh, Dustin Johnson loping off up the 18th with those long arms swinging underneath his white baseball cap. He's had one of those Dustin Johnson days that he just shrugs off, doesn't he? Dropped a shot here on the par 4 17th to move to 12 Oof. over par. So there were two consecutive former champions going past me. Jordan Spieth first, uh, he dropped a shot on the 17th, uh, so he moved to 9 over par, and Dustin Johnson at 12 over par. I'm having great fun here, though, on the 17th, Mark, because I've got a bit of a game going. <laughs> the, the wind, it lulls the crowd into this false sense of security. They, they all sit there with their, their hands on the top of their hats and then gradually the wind just drops and they all relax and they take a sip of their drinks and then here it comes again, a 40 mile an hour gust and there are hats everywhere like a graduation photo and I'm uh, just guessing how many hats well, come off at each gust. We have seen a couple today when walking the course that have blown off the heads of people and gone on to the fairway and seen the owners of those hats then wonder whether they should just take three or four steps inside the ropes to retrieve their hat it's when a it dangerous has been quite, game. It's, a ve it's a big risk the two people who have done it I have seen them do it and not get into trouble let's go to a main corner shall we because a few people have had difficulties there over the last 20 minutes Patrick Cantley will be coming into sight for Ian well I think he's just teed off on 11 so he'll probably be there in about half an hour um, <laughs> uh, but a few people have got into all sorts of trouble Ian. Yes, we saw uh, Zach Johnson have to come back to the tee and retake his tee shot because he'd lost his ball in the or couldn't find somewhere to drop in, in the bushes if he did locate his ball there. A number of, uh, of triple bogeys. Uh, Steven Yeager, he had a triple bogey. We've seen problems for Sergio Garcia and through this swathe of amen corners, the place where uh, Herbert Warren Wind once uh, wrote that uh, it was a place where your prayers could be answered well, they weren't answered for Ryan Fox, who New Zealander was looking really good coming down the uh, 11th hole. He went through the back of the green, didn't get up and down, dropped a shot to go back to three under par and then dropped another shot on the 12th as well. So he's uh, headed off to the 13th at two under par. It is just devilishly difficult. But one man who's in front of us right now, Phil Mickelson at one over par, well into his 50s now, but still still able to get it around the golf course with that know-how, with that ball striking and, you know, all that we've been saying about Tiger Woods today, a lot of that could apply to Phil Mickelson as well, Mark. OK, uh, 
quickly news of Danny Willett's tee shot on 16? Yeah, Danny Willett leading the, the UK challenge, uh, the Englishman's tee shot at the par 3 16th with the, uh, the, the hole cut right towards the top of the uh, green, the, the back right. Danny Willett has gone to the front right, so he has a put across that top level, which is a, a long outside chance for birdie. He's four under. I think our leader has a very difficult putt, if memory serves me right. Ali? Well, the ball actually rolled off the front of this enormous 14th green. He's got a huge speedy slope in front of him, so he's chipping from the front of the 14th green. No bunkers to negotiate here, all about just choosing his landing spot, seeing the shot, how he then wants the ball to release and react. Couple of bounces, stops up short, well short of the flag on the 14th. And again, that slope is going to take that away and away, and it keeps rolling away. And he's got a long, long putt there, Trish Johnson, to try and save his par. Yeah, interesting decision. He tried to play the lob shot all the way, um, probably regretting that, thinking maybe a chip and run. But he had so much ground to cover. No, he's not played it to, to the best of standards. I uh, could tell you as well, Mark, Rory McIlroy's putted from the back of the green at the par 5 eighth and not being able to make his birdie from there. He's got about four foot remaining uh, to make his par. Just notice as well, Scheffler dropped shots at the fifth and the seventh today and Rory McIlroy did exactly the same. So just at those moments where Scheffler's made the mistakes, mm. McIlroy's not been able to capitalise. He's done exactly the same things and we think that Scheffler, well, he is in very close. He'll have a birdie chance to come on that par 5 8th and McElroy is not going to be able to match that he's got a four footer uh, to come for par McElroy two over for his round today one over for the tournament and Scotty Scheffler at five under par with the birdie and, putt to come three shots off the line and even though it's not match play Trish mm. it, you know if, if Scotty Scheffler is in the lead or there or thereabouts if you are playing with him and he is making a mistake that's when you need to capitalise yeah do you know what Chap uh, Chappers the, re the real thing I'm just thinking about this now watching Rory play it's got actually nothing to do with how good Scheffler is playing Rory's just not playing very well it's just as simple as that you know the, we know the golf that he can play and the golf he's playing at the moment is just it's very average and, and I'm sure he'd admit that if he was playing at the top of his game it wouldn't be worrying how Scheffler's playing Scotty Scheffler from two feet into the heart of the hole there is the birdie the bounce back birdie as well so Bergie's at the fifth and the seventh but the part five eighth he has negotiated uh, in four shots just short of the green with the second beautiful chip shot in close and knocked it in uh, for the birdie four so Scheffler is back to six under par it's two shots off the lead chip shot no I meant chip shot and I thought I got away with it <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I actually didn't spot it. You, you will uh, yeah, your um, guess yeah. from the next person's voice who did. Well, yeah, I know, I know quite a lot of beautiful chip shots. <laughs> um, just, just before you jump in there, John, Bryson DeChambeau uh, from about 20 feet or so here for par. So he could be coming a shot closer to the field. Left arm, ramrod straight, tall putter in his hands, giving it a good biff. Oh, good putt! Hits the right edge of the hole but the hole doesn't receive it, spits the ball out. It's only a couple of inches away, so that is a drop shot for DeChambeau. He's going to drop back to seven under par, Homer six under, and Scheffler with the birdie uh, after the fantastic chip shot uh, is uh, is at six under par. I guess you're not a gravy man as you're, as you're from the, well, the south, or are you? Well, my, I... my, my young son Rory has sort of um, experimented recently with, with either the curry sauce yeah. or the gravy on the chips, and I've got to say, mm, I think there's something in that. Are you a, are you a late convert? in life it could be I mean it, it, I'd still go classic salt and vinegar but I, you okay. know, I'm, I'm prepared to have some fun with it at times well okay are you, a, are you a gravy man on your chips John Murray D definitely not um, salt and vinegar lemon and lemon. mushy pe mushy peas oh. lemon oh. Le lemon juice yeah, I know I know yes I know it comes yeah. out of the inside of lemons yeah, I think you have a very different type of chip shop in Harrogate <laughs> <laughs> We're more, we're more refined on the east side of the Pennines. <laughs> now, let's not start that here. OK. Are we, yeah, are we, we're still waiting for Danny Willett. Ian Carter, has Patrick Cantley arrived? No, he's just waiting for the green to clear. Oh, OK. Hence, I thought I was fairly safe having a big mouthful of cookie. Oh, right. OK. Um, I'll leave you alone, then. Uh, let's... Uh, we've got Bryson... Without gravy. Without gravy, yeah, but sensible. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, 7 under through 14. So he'll be coming round here shortly. Myself and John Murray just stationed over the 15th green and the 16th tee. So he's just one clear now. Scotty Scheffler on 6 under. Uh, as he goes down the 9th, you've got Max Homer on 6 under as well. Uh, and then Nikolai Hoygaard in the clubhouse, like Homer on 4 under. Danny Willett on 4 under. He's 
uh, just talking to his caddy up ahead on the 16th green with the yellow flag on that pin cut back right fluttering from left to right uh, in the breeze uh, and then there's a little gap as well after four under you've got several players who are on two under Louis Aubert after that bogey on 18 Patrick Cantlay as well uh, Ryan Fox is on two under and Matt Fitzpatrick very very consistent today he uh, started the day on one under he birded the par five second to go two under and he has parred everything since then not a drop shot for Matt Fitzpatrick it's Patrick so far. Any sign of an equaliser for Leicester at Plymouth? John Akers. Plymouth 1, Leicester 0, and yes is the answer to that. But Dacca has missed two really good chances. A first-time effort from six yards, which he put wide, and then a moment ago he had all the time in the world on his left foot, other side of the penalty area, and he sliced it horribly. Jamie Vardy has just come on for Leicester. We've got 22 minutes remaining plus stoppage time. It's Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester the nil. Danny Willett on 16 with the refined John Murray. Just thinking it doesn't get much more green to green to green, does it? Than Very good. Than uh, Augusta to Plymouth to Augusta. Green shirts to green jackets. And a man who once wore a green jacket, he's got one here in the clubhouse, Danny Willard, right in the shake-up. This is one of the big surprises of the week. And he's got a chance here, an outside chance, on the 16th, the green of the par three, this to go to five under. But this is 25 feet across the top tier of the green, and he rolls it up from right to left along the slope, and it comes up not too far away, but he will mark it but uh, we'll see if he's able to haul out now for his par three to remain at four under with two holes to play. OK, we wait for that. Pop. Kat, have you got anything up on 17 at the moment? All very quiet, unless you're particularly interested in Eric Van Royen and Jake Knapp, who are at uh, five <laughs> over par and two over par, uh, respectively. Okay. The wind's still gusting, the sand eddying out of the bunkers, everyone having to shade their eyes, and the, there's a sandwich wrapper curling up towards the top of the pine trees and blowing away. We're really exposed up here on 17, and this is why it's been causing so many problems. We've seen uh, Ludwig Aubert just about making his part, then Bogey the 18th in this windswept area. Danny, um, haven't had Danny Willett yet. Dustin Johnson dropping shots. Jordan Spieth dropping shots. It's, it's really, really tricky up here today. The wind is uh, right in the faces of the players as they look back down towards the fairway, contemplating their putts here on 17. Uh, we've got Scotty Scheffler's tee shot on nine. Ali? Yes, par four, ninth. Dog leg right to left. Drive it as far as you can to try and get a flat lie for the second shot. And then it's all the way uphill towards the clubhouse with a green that sleep steeply, I can't speak at all since chip shop, <laughs> steeply slopes towards you and you play from the sort of bottom of that valley. Sort of up beyond the flag, mm. Trish, don't you? Then spin it back, but try and leave yourself that uphill putt uh, if you can. John Rahm, by the way, defending champion birdie chance on that ninth green at the moment two over par for his round today's missed it to the right hand side three over at the moment for the tournament not happening for John Rahm I think I don't know what you think Ian and you spoke to him at the at the start of the week and it was a brilliant interview that we we had on on Monday night but he just I, I, I don't know. There's no, there's no oomph there every time I've watched him this week. No, I think that's a really good way of putting it, Mark. He's just not had any kind of mojo about him, just no momentum, uh, looked grumpy yesterday when things were going against him. I just don't think he's playing as well as he obviously can or as well, anywhere near as well as he did last, last year. And given these conditions, given that the course is now playing very firm as well, it's just totally unforgiving and he's not you know there's no way back if you're not on your game you've got to be absolutely spot on uh, even if you are the defending champion Danny Willett on 16 and he does haul out from just a couple of feet maybe a little bit more than that the Englishman to remain at four under par so three shots off the lead and as you mentioned Mark I thought a really really good sign with Danny, Danny Willett was as the others were playing the other playing partners having a bit of a laugh and a joke it looks very relaxed with his caddy and, and why not you know that's the benefit isn't it of having not been in this environment in the thick of things mm. since September and suddenly finding yourself it, 
rain contention in one of the major in the major that you've won well he's relaxed and he's enjoying it and uh, and as we are all aware when sports people are relaxed and enjoying it it's quite often when they perform at their very best Ali have we described a, a golf shot this week yet as a stonker uh, I don't think we have, partly because I think the last time I heard that was 1991. But <laughs> Tommy Fleetwood hit an absolute stonker uh, into the 18th green to set himself up with a really short-range birdie putt, which he has just popped in. So he is one under par at the halfway stage of this Masters. That is currently six shots off the lead, uh, held by Bryson DeChambeau. Really nice interaction as well, Trish Johnson, with his mm. caddy, as we've been talking about on our coverage over the last couple of days. Local caddy, not his regular caddy. Uh, they've clearly enjoyed their time together out on the golf course. Yeah, this is probably the one golf course where having a local caddy, really, rather than Ian Finnis, obviously, and we wish him well, we hope he gets better very soon, um, can actually be very helpful because he probably knows every nook and cranny and ho obviously helping Tommy. I will say, I went to watch, uh, I went out to the range earlier this morning and I sat down behind the range and Fleetwood was there and I saw him and he was absolutely nutting it. Mm. He was hitting these low Stonkers. shots. Stonkers. Five stonkers. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 maybe not. Not no, so much. No, but absolutely. I love, I love watching Fleetwood. He's one of my favourite players. And it, like I say, when he's on, uh, there's no better player. It's just whether he makes enough putts. Uh, Mark, you and John will have Bryson DeChambeau. We can see him, You yeah. can. Well, he's, he's, he's hit a boomer down the right-hand side <laughs> of the... Uh, exactly. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going there again. Down the right-hand side of the 15th, we saw that wonderful approach shot, didn't we? That second shot, such a key one on the back nine at Augusta to try and attack that green and get onto that putting service. Tiger Woods did it quite brilliantly. Brilliantly, Deshamo clearly in range. Yeah, T Tiger Woods, as myself and John have been saying all evening, has, has hit the best shot that we have seen on 15 today. He hit his second shot to within 20 foot, 25 foot of the pin level with the pin. I mean, he got the distance absolutely oh. spot on. So let's wait for Bryson, John. Yep, and uh, we can see him there at the top of the hill uh, just talking to his caddy, Greg Brody, the two of them. I mean, they're actually probably within probably within 10 yards of where Tiger Woods played his shot from. So it's that similar sort of range, 250, 260 yards in. Playing partners, the former US Open champion Gary Woodland, he's missing the cut. I mean, he's an amazing story, having undergone brain surgery since the last Open Championship, uh, since the last major championship. So he's undergone brain surgery, but he didn't miss a major. And here he is. I mean, he's presumably just very happy to be involved this week and uh, and actually one of the holes in one that we talked about during the par three tournament was gary woodland's par, uh, hole in one and his all of his children and his family were there and it was actually a lovely scene but but missing the cut at 11 over par and Torbjorn Olesen the dane who is a special invitee uh, is also one of um, He's right on the cut line, is Torbjorn Olsson. He's on four over at the moment, still on our big white leaderboards. The cut is coming at four over now. That may change, obviously, over the course of the next couple of hours. So he is right on the line at the moment. Well, one of them has uh, has laid up, and Bry Bryson DeChambeau is still waiting, I think, for the other one to play. The other, the other two are over at the, to their left-hand side of the fairway, so uh, it, it's a bit difficult to see them through all of the pine trees, and we're just waiting for Bryson DeChambeau to swing into action. So while we wait, Ali... Uh, 89 yards for the world number one Scotty Scheffler up the hill at the par 4 ninth bounces into the front of the green is it going to do what it did to Greg Norman final round 1996 where the ball tries to cling on to the front of the slope but doesn't manage to do so so Scotty Scheffler comes up short and when it starts to roll it really continues to roll and he's still going to have 30 or 40 yards to get the ball up onto the putting surface with his third shot McElroy is next to play Scheffler at 6 under par but he has not found the green at the ninth in two John he's still waiting Bryson DeChambeau in navy blue trousers we can see his white golf shoes he was wearing a navy blue jumper this morning very much the live livery actually as the live players do you know wearing here at the Masters in this major what they would normally wear when they play on the live golf tour but uh, he's peeled off that sweater and he's got a uh, a white and blue thinly striped shirt on and uh, with these buffeting, gusting wind that is blowing into his face down the 15th, there's, there's, uh, there's quite a bit of discussion going on here, but I think he's made his decision. And, and presumably the thought will be, do we give it a go? At seven under par, 
and it's into the wind as well. You, you look at the, the pin, you look at the flag on top of it, that's blowing straight back down the 15th fell. It is flapping away the yellow flag on top of the yellow flag stick. So still he waits. So actually, I think uh, one of his playing partners has still got to play. I think, I, think, would... I think one of them is in the is in the trees at the moment. So any sign of Patrick Cantlow, Ian? No, he uh, <laughs> is. <laughs> no, we, we we were a bit previous in our anticipation of him, to be fair, because uh, Nick Taylor, Wacking Neiman, and Russell Henley had to come through first. And actually, Neiman, who you know, we're just talking about uh, about Ollison being uh, an invitee here. Neiman was an invitee as well, the Chilean live player, and he actually went into the water on 11. That's the first ball I've seen go in there. So his position is going to worsen from level par as it stands at the moment. I think we may be ready for Bryson. De Chambeau now. Yeah, Gary Woodland has, has played out. He missed the fairway to the left-hand side. I cannot see where his second shot has gone, but it is uh, Bryson DeChambeau then, who is actually laying up. He's laying up with this, uh, this very brisk, buffeting wind, and it's actually rolled down towards the left-hand side of the fairway, still going, still going, and it's, and it's actually ended only maybe four or five yards away from the rope down the left-hand side, but that gives him the angle to come into the hole which is cut at the back right. So the leader, Bryson DeChambeau, is there in two on the par five. Although that is not, if you know your golf and know your masters, that is not far off where Molinari was when he clipped a tree, clipped the branch in the final round. How many years ago was that now? It's funny you should say that. I was actually just thinking that earlier today when we sat down. I looked up at those branches because I was here that day, which yeah. was when Woods won because yeah. he was in yeah. contention with Woods in 2019. Here, yeah. yeah, 2019 uh, was the year and it, and it clipped the branches and dropped into the water and that was the end of Molinari at that Masters. Yeah. And that's not far off where Bryson DeChambeau has left that ball for his third shot. Ali? Uh, Scotty Scheffler on the ninth if you remember the last time we were talking to you came up short well the the approach shot actually hit the putting surface but it's a steeply sloped green that ninth it all comes back towards you rolled off the front he has played his third shot Trish Johnson six feet or so to save the par for Scotty Scheffler on the ninth yeah he's played the beauty of a third shot probably just to the right of the hole just took a bit of a bounce right first bounce uh, on the green but he's left himself about six feet but it's going to have a lot of break and it's going to be extremely quick if he misses it if he gives it any pace he's going to have about <laughs> eight foot coming back so it's a very tricky one DeChambeau seven under under Max Homer in the clubhouse at six under. Scheffler currently at six under with the par putt to come. Uh, Hoygaard in the clubhouse at four under. Danny Willett also at four under par. Rory McIlroy with a birdie putt to come on the ninth, which he really uh, needs to make. That's going to be another one of those really fast downhillers for him on the ninth, but he's currently at one over par mark, two over for his round today. So back to Ian Carter and Andrew McGee, who are over Amen Corner at the moment. Bryson DeChambeau, just what? 50, 60 yards away to my right as he talks to his caddy about his options for uh, this third. His hat has just come off in the wind, actually, as Bryson DeChambeau's. Um, we, were, we were talking off air, weren't we, Ian, about, you know, we know that he's, he's got a scientific mind, Bryson. We know that he studies the game. He's looking for an edge in any possible way that he can. And he has different irons at this tournament that he's playing with for the first time, isn't he? Because they've mm. only just been approved that nobody else has. Yes, and you trailed ahead to it by saying that the word bulge comes into play. Mm. And that's because it's the, the, the way he's designed them is with a sort of convex face to them which means a sort of bulge on the face of the club and his reasoning for that is that if given the speed that he swings at if he hits it out of the heel or out of the toe of the club with that bulge on it it will impart the kind of spin that will then bring the ball back to uh, roughly the area that the ball was supposed to go to if he'd hit it as he should have done Ali Rory McIlroy, birdie putt on the ninth. He needs it. Oh, he hates it. Stood up as soon as he'd hit that. Trickles down the hill to the right of the hole, walks up immediately and taps it in. It's only a par. Shakes, he's laughing. He's laughing, Trisha. At mistakes he's, he's making, he can't believe it. No, and he's played a beautiful pitch in there as well. Um, as easy a putt as he's going to have, really. But the moment he's hit it, it one, one bogey, all the rest pars. OK for this kind of weather, but not OK in this kind of company.
Right, Scotty Scheffler is next up. Six feet or so for par on the ninth. Scheffler not finding it as easy as he did yesterday. Currently six under par, so level par for his round today. Birdies at the second and the eighth, the two par fives. Drop shots at the fifth and the seventh. The tall American bends down in the light beige trousers, the white golfing shoes, the bluish top, the white baseball cap, bearded chin, mallet-headed putter behind the ball, long shadow stretching out to his right, not going to take too long over this, and into the hole it goes for a par from Scotty Scheffler, so uh, slight error with the second shot that came rolling off the putting surface and back to his feet, great shot with the third though, pitch up onto the green and no mistake with the putter. No, so, sign of a champion there really is, because that was a shocking mistake with his first chip, but the, the second one was just, well, yeah, almost perfection. So Scotty Scheffler on his way to start the back nine. Second round at the Masters, five live and Radio 5 Sports Extra. One shot off the lead. DeChambeau, seven under. Homer and Scheffler, six under. Andrew McGee, just talking about that design then for Bryson DeChambeau's irons. Do, does it make sense to you? I don't understand why it's legal. I mean, I, don't, I, I know drivers and three woods and, you know, any metal clubs that we have in them with a head cover has, has bulge and roll to the face. Um, so I guess there's the precedent's been set by those. Um, but uh, you would I, I question wanna, the wanna, legality, uh, would you? Well, he's, he was approved by the ESGA, what, Tuesday mm. here on site. So I believe, um, you know, it's all good to go. But I, I kind of want to hit him, don't you? <laughs> hit, hit them. <laughs> <laughs> hit the clubs, yes. okay? The, <laughs> see if it works. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I am intrigued by it. And also, Ian, yeah, did I not... Did I not read or hear that they're made by 3D printer as well. Yeah, that was the point I was just about to make. I heard that today as well, which, I mean, it's just getting... I don't really understand the concept of these 3D printers. I think they sound very, very sinister to me. But um, anyway, no, that's... that's You know, it is um, the embodiment of modern technology. And he is, as I was saying earlier on, on, on Sports Extra, he, you know, he is such an original thinker. And this is the guy who plays with his irons all the same length. The only golf out there doing it. Let's see what he does with the one in his hand now. Well, he's put an awful lot of thought into this and he's actually just watched his two playing partners, Woodland and uh, Ollison, go over the green here and it, it, and it really is gusting now. But yet, as I speak, it is calm now. But here we are, playing, wasting no time and it's right towards the hole and it lands just to the left of the hole, actually, probably only two or three feet, if that, to the left of the hole, then hops on to the back of the green, holds up, so he's on the putting surface and he will have a birdie chance to go to go back to eight under par from maybe 11 feet, 12 feet. He's played that beautifully. Back to Plymouth, John Akers. Plymouth won, less than ill. Five minutes plus added time to go. Nerves shredded. Fans of both sides here as Leicester pour forward. Mavadivi, Mavadidi is one that's just missed a really good opportunity. 12 yards first time. Their finishing's been poor, Leicester. The atmosphere and the defending and the work rate from Plymouth has been excellent. They lead by one goal to nil. Well, that, that's the other thing, John, here. I mean, we've been talking about it from a title perspective, but from keeping Plymouth in the championship, this would be huge. John? I'm sorry, mate, I didn't know you were talking to me. Yeah, I mean, it's massive. Yes. You can hear yes. you, you can hear what it means to these fans. They're on their feet. This is the best atmosphere there's been at Home Park in months and months. And they're literally all on their feet, willing them over the line. Three points for Plymouth. I think they only maybe need one more point. Their goal difference is that good. It would see them to 49. But we can't start talking like that. If you're a Plymouth fan, you'll hate me for saying that. Five minutes to go, plus added time. Leicester are on the front foot and Plymouth lead 1-0. So, of course, we'll be back there if anything happens. We'll be back there at the full-time whistle. Danny Willett is on 17. What have you got, Kat? I've got Danny Willett standing, leaning on the uh, handle of his putter. Willett currently on four under par, so three shots off the lead of uh, Bryson DeChambeau, who's at the top of the big white leaderboard away to my right-hand side. Just watching at Stefan Jaeger, the German, chipping his ball back up onto the green. All three of these players through the back of the green on 17. And uh, Jaeger making a, a bit of a, 
a troubled second round here. He's nine over par. The last man, of course, to beat Scotty Scheffler when he won in Texas a couple of weeks ago and consigned Scheffler to a runner-up finish. But uh, Jaeger just tapping in for his par on the 17th, so he'll stay at nine over and won't be making the cut for the weekend. We've also got uh, Austin Eckroat in this group as well. He's at six over par, the projected cut at four. So Eckroat also a recent winner on the PGA Tour, unlikely to make it through, barring some miracle on the 18th. And Danny Willett just standing here now, the 2016 champion, about to putt from about five foot off the green through the back of the 17th, back into the wind, over the crest of the little hill and then uh, up towards the hole here. He's wearing sage green trousers, a primrose yellow T-shirt, and this one rattling up towards the pin and putting on the brakes as it reaches that steep slope on which the hole is cut. And he'll have a tap-in par, Danny Willett, there to stay at four under par. Three shots of the lead of Bryson DeChambeau, Scotty Scheffler a shot back at uh, six under par, and Max Homer already in the clubhouse with his six under par for two rounds completed at Augusta. Danny Willett bending down to pick the ball out of the hole and uh, he'll toss the ball back to Michael Burrow and they head to the last. Yep, they head to the last which is the second most difficult hole on the course, Ali, is it? I'll just get Trish to check. Okay. Trish, Trish has just actually passed me another stat which I'm not going to pass off as my own because obviously you wouldn't believe me. Uh, best round of the day so far, Ludwig Obers 69. He's the only player to break 70 so far. I made a bit of mess at the 18th uh, as well. So very good round from Ludwig Obers. And we're seeing players back off putts all the well, time on the greens at not, the moment, Marcus. We're not, we're not here. Bryson DeChambeau is ready to go. Yeah. Yes, he is. This this to go back to eight under par. This for a birdie at the 15th. He's in the, the shadows of the top all pine trees this from probably 15 feet actually and he steps away and it catches the edge of the hole and stays out i think he thought that was enough there the way that he just stepped back and looked at it but it just took the left edge and then he pops it in that's one that's got away there for, for Bryson DeChambeau. He thought that was him. He did. He did. So he stays at, uh, at seven under par with three holes of his second round to play. So that, that is where he started the second round. Remember, the first round leader after his opening 65. So started seven under a second round and he's still seven under. Ian, any sign of Patrick Cantlay? <laughs> yes. Yes, Patrick Cantlay is here on the 11th and he's just chipped with his third shot and he's failed to find the green with the chip shot from the swale down to the right hand side so he is in severe danger of dropping a shot here and that would take him back to one under par and what you will have ian coming soon actually is is matt fitzpatrick who has completed the 10th and he's parred that as well so he stays on two under he birded the second as i was saying earlier and he's parred everything else since then so he parred the first birded the second and has parred every hole since then. In, in these conditions, that consistency is impressive. Very impressive. These are Fitzpatrick kind of conditions. Hits the ball low, is tenacious, doesn't make too many mistakes and I think since the Players' Championship just playing a higher standard of golf than he has done for much of this year he's a US Open champion and this is US Open tough here he, at uh, Augusta at the he, moment and he's got a test coming through Amen Corner hasn't he Andrew but if he did get a, a bit like John Oakes not wanting to curse it for Plymouth you know I don't <laughs> want to curse it for Fitzpatrick but if he comes through Amen Corner unscathed he's given himself a great opportunity yeah we haven't seen much unscathing in these uh, these two <laughs> holes in front of us, Phil Mickelson with, you know, 10-foot par putt, then a 15-foot par putt on 12 to, to, to get through this with two pars. But that's few and far between two pars. Mostly we've seen bogeys on 11, um, always 10-foot par putts or more, uh, playing very, very difficult. This wind is just really playing havoc with these players I hear today. And I just love the way they look up into the trees and try to figure out and then it just switches and right in the mid they just stand there with their legs crossed and change clubs and it's just the decision making is just paramount right now yeah there are plenty of lob lolly pines here that are swaying in the breeze john murray there are yeah it's a splendid scene i must say isn't it around here there's an explosion of color down 
from where we look here, we're in a position where we commentate at the, uh, this part of the Augusta National. So we're in the back of the grandstand, which overlooks the 15th green. So we're very close to the 15th green and all of the patrons and the green jackets sitting in front of us. And then if we stand and turn and look down, we're looking directly down onto the 16th tee. So it's right towards the back today, 180 yards it's playing. So I'm looking down at Bryson DeChambeau, who is leaning on his on his club he's got his his green live golf bag behind him which has got the name of his team crushers written up the side of it that's his team mark are they are they your team you're a big fan of the crushers i'm, I'm actually impartial when it comes to uh, live teams lives teams yes i am and um he's just juggling his golf ball in his right hand the leader of the masters talk about Danny Willett that we didn't expect that I don't think too many necessarily expected Bryson DeChambeau to be right where he is now but his playing partner Tor Bjorn Olesen the Dane who I remember contending for the Open Championship a few years ago in blue and green he strikes his tee shot up towards the green and the hole today cut towards the top right and it's actually right at it but I think it's rolled on into the bunker at the top so he was right on line just a little bit too much on that and it's through and into the bunker so it'll be Bryson DeChambeau to play next so turning now discussions with his caddy so the 16th to play this this narrow shoot that he plays through with spectators on the right hand side and the stand on the left and then the water and then that sloping green and if you know your masters you will know that on a couple of the days the uh, the positions of the holes on this 16th are very generous and on another couple of days they are trickier and today is one of the trickier hole positions right at the top of the green so you're looking to find that that top tier that upper level here it goes on its way he's staring after it and they're saying come right which suggests it's going left and so spectators are running for cover there were people jumping off their green picnic chairs <laughs> and I think the ball has landed up in amongst them so it's bounced into the spectators which are beyond the green on the left hand side so uh, he will have a shot from there but uh, he sent people running for cover and as you were watching the people run for cover I kept my eyes on Bryson DeChambeau who looked up to the skies as if he was looking for the wind he then held both palms outside I put both arms down held both palms out as to as if to say what the heck happened there I don't understand that at well, all we, we've not seen anyone there in the whole time we've been here and, and actually, it's a bit harder on that green now. If you go back only 45 minutes an hour, the green was clear. And when I say clear, I mean there were no shadows on it now. But now, one of the pine trees has cast a very large shadow over the whole of that 16th green, right up over the hole as well. So putting will be more difficult on that green when he eventually gets there. That suggests we're later in the day, Mark. What time do you think it is? I have absolutely no idea because neither of us have bought a watch out and we did think we'd try and tell the time by the sun and where it is in the sky um, and that is not proving particularly easy for us. I, th I think when the I think when the pine tree crosses the 16th green there it's I think it's nearly five o'clock. Yeah who'd have thought that I mean I mean maybe somebody spoke in your ear who knows John Akers at Plymouth. <laughs> We are seconds away from full time here. I can tell you it's 5 to 10 GMT BST at the moment here. And the Argyle fans are on their feet because it's Plymouth 1, Leicester 0. Five added minutes and we're past that. They've had a good shout for a penalty. Leicester waved away. Vardy stretching a really brave save from Michael Cooper in the Argyle goal. This would take Plymouth to 48 points. And on the cusp of safety in the championship, Leicester, this is their game in hand. They would still be top, but it would be three consecutive 1-0 defeats on the road. Argyle have possession with Michael Cooper, and he's going to take this free kick, and Argyle fans are going to pray that Robert Jones blows his whistle and he has Argyle's players collapse on the pitch they've beaten Leicester City Plymouth 1 Leicester 0 a huge night in the race at the top 
and the race for survival. Plymouth one, Leicester nil. Just, I mean, th- th- I mean, that sounds incredible there, John. At the moment, that what what belief that will have given those Plymouth fans that they are staying up this season. That's seven points from three matches since Ian Foster left as manager, and Neil Jusnip and Kevin Nanskeville have galvanised this crowd. They lost five in a row here without scoring a goal. This is a team with probably the best record in the EFL nigh on in 2023 in terms of their home record. I reckon they need two points to be completely safe. They might do it with 49. That's one more point because their goal difference is only minus eight. It's way better than all the other teams down there. It is absolutely huge, this. It is party time in Plymouth. Thank you very much, John. Plymouth 1, Leicester 0, over to Ipswich and Leeds over the course of the weekend in the race for promotion from the Championship. Up ahead, away to my left, in that late afternoon, early evening sunshine, a horseshoe of spectators has formed around Bryson DeChambeau's ball and the American is currently stalking the 16th green through the shadows as he tries to plot a path for his ball. It, that shot might be a little while in coming so Alistair Bruce Ball birdie chances rare ones on the 10th green McElroy again steps up straight away as soon as he hits the putt we could see the line the camera angle was perfect for us it was right to left he's biffed it a good four feet by uh, as well we saw him do exactly the same thing on the ninth green as well as soon as he's hit the ball there Trish he knows he's He's just not playing well, as you've been saying. Well, to be fair, he's hit some really good iron shots the last few holes. He's putting appallingly. And and the sad thing is, it's one or the other. So the the putt on nine is tentative and he's got no pace on it. And that one, he's just hit straight through the break. And he's just got no feel today with his putter, which is a shame because he's hit some good approach shots. Mark? John? So Bryson DeChambeau is in not too far away from where Tiger Woods famously chipped in on his way to one of his five victories. But Bryson DeChambeau is chipping now from off the back of the green up towards the hole and this looks right on line and it just curls up on the left hand side so the higher side but he has played that brilliantly actually despite his his often rigid looking body language and stance that was a beautiful touch for this powerfully built man the leader of the masters and he is up by the whole side and that should be a par three for him to remain at seven under and with a one-shot lead yes a one-shot lead for now alistair not anymore scotty scheffler (laughs) from close range six feet or so has done what Rory McIlroy wasn't able to do. Putt right into the heart of the hole. He's made a birdie at the par 4 10th. Fabulous hole here at Augusta, right at the start of the back nine. It is the long dog leg par 4. It's like a ski slope. It hurtles away from you down the slope. His drive down there, Trish, was about 350 yards. The pin today cut short right at the front. Rory McIlroy pitched him first, and we thought he'd hit a wonderful shot, which he, he did. did. Scheffler hit it in uh, even closer. There's been a couple of errors from Scheffler today, but some of the golf we've seen as well to make the birdies has been superb and that was another example yeah that's just the perfect example of why these two players at the moment are just not on the same path no trajectory at all you've got Scheffler hitting it into that distance and you know he's going to make it you've got Rory hitting a beautiful shot in first but at no stage does he look like he's going to make the putts and it's uh, it's such a shame because he's you know he's only one over par but he should be banging contention yeah, one over par with a uh, three, four footer here for the par to stay at one over before they head to the 11th. In it goes. So McElroy makes the par, but it's a sort of resigned lean down into the hole. And you can actually see the shoulders slump and a big sigh exhaled uh, on that 10th green. He's really, really frustrated with things at the moment. Eight shots off the lead, now held by DeChambeau and Scheffler. Scheffler's birdie at the 10th uh, has him in a share of the lead at seven under par and he looks like he's loving life and, and why wouldn't he? Yeah, we're still waiting for Bryson DeChambeau's putt here on 16 for par. So whilst we wait for that, let me just bring in our correspondent, Ian Carter, who's at Amen <coughs> Corner. Are you uh, in any way surprised by what you're hearing about Rory today, given his form coming into the Masters? Uh, it's It's just... It's just putting it all together, isn't it? That he just, you know, it sounds from what the guys are saying is that he is he is hitting the fairways, he's hitting the greens, he's creating opportunities, and then he's not able to take 
to take them and that's really been the story of his PGA Tour seri- season so far he is going with this patient approach and that, that has to be the approach and let's face it the lead is at only at seven under par he's within eight shots he, he would want to be in a better position the key thing for him is maintaining that patience and hoping that the chances eventually come if he can take advantage of the two par fives on the back nine then he will post a, a, a decent score and will not be out of this Masters if he tries to push in these conditions he could be in big trouble isn't it strange how we've talked about Tiger not being out of it who is also <laughs> one over and eight off the lead and yet it, and yet we're not we're not affording I suppose Rory that same courtesy well Tiger moment. is exceeding expectations and Rory isn't that's the sure that's yeah. the difference um, we're still waiting I think aren't we for Bryson DeChambeau is he going to go next no the, the, the there's still quite a lot of shilly shallying going on between uh, Ollison and, and Woodland. So, uh, I mean, Chambeau, it's on, it, Bryson de Chambeau, it's, it's t- two feet, 18 inches. So, uh, I, I mean, I don't want to tempt fate. Oh. I don't want to tempt fate. But, but, but. Okay. We have places to go. Okay, we do. And, and the sh- sorry, who was going to come in? Sounds like somebody was going to come in there. The, um, the shilly shallying cannot delay us any longer on the 16th. Uh, we're going to leave you on five live with Dushambo on seven under and Scheffler on seven under, Max Homer on six under, Nikolai Hoygaard in the clubhouse on four under, and Danny Willett is going down 18 on four under. So our golf coverage is going to continue on Sports Extra. And here on Five Live, Richard Foster has the news. And we continue on Sports Extra, where uh, the shilly-shallying is continuing uh, up, ab- up above on the 16th. On the 16th, and Bryson DeChambeau is no nearer to his ball on that. Alistair Bruce Ball, do, do you have eyes on Willett on 18? Uh, not yet. I tell you, we've just seen Jose Maria Olofarbal just come off the back of the 18th green, and he's playing alongside the Latin American amateur champion and I've been itching to get his name into our coverage at some point this week because it's fabulous Santiago de la Fuente uh, who is not going to be here for the weekend it was the very last chance to mention him uh, and we've managed to do it he qualified by winning the Latin American amateur championship at the Santa Maria golf club in Panama Mark have you ever played there Uh, I haven't (laughs) no no Trish have you (laughs) What do you reckon? Well, uh, well, well more, I, more, I, more, no. I tell you what I reckon. Uh, I reckon you're more likely to than well, me. That's true. Really? I will just, I will just say one thing though. Jose Maria, La, uh, Jose Maria Alathabal, uh, back in 1985, I believe it was 84. I won the Belgian girls the same, and on the same golf course, he won the Belgian boys. Oh, there nice, nice. Yes, indeed. And I got to meet him, and he was an absolute <sighs> gentleman. God, oh, lovely. Um, yeah. Shots on the 18th at the moment. Austin Eckroat is just playing uh, up towards the 18th green and his ball has now landed on the 18th green and climbed up towards the top tier there and he's hoping it's going to come back towards the flag again uh, that sand is, is being blown furiously the, the white specks of sand across the 18th green and he is playing uh, in the group with Danny Willett now I think Cat Downs saw Danny Willett's tee shot off the 18th tee and oh that's right Kate it went way way right didn't it it did it didn't look good Ali uh, there's a big bank of magnolia trees along the right hand side as the players kind of plunged down into that little dip before climbing that steep slope up towards the clubhouse and those crowds thronging up on the horizon and poking out at the top of that bank of magnolia trees are two really tall loblolly pine trees and Danny Willett's ball was whistling when I last saw it towards the one on the left of those two loblollies but into the bank of magnolias on the right hand side towards the 10th fairway the wind is blowing an absolute hoolie up here and I think what it did is it just came came up over those magnolias, got caught in the wind and just disappeared outright. We saw the personnel on the course up on the 18th rushing off into the pine straw on the right-hand side. But it, it's really... I don't know what it's like down where you are, Mark, but up here... It it's is 
blowing a yeah. gale. I've had an escaped hat that blew from the walkway between the 15th and the 17th. That it rolled all the way across the fairway and a, a rules it, official had to rescue it. And a few moments ago, Christo Lamprecht's ball was blown backwards off the 17th green. It's blowing that hard. Yeah, well, and it's blowing that hard up here on 15, 16 as well, to the extent that, I mean, John Murray talked about them shilly shallying on, on 16. One of the problems was that either a combination of uh, one or all of Bryson DeChambeau, his caddy, Gary Woodland or Gary Woodland's ball were hit by falling pine cones. Yeah, and at one point I was I was waiting for Bryson DeChambeau to play, and Gary Woodland, I know, you know he was he was about to place his ball on the green. Next thing I, I saw a golf ball rolling down the green. And, and whether it was blown there th- by a, a particularly violent gust of wind or whether something, I would say to Ali and Trish, just to keep an eye on the pictures because I'm sure they'll show it, mm. whether a pine cone or some piece of flotsam and jetsam blew out of the trees and hit the ball and knocked it down the green. Be- oh, yeah, yeah no, we're seeing it now. Yeah, go on. We're seeing it now, John, and I don't think anything right. hit it. So Gary Woodland there, Trish, mm. has, has marked the ball, and he wasn't even looking at the ball. He's backed off about four or five paces just to sort of get himself ready for the sort of the, the pre-shot preparation for the putt. He's looked back at where his ball was, and it's disappeared from view, and it's rolled 50, 60 feet down to the bottom of the green. Yes, and well, he I didn't actually see that. He definitely had marked the ball, hadn't he? So it yeah, shouldn't yeah. be a problem. He's just going to replace it exactly where it was. Yeah. So. Yeah. There is, he hadn't, he hadn't I was going to say, caused so he, anything. I was going to say, Trish, so he did, he did, uh, he did replace it. He's rolled in the putt, Gary Woodland, who, who's, who's missing the cut. But at the same time, the um, Bryson DeChambeau was, was, was looking, because I think Gary Woodland was calling over an official, but uh. Bryson DeChambeau was actually saying, no, it's OK, it's yeah. all right. But what I would add to that is mm. Bryson DeChambeau and, and the players and all around the green were, look, were looking, you know, a little... Look, well, there is stuff, there are pine cones falling off the trees all round here, and now they've not only fallen off the trees, they're then being blown by the wind across, well, the sort of walkway between 15 and 16, but they're getting ever closer to the 15th green. They're dropping off the loblolly pines by the 16th green, and in fact, John, as, as we look up to the bunker that's back right, which is where some of the balls have gone today, back right, you can see there are maybe eight, ten, quite sizable pine cones that have fallen into the bunker. And I think one of them either hit Bryson DeChambeau or hit his caddy or or very nearly hit one of them. Yeah, and and of course the the serious point here as well is, remember what happened last year, not too far away from here actually, this very point at the early part of the 17th, which is in that area of the golf course, and I think it's only a human, natural human reaction for Bryson DeChambeau and everyone down there to be very anxiously looking up at the trees, and they made their way very quickly through the trees actually to uh, to the 17th green. Uh, and, and the wind last year was nowhere near as strong as it is at the moment, which was when those three trees came down on the 17th fairway. Ali? Uh, Bryson DeChambeau giving it absolutely everything off the 17th tee. That ball, the hang time on it, it stays in the air for absolutely ages. Goes shooting forward up the 17th. Cat Downs is definitely going to have a view of that. I was sitting in that commentary position yesterday, Cat, on the 17th, and I was actually going to put an application into Augusta National to just remove a couple of the pine trees down the left-hand side, which, which obscure your view slightly when the majority of the drives land in the landing area. That one, to me, from DeChambeau, looks like it's gone way better beyond that. I don't know if you can see the ball up on the right-hand side of the fairway there. It would be most useful if they would honour your application to remove some of those pine trees. I, I can't see any ball on the fairway at the moment. I'm having to poke my head up above. We, our commentary positions are protected by these little screens of, of um, plastic, you know, clear plastic that we can see through. And if I bob my head down, I'm quite sheltered from the wind, but I've got to stick my head up to get a clear view down the fairway to look through my binoculars. And I, I can feel the sand from the bunkers lodging in between my teeth it's crunching between my (laughs) teeth as it blows up the hill but no I can't see any ball on the fairway at the moment that doesn't of course mean that it's not there and I'm scanning across the fairway at the moment with my binoculars but uh, I'm sure that Bryson DeChambeau Gary Woodland and uh, Torbjorn Olison will be coming up the hill any moment
good now, Alan. Yeah, no, DeChambeau in, in, in good shape uh, on the 17th, but I think he's a long way up there, and the further you get up that 17th, the easier it makes that, that second shot. Mark, news as well of Danny Willett on the 18th, because we talked about his wild drive. It was one of those on the TV where they put the shot tracer on it, and, and you think, surely he kind of hit it that far right, this, this sort of yellow line just bananaed off to the right-hand side. But he actually went so far right, it seems as though he was hitting his second uh, from out towards the 10th fairway. We then saw him swing through and play the second shot and we think the ball might be in the bunker at the front of the 18th green but the cameras didn't actually pick it up so uh, we'll confirm that when we can Danny Willett four under par uh, playing the 18th that is three shots off the lead held by DeChambeau and Scheffler and Ian and uh, Andrew McGee are going to have a little wait uh, for Rory McIlroy and Scotty Scheffler to appear uh, in front of them on the 11th green because the last shot we've had two shots of them sitting on the 11th tee there's a big sort of cooler box to the left hand side of that 11th tee and they're all just standing there and gassing and chatting away and well, actually they're just about ready to play now uh, on the 11th Scotty Scheffler is standing over his drive so there has been a hold up on that 11th tee let's just see what Scheffler can do the famous swinging right foot Trish Johnson you're nodding absolutely nutted it hasn't he it's perfect slight bit of draw middle of the fairway just just going to curve a little bit down towards the left but that is position A there you go Mark um, well, if they're going to be waiting for Scheffler and McElroy, that means the group ahead must be uh, near the green or approaching the green because of, presumably they've played their second shots. And that includes a, a very sort of indifferent John Rahm, but a very much in the mix Matt Fitzpatrick. Right. Right. Ian. Correct, uh, Mark, and uh, those players are now coming into view and all three have found the putting surface <laughs> with their approaches and I think that's pretty much the first full house of successful approach shots that we've seen today. The defending champion, John Rahm, is the last to appear at the putting surface. He's at three over par. Fitzpatrick at two under par has played golf, par golf, ever since he birded the second hole to get to two under par. Par. So very impressive stuff for a man who's wearing um, white trousers and a, a sort of pale yellow shirt and white cap. And so he will be putting from the very front edge of the green for an unlikely birdie. Ali, you can see Rory McIlroy. Yeah, Rory McIlroy uh, on the 11th tee, about to hit the driver. One over par for the tournament, two over par for his round today. He started it down the right and it doesn't look like it is coming back towards the fairway. Well, it's absolutely fine. Actually, goes flat flying over uh, that curtain of trees away to the right-hand side and pulls up uh, in the fairway on the right, Trish Johnson. Yeah, perfect. Just teed it down. Very different ball flight to the other two. And he had that really teed down, trying to hit a slightly lower one down the right-hand side. Perfect position. Uh, in terms of that uh, that cut line today, players at the moment in danger of potentially not being here for the weekend. Defending champion John Rahm, currently three over par uh, in front of Ian Carter at the moment in Amen Corner. Hideki Matsuyama around about that area of the golf course as well. He's at four over. Victor Hovland has reached the turn in six over. That is seven over par for his front nine today. Treble bogey uh, on the second hole, the par five eighth. And Justin Rose, Mark, in at seven over par today. So he was six over for his round today, Justin. The, the big white leaderboards here can fit 10 names on so there are there are 10 players on there who are under par is is that the only 10 in the tournament uh no there is more than that there are there are more than 10 players who so are there are a few more on one under than just glover yes, fox correct. and can they okay correct. um let's go over to 17 where the galleries look decent actually Kat and you've seen Bryson DeChambeau's tee shot and you think? Yeah and he's given them something to marvel at Mark it's an absolute whopper it's 440 yards up the hill here on 17 and he's put it to inside 100 yards from the pin all he's got to do is just toss this little wedge up into the air and let the ball float in on the wind that is whistling up behind him biggest drive of the day an absolute Bryson DeChambeau a textbook shot from the 20 2020 US Open champion, exactly the kind of thing that the crowd have been following him around, wanting to see, you know, he, he did leave the tour, didn't he, for a couple of weeks here and there to go and take part in longest drive competitions when he was at his very biggest and muscliest. And now here he is just with the most delicate little wedge chip shot from down in the middle of the fairway, 
And he can hear the murmur of appreciation and the applause from the crowd. He's put it to within five feet. He'll have a really good look at Birdie here. And just reading an article earlier on today in uh, one of the golfing magazines, I think it was Golf Digest earlier on, about how Bryson DeChambeau has changed. Not only his attitude to the game and, and his physicality, but uh, just the way that he approaches his golf. Just doing the same thing, not pushing, not trying to change the game. And it's really, really paying off for him here. Completely different golf course to winged foot where he muscled his way to that US Open title in 2020. Here he is just picking his way around, playing delicate golf, mixing that with that blend of power that he has. And it's really paying off for him, Mark. Uh, let's go on 18 where Danny Willett is in trouble I think Ali yeah not good news so got away with a wayward drive to the right hand side second shot from away to the side of the 10th hole uh, ended up in the bunker as we had speculated third shot from in the bunker he couldn't get it out of there and then the fourth shot Trish Johnson you just saw that one from the bunker again and he's gone way over the flag to the back of the 18th green so he's already played four he's, that's a possible double there on 18 it's an extraordinary finish to a round that's been you know pretty pretty decent uh, a horrendous drive I've never actually seen anybody have a fairway shot from the right of 18 but he had a perfect shot left it in the bunker for, which players never do and then he's he's actually thinned his next one out of the bunker and he's left himself with a very very difficult two putt for you know he, he could be triple bogey yeah potentially yeah so Danny Willett uh, four under par playing that last hole but so his first says, one his first one out of the bunker didn't get out of the bunker yeah. well the problem the problem we got there mark and i know you're gonna have a little chuckle at this with me at me at the helm of the controls you know when you said how many players are there on the leaderboard are there more than 10 in the red numbers <laughs> yeah. so that obviously that's you, your fault so i, I go you off to, to multitask a leaderboard. i go off to a leaderboard i turn my head away at that second will it hits that shot i didn't see that shot so i'm now going to have to go on the masters app and find that shot and then i'll report back to you on exactly what happened with that shot here he is anyway <laughs> With his, Shall with I ask his, you a question? No. <laughs> fifth shot. This is for bogey, and this is from up at the top and the back of the 18th green. And as Trish said, it's really slippy and fast and quick, and it's missed the hole to the left. A couple of feet to the left, and it's rolled on by. And that's a nasty one to come back to try and make a six there, Trish. Yeah, he's got at least six or seven feet there. And this is just a disastrous finish to what really was a very, very solid round of golf indeed. Let's hope he can knock that one in, because I'll tell you what, if he doesn't hold that, mm. his, uh, his dinner's going to tastes pretty shocking tonight so four under par playing the 18th if he doesn't hold that he drops back to one under par if he can hold it he'll be at two under par and the camera's just cut away from that 18th green but goodness me i'm not going to miss that one mark so uh, so when it comes back we'll be there uh, there with you <laughs> all right uh, i'm, I'm going to go and try and find the shot on the app as okay. well uh, the, uh, by, yeah and we say this every time by the way if you if you don't have if you're listening to us download the masters app because it is a fan it, it, it's one of the best sports apps that you can get see all the shots all the stats all the all the you know, leaderboards and so on and so forth it is brilliant Cat. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not where Ali is at the moment. It sounds very stressful with all those computer screens and having to dash around and find all the information. I'm just here on 17 on my own in this tranquil corner of uh, Augusta National, which is being absolutely buffeted by the wind at the moment. In the centre of the green, there's a, a way in the bunker behind the green. The sand is pouring over the lip of the bunker like a tidal wave and flying off towards the 18th tee. But in the centre of the green, Bryson DeChambeau is stock still, just crouching down behind the ball and using the thick handle of that long putter to line up the ball. Now stepping back, taking another look at the ball from behind. Couple of little twitches of the putter head. And now here he is, ready to take on a birdie putt that would see him back in the outright lead at the 88th Masters. <laughs> he can't barely balance in the wind. He's balancing on one foot. Just going to pick up the ball once again. It might have twitched in the wind. There were pine cones and leaves wheeling across the surface of the green. Really is extraordinary conditions out here today. And now he's standing behind the ball, casting a vivid dark shadow. And the ball between his feet, white golf shoes, navy trousers, blue t-shirt and he slumps forward bends at the hips as the ball curves around the back edge of the hole 
and just trickles by by a couple of feet. He's going to mark this and have another go, but uh, a really good birdie opportunity swinging out from Bryson DeChambeau. Should tidy up for par, though, here, the 2020 US Open champion. He's just dipping the peak of his cap to protect his eyes from the white sand that's pouring out of these bunkers, ripped by the wind and flung into his face. And he nestles the handle of that slightly overlong putter into the crook of his left elbow and sends the ball into the hole for his par. Just uh, touches the peak of his cap as the crowd rise around me here on the 17th to follow him up the last hole, hands the putter to Greg Bodine and uh, off they go towards the last. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau just having a chat through it, shaking his head ruefully. Knows that was a missed opportunity to pull clear of Scotty Scheffler right at the top of the leaderboard, but as they are, Scheffler at seven under, DeChambeau at seven under and DeChambeau with just one more chance now to get back into the outright lead. It's just uh, get news uh, on Danny Willett on 18. Yeah, just waiting to see the pictures, Mark, but I'm afraid it's bad news for Danny Willett because the uh, the putt we were talking about, the one he had remaining for the double bogey six up the hill, we're going to see it now, so not commentating on it live. I know exactly what is going to happen here from about eight feet up the hill and it's just missed on the left-hand side. What, a, what an annoying way to finish uh, what has been a fantastic Masters to the halfway point. A treble bogey seven down the 18th, caused initially by a wayward drive, although he did have a, a relatively clear shot with his second into that bunker. Trish, you've now seen the first bunker shot that he tried to play, his third shot on the hole to try and get out. What will happen there? Yeah, basically he was at the back of the bunker and the wind was absolutely howling and he just, I don't think he, I don't think he hit it Port that poorly, it just the wind got it, and he just didn't get out of the bunker. He just, and it wasn't a total duff, but it was certainly nowhere near enough. And then, obviously, the compensation uh, caught the ball very, very much first and uh, left himself such an impossible putt. Yeah, really. and as soon as you saw where he was putting yeah. from, you said there's a danger of a three putt there. That's exactly what's happened, Mark. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know, he didn't even think he was going to be playing this week. We heard him talk yesterday. He was really enjoying himself, and he described it as a freebie. But that really is going to annoy him because that, oh, that's, yeah, it's what happens, isn't it? You, you. You know, you play, you play 35 fabulous holes of golf and then one is just so costly and from four under par, you know, and, and looking like possibly making a 72 there and four under par, three shots off the lead, drops three shots on the one hole. It's a 75 today and he's back to one under. It's, uh, it's six shots off the lead. Through, through actually, Trish, not, you know, even though he went way right on, on 18, he still had a shot with his second shot. So, it's, I mean, he must be, well, yeah. we might hear from him, but the frustration from possibly being two, three shots off the lead overnight, depending on what Scheffler and DeChambeau, to, to now six, seven off the lead. Yeah, I think, I think Ali's just an uh, understatement of the year there, to be honest. <laughs> <He's>, uh, mm. <laughs> to say he'll be livid will be mm. uh, an understatement understatement um, and yes he got away with the drive uh, he had a decent you know chance to hit a decent second shot and it's not that hard up and down to be perfectly honest because he's got a load of green to play with players very rarely chunk it and leave it in a bunker when you've got so much room to play with and and then to overcompensate and do the complete opposite I mean never see anybody thin it out of the bunker these guys are so good out of bunkers it's just it's a, such a rare occasion to see that just just while Trish is talking to you there Mark News and Bryson DeChambeau off the 18th tee Cat. Yeah, another absolute whopper for Bryson DeChambeau, his last uh, tee shot of the day, just creeping along the right-hand side of the fairway. And I can see there's a little gap through two uh, lob lolly pines that look like rugby posts up towards the, uh, the the cabins and the top in the distance, those little white clapboard houses at the top of the hill. Bryson DeChambeau's ball just nestled in, tucked on the right-hand side of the bend as it goes round up towards that last green. It's in prime position. He should have absolutely no problem going for the pin on the 18th here. There are a lot of officials around 15 and 16 who are scurrying around trying to remove pan cones or keep them off the green or try and keep them out of the, the bunkers and I would imagine it's a scene that's being replicated on other holes Ian. So this is why there has been a hold up on the 11th because after each group that comes through uh, two guys come on with leaf blowers portable leaf blowers to clear the debris from the putting surface but actually with this group that is here now and John Rahm is in the process of three putting this 11th to slip to four over par the defending champion now on the predicted cut mark with that <laughs> drop shot but when they arrived here Rahm was about to putt from the very front edge of 
the green and a huge gust swept across and all the debris was deposited on the green so he then insisted on the groundskeepers to come back with their leaf blowers and they had to do a big well it's the opposite of hoovering isn't it but you know what I'm, I'm, I'm saying to clear the green he's finally putted came up way way short had his putt just now for par which has just missed and then it was Matt Fitzpatrick who's at two under par completely clean scorecard today but that is under huge stress now because he putted gave it a little bit too much and the ball has run on by eight feet and he's putting from the shadows at the back of this 11th green with the trees waving animatedly in the background but he's in an area of apparent calm as he sends this forward and into the hole that's brilliant from the Englishman and Matt Fitzpatrick makes a precious par at the 11th and it keeps him in contention at two under par yeah lovely just trudging along making hard pars on hot on a hard day like this that's exactly what you have to do but that's just that's just the key today making those six foot eight foot par putts i think he learned from uh, john rom john rom left it maybe 15 feet short on his long putt and matt said i'm gonna at least give it a go had a left to right break on it and it was read perfectly matt fitzpatrick to the 12th tee at two under how much, Andrew McGee, having, having played this seven times, are you second, third, fourth guessing yourself with the wind? Yeah, we've been talking about that. That's why we loved uh, Oberg so much, the way he sets the club down behind the ball and just swings away. You can tell his mind is free and it's clear he's made his mind up. He's been very decisive. Key for everybody out there listening, be decisive on these kind of days. Don't change your mind and don't change clubs. Get up there and play away. Scotty Scheffler yesterday when he was asked about the wind said well I did try to wait until it stopped and it just never stopped <laughs> <laughs> well it, it does beg the question doesn't it at, at what point um, do you do you have to have to hit because you are given an, a, 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 in the rules of the game you're given 40 seconds to hit well these players are taking way over that I timed Jason Day on the 12th tee and he was a minute and 20 seconds for his tee shot mm. and he was by no means the slowest because of the fluctuating conditions with these winds sweeping in. He also said Andrew it, it's kind of one of those deals where really you are guessing sometimes and you can't get every wind right it's not possible so actually sometimes i suppose i guess it's not punishing yourself or your caddy for that matter for getting a wind wrong um correct i mean this this 12th hole is indicative of just what you just said guys are just standing there with their legs crossed and legs crossed means they're taking more time than they should mm. <laughs> to me and they're just they just don't know what to do this is a classic number 12 day right here 152 yards only but it's just it's just the hardest I think I've seen it play in many, many years. Because then there are other things, aren't there, Trish, really? You know, it, the, you wait for it to stop, and then you think it has stopped, so then you try and take your shot. But then, you, but then you might rush it if you're trying to take your shot, if you're trying to get that window of 15 seconds when, it hasn't, when, when you think it's stopped. Yeah, it, it's so incredibly difficult. And we're just watching Scheffler here. He's, he's stood in the middle of the 11th fairway, and he's just stood over it, and this gust has come up. You can see his shirt. I mean, it's, it's almost ripped off his back. So he's he's got a club in his hand that he's thinking, OK, this is a certain distance, but with that wind, uh, just no chance, really. Just watching Sergio Garcia, after all of the delays on the 16th green, Sergio Garcia's just missed a short put for par, and that means that uh, Sergio Garcia, former champion here, he is four over par, so so right on the, the current cut line. John, I'm just going to jump in there because uh, Matt Fitzpatrick has hit his tee shot at the 12th and has found the putting surface, low trajectory, boring its way on that 152-yard journey towards the flag and Scotty Scheffler has simultaneously hit his second shot into the 11th and has got it right up to the right edge of the green. He will have a big swinging right to left putt but he will be putting with his third shot. Now McElroy with his shot into this 11th so often the nemesis for Rory McElroy, and he's found the water down the left hand side. It is impossible it would seem for Rory McElroy to play a Masters and not find the water on 11. Incredible. I mean, that's the second ball we've seen in the water after Neiman. Uh, just, you have to play out to the right. You just can't lose your, there, there's one. He lost his patience. He lost his patience. He tried to bite off too much. 
you have to take your time. Say that's the right one over is not terrible. Tomorrow might be calm. Shoot a 65, kind of play your way back in. Stay patient. But that's he, the, but he knows that, Andrew. And and he I knows mean, it. It's hard you, to do. You, you, you two, I think, were talking what 90 minutes ago, two hours ago, about how everything goes right at 11. That you, that you don't, you don't, you, you know, if you're going to play it, you go to the right of the green. Yep, it's the miss. Xander Schoffle's missed it to the right of the green. If anything was going to go wrong with Scotty Scheffler's approach, it would either go a little bit to the left, in which case it'd be on course for the flag, or it'd go a little bit to the right, and it would be in that swale from where he, he could comfortably chip. And yet, McElroy has gone left, and he has found the water. And this is just such a familiar, familiar process that he is going to be going through. I mean, he knows the yardage from here, doesn't he, Andrew? Because yeah. he, just, he just does it every Every single time he usually misses out to the right gets that angle and then bites off too much and um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sorry but that is a, a really really bad error from so Rory McElroy. Are, are you shaking your head more at McElroy or Ali's mastery of the control center I think Ali's been magnificent Oh. Hey. It's a very, very difficult job. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm proving that, Ian, aren't I? Uh, do you want to use a Bryson DeChambeau on the 18th? Is that, is that what you were asking yes. for? And then I wasn't, I wasn't there. <laughs> well, he's, he's trudging his way up the 18th fairway. He's played his second shot into the 18th green. And a bit like his tee shot at the 16th, actually, he, he's been surprised. He's, he's gone big and he's gone long. And where he's ended up, actually, Trish, is, is very similar to where Danny Willett three-putted from right at the top slope of that, of that 18th. Green. Well, it's an extraordinary shot, to be honest. He's in A1 position on 18. Absolutely Amy. mullered a drive up there. He's hardly got any club in in comparison to most of the players we've seen today. And he's pitched it about, I'd say, a full 20 yards behind the flag, which is extraordinary. Admittedly, it is playing ridiculously, you know, it is, is incredibly windy and gusty. But that's just an extraordinary shot. He's got about a 90-foot putt coming down the hill. Mm. I can't remember it, Mark, being... I can't remember the last time it was as windy as this, but no. it, it's certainly, you know, um, it's challenging for the players, but it's um, it's fun to watch, isn't it? Them, them trying to deal with it and wrestle with it and cope with it. I, I mean, I think my first one here might have been 2013. Uh, obviously, there were a couple where we weren't here because of COVID, but, but I can't remember it in the last decade. Ian, Ian will, will probably correct me here, but I can't remember experiencing conditions as blustery as this in the last decade I, I think these are the windiest conditions I can remember I was thinking that when I was walking down here um, they were very windy uh, and hostile in the year that Trevor Immelman won which was that 2008 eight. and 8 yes. oh I just beat you but that was that cold <laughs> that was cold you've got, you've got a screen here's Rory McIlroy <laughs> now playing his fourth shot on this par 4 11th having taken the penalty drop from the water sending it forward on a low trajectory and beautifully controlled by McElroy the brakes coming on as the ball entered the shadows where the hole is located and he's given himself five feet for a bogey five a must make five feet and somehow he's got to do something on the closing stretch of holes without losing his patience yeah he's, he's got to forget everything that he's been you know Hot lately and, and get in there and grind this out Rory McIlroy style and do it on his own. I know Brad Faxon's his putting guru and he just went and saw Butch last week but maybe he's had too much information or maybe it's going to take more time to, for him to settle in but uh, he's got a downwind, downhill very fast putt here for five. I'm just looking away to my right in the distance, the 12th green that's where Matt Fitzpatrick is, he's down on his haunches he's come off the green to get his eyes actually at green level because of that bank at the front it's not his turn to putt yet but he's going to have a putt to go two under par for his round and three under par overall and that is very much in the mix here, remember by Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler are the leaders at seven under par and Scheffler is here on the 11th and he is surveying his birdie putt here and one thing we know for certain as far as that's concerned Andrew is that it's going to move from right to left <laughs> all day long we've seen this putt I don't think Fitzpatrick was above the hole I'm trying to count how many other folks have, have played this and read this correctly I know you're coming through the out the sun into the shadows which is always difficult to read the wind is ripping from right to left the slope is a little bit from right to left but no one has played it 
high enough, but if anybody can, Scotty Scheffler with his new face-balanced mallet putter. Has he got a chance? <laughs> well, let's see. Tall figure, bearded figure. The world number one. One practice swing, two practice swings, just feeling the pace that he needs to put on this putt. He's been grinding over it for a long time. It's downwind as well. So that's another factor that needs to come into play. He'll be putting right next to the fringe of the right side of the green. A yawning bunker just away out from his right-hand side. Sends it on its way, swinging from right to left, swinging from right to left. And that's a pretty decent effort. That should be his par four there. Ali will have a birdie putt for Matt Fitzpatrick on 12 momentarily. But over to you. Yeah, just waiting to see what Bryson DeChambeau can do from the back of the 18 green Ian so keep us posted on Matt Fitzpatrick if you need it back we will be right there but we saw Danny Willett three putt for his treble bogey seven on the 18th and here we go Trish this is even further away isn't it oh it's miles away this I mean and he's coming this totally different way so he's playing this massively out to the right the wind is hugely right to left but he's playing about 10 foot a break on this so he's he's going down the hill he's got to get it just about to stop halfway to, maybe three quarters of the way down and then just let the contours and the hill just bring it down slowly to the uh, to where the flag is but on its oh. way down isn't it sort of trickling its way rolling from right to left not quite giving it enough left himself maybe 10 feet or so for the par Ian 12th green and Matt Fitzpatrick down on his haunches holding his putter out in front of him like a water diviner just lining up there he's dispensed with the habit of keeping the flag in the hole it might be because they're sort of rock rocketing around in there but anyway he's putting for birdie up the hill now and he's up and he's after it and he's disappointed because that's missed to the right and it's gone on by around about three four feet as well so a tester coming back for Fitzpatrick who's currently at two under par. John Rahm with a three. Just if anybody's interested, four over John Rahm. Can he make the cut? Not, not a good place to be for a past champion to come back and miss the cut the next year, the defending champion. He just looks so disinterested. How can he be disinterested at the Masters? I don't quite get that. I think it's just uh, an expression of frustration as much as anything else. And all these players, Mark, uh, they're standing and waiting. And it's going to be Ram who's going to be putting next here on the 11th. But they're all having to hold on to their hats. Um, I agree with you. I, I, this is as, as windy as I've ever known it here. Yeah, I mean, uh, as, is, uh, as are the majority of people around us here in <clears throat> the galleries. One, uh, one small child just in front of us here, his baseball cap went flying across in front of us and was picked up by uh, someone three or four seats away from me uh, there's a man in front of me who's got a sort of floppy sun hat on but it comes with a, an elasticated piece of string and he has put that under his chin to keep that hat on his head so it doesn't go blowing across and actually in front of us here and we talked to Ali earlier about there are ten names on a leaderboard are they the only ones who are under par well actually uh, there, there is a, a man in this group, in Sepp Stracker, who is under par. He is one under uh, for the tournament. And actually, he isn't on the leaderboard at the moment. They kept Lucas Glover on there, who is level par. But Sepp Stracker, one of the three we are seeing here, along with Mickelson and Fina. Yeah, and Lucas Glover's just come through and actually missed a chance for a, a birdie at the uh, at the 15th. So he remains at level par. And Sepp Stracker, the big Ryder Cup player, as he is now, made his debut in the autumn, the uh, Austrian-American is very well placed, having laid up in two at the par five here. John, Mark, if you can hear me, uh, just to let you know that Matt Fitzpatrick is striding off to the 13th tee with the par in his pocket. No fuss at all with his two-putt par on the 12th. Now we just turn our attention to the co-leader, Scotty Scheffler, because this putt is to remain in a share of the lead with Bryson DeChambeau. And uh, before that, it will be Rory McElroy and McElroy, who is putting, of course, here for a bogey five. And it's must make for the Northern Irishman. And he just bends down and picks up a little bit of debris that just came across and landed between his ball and the hole. All of this putt in shadow. There's just a little pale smidge of lighter grass just to the left of the hole. And now here he is, and this is six feet, sends it forward, vital putt, 
and it's missed and it's missed and it's going to be a double bogey at the 11th his worst hole traditionally at every Masters and it's still not a gimme alley but it looks like it's going to be a double bogey six for Rory McIlroy at 11. Oohs and ahs because Bryson DeChambeau has dropped one at the 18th. He had that six footer from down the hill. It was the second shot that's cost him. He went big, he went way long. We saw Danny Willett three putt from back there. And Bryson DeChambeau, Trish, as long as he pops this one in, is going to do exactly the same thing, which means he will drop to six under and Scotty Scheffler will lead on his own at seven under. Yeah, disappointing way to finish. Hit a good putt, a positive putt, but it just didn't come back at the end. Thought it was going to break a tad right to left and it just just didn't move it was a straight putt in it goes from very short range for Bryson DeChambeau and very theatrically he lets the shoulders slump a little bit drop shots on the last so a 72 becomes a 73 handshakes all round but in very very good position to attack the weekend DeChambeau six under par one behind Scotty Scheffler you're watching him Ian Yes, I am, and he's just waiting for Xander Schauffele to finish off on this 11th hole before he finishes off from short range for his par, but Rory McIlroy did make his putt for a double bogey six, and that drops him back to three over par. So McIlroy now from potentially vying for maybe a little bit of contention going into the weekend is instead having to knuckle down and make sure he is here for the weekend he's at three over par and uh, that is just one shot better than the four over par mark that the cut line is at the moment a lone figure on that 11th green right now down on his haunches is Scotty Scheffler and he is getting himself ready for this short par putt having hit a wonderful approach in gave it a good go with the birdie attempt it's only 18 inches and Scheffler knocks it forward and into the cup and remains in a share of the lead at seven under par indeed the outright lead now because Deschambeau back at six under par so Scotty Scheffler the hot favorite the world number one goes to the 12th tee at seven under par and out in front well, he has holes to play. Um, I'm going to bet you a dollar he doesn't end up at seven. I'm going to say less. Um, and by that, you mean less according to par or what, less, better, the, better less than, than seven? Seven under. Of course, he's playing just really, really difficult. And let's see what happens on 12. Let's get past. Let's go one hole at a time, what our coaches tell us to do. And one shot at a time. One That's the a crucial time. thing. So here he is. He lopes up onto that. 12th tee and look at Rory McIlroy just standing there arms folded and he must be he must be because he can't divorce himself from the reality he must be contemplating yet another visit to Augusta that is going to end in disappointment here we are it's only Friday afternoon there is an awful lot of golf still to be played but he after making such a mess of that 11th hole can look across at the most formidable force in the game right now and see him him, Scotty Scheffler, out on his own at the top of the leaderboard. I'm disgusted. <laughs> you know, it's just really, really hard to watch. And you, you know, and, and as you're out here, I know we're all telling everybody what's happening, but it's just hard to hard to watch what's going on in his mind. How does he get over this hump here at Augusta? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what to do. He's just not played well enough, has he? And then an error like that on the 11th most difficult hole on the golf course as it is today nonetheless you just got to make sure that treat it as a par five get out of town with a five and you're matching most of the field it feels like today and it feels like for Scheffler who made a routine four there that he's picked up momentum on the field with a par well here he is now Scheffler on this 12th hole lovely late afternoon sunshine suggesting a calm but the winds are swirling and he's got to gauge them here fires this shot high up to the towards the top of the pines and then down towards the green it lands on the back left of the green and it holds on and it doesn't go into the bunker at the back and that's a fantastic shot and a little touch of the knuckles with his caddy teddy and that is mission accomplished as far as the 12th is concerned off that tee do, do yeah. you know sorry do you know what Ian? i was just i was just thinking for your point there about treat it as a five 
take a five and get off. And I'm, I'm, I'm literally just looking at the leaderboard here. Bryson DeChambeau bogeyed the 11th. Hergard bogeyed, bogeyed the 11th. Homer bogeyed the 11th. Cantley bogeyed the 11th. Fox bogeyed the 11th. Glover bogeyed the 11th. So half the leaderboard, or half the names that are on my leaderboard at the moment, all kind of went along with that theory of take it as a five, play it as a five, take the five, get off. Yeah, miss the green to the right, into that area that we're talking about where Larry Mize so famously chipped in to beat Greg Norman all those years ago. And if you can get up and down, then that feels like a birdie on a par five. And, and, and it's a real bonus. You, yes, as far as the scorecard's concerned, it's a, it's a par, but you've not brought into play the prospect of a double bogey. And it's a double bogey that is going to, to do the damage far more than just the single shot that it goes, that it goes on there because this now has altered the whole mentality potentially this is a fight for to stay in it. This, this is, is a fight a, to stay in it. It's a fight to stay in it and he has to remain patient because that's the only way you can play this course but the temptation will be to force it. Here he goes with his tee shot, Rory McIlroy, on the 12th. This one is turning from right to left and is heading towards the back left of the green, just creeps off the back of the green. It hasn't reached the pine straw there, but boy, that is a disconsolate figure. He has worked very, very hard on his body language throughout this tournament to try and remain positive and patient even though his a-game hasn't arrived but the, the the chinks in his game have caught up with him here and he is trying to walk with a, a little bit of jauntiness but you can tell those shoulders have slumped and well they might after that double bogey six at the 11th uh, and Andrew McGee given the holes he's got coming up that's why I say that's why I say it's a, a fight you know the projected cut is still at four over I'm, again I'm looking at the numbers on this leaderboard and where players have had problems I mean blimey he's still got to go down 18 right but he does have two par fives let's don't forget that let's see if he can let's see if he can pick it up let's see what let's see what he's got here let's see what kind of toughness Rory can muster here coming down the stretch he's been in this position before we all know that let's see if he can get a good drive on the next one and, and perhaps knock it on and have an eagle try we're all very hopeful yeah and, and if you're only just joining us want to know how tough 18 is playing uh Herbert, uh bogeyed 18. Hoygaard, bogeyed 18. Deschambeau, bogeyed 18. Danny Willett had, a, had an awful, awful 18th and triple bogeyed it to go from four under to one under after 36 holes. But the cut, uh, Ali, uh, captain of our control, has changed? Yeah, moved out to five over par. It's just popped up on the screens uh, in front of us. Didn't have to do anything to go and find that, Mark. There it was looking at the screen. That's how it works back here. So it's gone out to five over par. McElroy at three over. Matsuyama on the back nine at four over. John Rahm defending champion at four over. And Victor Hovland at six over. Uh, all fighting to make that cut. 16 players I've got at the moment, Mark, who are in the red Go on, let's do a leaderboard okay. then. Let's yeah. do a leaderboard. So let, let, let's do all those under par. Scotty Scheffler, leader, seven under par, playing the 12th. Uh, Max Homer at six under par, as is Bryson DeChambeau. Both of those two players have completed their second rounds. Uh, Nikolai Hoygaard at four under par in the clubhouse. Cameron Davis, uh, the Australian, at three under par. Colin Morikawa, former Open champion, also at three under par. Ludwig Ober, one of those at two under. He's in the clubhouse as well. Matt Fitzpatrick making par after par after par at the moment. He's at two under par. Mathieu Pavon at one under. So is Cam Young. So is Tommy Fleetwood. So is Danny Willett. They've all completed their second rounds. Ryan Fox, one under with one to play. Ben Arn is one under with two to play. Stracker, one under. Cantley, one under. Cam Smith, also one under par. Ian. Rory McIlroy chipping from just off the right, back right of the 12th and shaving the edge of the hole. In fact, I think that clipped the flag as well and it is just three feet away from the hole. So lovely touch from McIlroy there, Andrew McGee. Yeah, a great bounce back right there. He, he played very fast. I've looked up on my binoculars and he was ready to hit. Um, maybe that's being more decisive there. What, what the heck, you know? He just taking too long and, and things aren't working out. Maybe let's speed up our play a little bit and make some decisions and go ahead and hit away in what he did there and almost hold a chip. Uh, I, I just uh, as Ali went through the leaderboard there, Trish, just a couple of names jumped out to me who we haven't really talked about at all over the last couple of days and they're certainly not on the big white leaderboards in front of us and they're both major champions which is Colin Morikawa and Cam mm. Smith 
Yeah, absolutely. I noticed Morikawa because he's had a pretty awful time you know, for his oh, blimey. I almost feel like the last time he played well was when he won the Open mm. at Royal St George's, but that might be a bit harsh. But uh, cracking round today, yeah, he's got it to three under par, and he's he's one of the few people that has birdied the 18th. And uh, the second one you mentioned was Cam Smith. Cam Smith, yes, indeed, the live player, the Open champ at St Andrews. Um, yeah, he's got it to one under par. So, and he he's again. <laughs> It's so difficult, isn't it, Mark? Because we just don't really talk about the live players. I haven't watched a single shot mm. of live golf whatsoever, so I wouldn't have a Scooby who's been playing well on that. But it's good to see him playing well. He's a, he's a character. Uh, it's possibly the person with the worst hairstyle <laughs> in the world <laughs> and not the greatest dress sense, but what a golfer he is, that's for sure. But also a man, Ian Carter, who knows his way around this course. He does. He's got a three top five finishes to his name. And he's won a major championship, winning the 150th Open at St Andrews. And to get it to one under par is uh, is pretty decent. Now, he's up here on the 11th mm. green. We'll be keeping an eye on him, but we're keeping an eye on the leader as well, Scotty Scheffler, because he is on the 12th green, and he is surveying a birdie putt here, Andrew McGee. Yeah, just, uh, just what we all want to see, Scotty Scheffler take control of this tournament on Friday afternoon. Wyndham Clark in front of us on 11, tidying up uh, at four over par in danger of missing the cut after such a nice start yesterday in the opening round. Scotty Scheffler just off the back of the green, left to right putt, just off the fringe, coming down the hill a little bit, back into the wind. He's backed off, stepping down into that bunker, very close to going in that bunker, but he didn't. And he has this for birdie. I think he's kind of in a defensive mode right now. He would take pars on these holes. Ball is on the way, and he's missed it to the low side and running by just a couple feet. Not a bad try. So Scheffler is uh, likely to come through Amen Corner unscathed with that excellent par on the 11th, and he's got it to within a couple of feet on this par 3 12th. So he's in decent shape. Rory McIlroy should make his par as well. Oh, it's run on, I'm hearing. It's, it's very difficult. We're a good 200 yards away. And actually, Scheffler has moved, rolled on by seven or eight feet here. So a tester for Scheffler to keep himself in the lead. So we'll be watching this very, very closely indeed. Now I can see Cam Smith on the 11th here. I believe this is for par here to remain at one under par. Short range putt coming from just inside the shadow. So I'm, eyes are darting from one green to the other. And now Scheffler is settling himself down, putting the ball onto the green down on his haunches he'll retreat back have one last look at that on the 11th cam smith settling over his par putt to remain at one under par and now scheffler it is who will go first and hit his Let's concentrate on the leader, this to save par, and he does, very secure. And simultaneously, the balls of Smith and Scheffler disappear, and I'm pretty certain that that keeps the Australian at one under par. I'm absolutely certain that the leader, Scotty Scheffler, remains at seven under par and one clear at the Masters. Yeah, good stuff from Scotty Scheffler, just escaping 11, escaping 12. A big sigh of relief saying amen to the golf gods and moving right along. Rory to putt and see how much. How much does he have left, Ian? Can you sell? Uh, it looks like uh, around about three feet to me was a really good chip. Didn't waste any time over that, which you know is one of, one of those uh, one of those where you think, oh, has he given up here and, and just hitting it? without taking due care and attention. It was, a, it was a fine chip though, nonetheless. And now he's got this three footer to make sure that he remains at three over par. Sends it in and that's good enough for a par three on the 12th. And he'll then go to the 13th and 
look to press the accelerator if he possibly can and we'll confirm we have confirmed for you that that was a par for cam smith so the aussie remains at one under par and the final group on this second day have arrived on the 12th tee and they will be ready to hit once the green clears on 12 and it's just sander chauffle who's got to do a bit of tidying up there mark but he's not really a factor and and, and i'm guessing neither hovland or wyndham clark are a factor either no Ho hovland is at six over par uh wyndham clark i think is a little bit better than that i think he's two or three over um they've um, <laughs> four over uh, mm. uh rather unhelpfully they have they clear that they, the scoreboard they clear very, that score quickly, very quickly they? one thing I, and, and i've been wanting to talk about if we've got time we've, uh, we've got play yeah i mean I've it's got, with you at the moment so when fine. you see cam smith tee off you you Excellent. go with that but it's Excellent. all yours well there's just one there's, there's there's someone that i do want to make reference to there's a guy uh, a groundsman in sort of the caddy boiler suit outfit and his job today has to be keep the 12th tee pristine so after every group has has hit off there whatever divots have been left he nips around tidies them all up tidies away uh, all the imperfections and that's why this hole always looks so so pristine it's just so augusta that that happens but given the conditions today and given all sorts of debris that has been flying around pine cones plastic bags you know hats mm. all sorts he has put a shift in let's put it that way he's been scurrying around all the time uh, so it's been fascinating just to watch him just to make sure because this 12th hole I, I don't think it always surprises me whenever I come down here it's you know it's like just hitting over a field and then you've got the 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 the, the, the creek and then you've got the bunker and then you've got the green and it's all sort of layered in front of you and it's just a, a magnificent scene but not a blade of grass out of place and after every shot this groundsman just makes sure or every group that's gone through anyway here's Cam Smith and he is ready to go with his tee shot here the camera, TV camera in the tower immediately behind the flag is just glistening in the evening sunlight here as Smith hits it high to the right of the flag, letting the wind just draw it back towards the flag. That looks very good indeed. Beautiful tee shot from Cam Smith of Australia. Yeah, not just sanding the divots, sanding it with green colored dye in the sand to make it all match perfectly. <laughs> How many places do that, Ian? I don't know. What a shot by Cam Smith. Wow. Yeah, really good stuff. Birdie chance for Smith to maybe get to two under par. Just feels to me like the like the wind is just dropping a little bit. Uh, Ali, bring us up to date with the leader. Yeah, Scotty Scheffler uh, off the 13th tee uh, has hit a good drive down there. He's gone very tight down the left-hand side. Rays Creek winding its way down the left-hand side of that par 5 fairway, but he safely found the short stuff. Slightly trickier angle of attack from that left-hand side, uh, but again, Scotty Scheffler uh, has found the fairway off the 13th. Oh, oh, I was just going to say, what's always interesting, whereas it, it feels, might feel where you are, that the conditions have eased slightly. I would say here at 15, the, the flag of 15 is fluttering as, as, as strongly as it has been all afternoon. The lob lolly pie is still, lob, lob, lob lolly pie is still swaying as well. I mean, they've got a real degree angle of sort of as they bend is quite, quite strong actually. So down here, or up here a little bit from where you are, the wind is still incredibly strong. The reassuring thing is that they have done that for a while. Hang on, so, hang on, hang on. If I'm not allowed to get away with chip shop, you are not getting away with lob lolly pies. <laughs> <laughs> Very, yes. Well, we'll call that one all. Oh. They're, they're available in the chip shops in Harrogate. <laughs> pie, pie and chips, anyone? <laughs> The final tee shots have uh, been played off the 12th tee and off they go and uh, they're all on the green and uh, the grandstand here as one uh, just stands up and off they go and uh, well what news of Rory McIlroy off the 13th big hole for him this Sally yeah absolutely uh, three over par so projected cut of five over par McIlroy with six holes to play of this second round is that fairway wood Trish off the 13th tee yeah three wood trying to turn it over easier to turn over a three wood long way back though miles back from Scheffler 
And I think that's just got straight up into the McElroy. air and gone, no, he's laughing about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Rory McElroy. So McElroy's, as Trish says, a long way back, par 5, 13. So, you know, I mean... I can't imagine he's going to be able to get the green in two from there. Scotty Scheffler's gone round the corner on the par 5 13. So when he gets to his ball, we'll see what sort of shot he's got into that green. But there you are. Well, they're playing very different golf at the moment. Scheffler's the leader by one. He's at seven under par. And Rory McIlroy's battling to make the cut at three over par. We're keeping an eye on Cam Smith, the Australian Open champion at St Andrews, uh, because he is one under. Uh, he actually started the day one under as well. In the final three ball, he is alongside Wyndham Clark and Victor Hovland. Has he reached the 12th green? Yeah. Yes, he's just walked on. I think he's going to be third to, to putt because it was a, a brilliant uh, tee shot. And he's just walking up to go and mark his ball it was a fantastic April Fool that he did did you hear about that no uh, what did he do well he, he he made out that he had um, he'd cut off his his mullet and um, and the whole world believed it for, for a while <laughs> Trish did you um, fall for that well no actually funny enough I heard this on because uh, I heard Ian's uh, interview with him and he <laughs> apparently just around he said his wife said but he wasn't going to do it for his wedding he was never going to do it because it was an April Fool <laughs> yeah. he said, he said, I said to him that was a heck of an April Fool and he just fell about laughing he absolutely <laughs> loved the idea that people had bought into the fact that the the mullet might go <laughs> uh, well if it's your trademark you're exactly. gonna have to keep it aren't you yeah. really yeah and it's um it's a very distinctive look for him and uh yeah he seemed to me when i was talking to him that he, he seems very very comfortable with the live life if i can put it that way and what he likes about it is that it means that he goes to australia and that's where live goes to after yeah. the masters and the ticket sales by all accounts for adelaide have been absolutely huge that's so the one ian though isn't it that's, that's the one that, that is you the talk one. to people within live that's the one they cite as their success the biggest success when it comes to atmosphere and they also quite rightly point out I suppose that that is about going to places which don't get the golf that they may, may feel they deserve was yeah it, so was it so was it about playing back at home or was it the 100 million in the back pocket oh you are a cynical <laughs> cynical person well there's obviously uh, that that benefit there but as we know money doesn't make you happy <laughs> you could have a damn good try though couldn't you with 100 million in your back pocket <laughs> <laughs> no guarantees, though. Um, we're just looking at Wyndham Clark, actually, and he needs a, a, a good finish here. And he has found the green. He is uh, first to play. Victor Hovland's having a, a sorry old time of his season at the moment. Dispensed with his, uh, with his coach, Joe Mayo, and he hasn't been the same player this year. Here is uh, Wyndham Clark then at three over par, looking for a birdie, putting into the shadows that have lengthened as they do at this time of day, sending the ball across this 12th green. Will it disappear? No, it won't. But that looks pretty decent from the US Open champion, making his Masters debut, the highest ranked player, number four in the world ever to be making a debut here at the Augusta National. Next up to play will be Victor Hovland. What have you made of, of Hovland's trials and tribulations this year? Well, he's done a lot of different things, like move from Oklahoma to Florida, um, which was a good move. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a slump that, you know, it's probably going to help him in the future. It's going to help him learn what he, what he was doing and try to get back to what he was doing. And, um, you know, it happens to everybody. You just don't start off in gangbusters and stay that way for forever, you know. So I think, I think this is a good thing. Well, here he goes now with his attempt at a birdie here that could just give him a sniff of being here at the weekend. Currently at six over par, the Norwegian. Hero of Luke Donald's European Ryder Cup team in Italy last September. Needs a bit of that form here to make sure he's here for the weekend. Sends it forward through the sunlight into the shadows, looking for a birdie on 12. We haven't seen too many, and that doesn't add to the tally. Now, can Cam Smith get himself to two under par? Because if he does, he's right into this tournament for the weekend. And he just goes through that green reading mantra that has uh, become so prevalent on the game of straddling the line of the putt to just feel it in the feet as to what the contours might do here 
Yeah, I'm uh, aim point. Um, I think it just slows the game down a little bit. I mean, I, I think these guys have played here enough. When, when they hit the shot from the tee, they pretty much know how the break's going to be before they get there. I mean, I certainly had an idea if I was right of the hole, it's probably going to be right to left putt. Um, so here we go, Cam Smith. I'm going to go he's going to make this one because he's an excellent eight-foot putter. Well, let's see. It was one of the best tee shots that we've seen today on the 12th. Is he going to make the final birdie of the day on this 12th hole? Great putter is Cam Smith when he's on song. Just gives the ball a, a wrap and he's ready to do that now over it and then we'll draw the putter head back as he does now sends it on its way up the hill looks good and in and it is a birdie for cam smith and that gets him to two under par and that's a real treat a real treat there's only a handful of people left in the grandstand here mark but their patience has been rewarded with a birdie from cam smith and he heads to the 13th at two under par well i think there are more people in the 13th grandstand because here on 15 we could hear the groans from that grandstand traveling through the trees to us and the reason for those groans Ali? Scotty Scheffler's second shot so having found the left hand side of the fairway had a go with the long iron at the uh, par 5 green to get there in two and it was a low swinging draw that came skidding in towards that 13th green but it just caught the upslope right at the front of the green and you've got Ray's Creek that snakes its way around the front of that green and away to the right and Trish Johnson it took the bounce and once it bounces there it's not hopping up it's only hopping down and Scotty Scheffler's found the water. Yeah, and was well, as you say, it was a very straight-faced club. It was a bold move, to be perfectly honest, and he, I think he just thought he was just on the slight right-to-left slope, so it was just going to turn over a fraction. Just didn't get enough right-to-left on it. Probably started it a couple of yards too far right of where he was intending to. Didn't come back, and yeah, just caught the edge of Ray's Creek, and uh, very wet. So, so um, golf swing mistake, sort of technical mistake rather than strategy mistake, do you think? No, I th just think he thought it was going to turn more off that slope and it just didn't. I think he quite liked it when he first hit it, but he thought it was going to just... And then there might be a little bit of wind coming off the other side as well, slight left to right wind, just maybe started it a fraction too far right. OK, so next shot he plays, Mark, will be his fourth on the par five. He will drop from behind Ray's Creek and he will play his fourth. Xander Schoffle is lining up his third shot at the moment. He's one over par. Projected cut line at the moment is at five over par. And we've not yet seen what Rory McIlroy did with his second shot, but he was so far back uh, off the tee that I'm presuming that he has laid up and quite soon we will see him uh, playing his third shot into the par 5 13th. But the main news is that Scotty Scheffler is in the water. He's the leader by one, but he's now going to have to get up and down uh, on the 13th to stay at seven under par. And of course, Andrew McGee was making the bet wasn't he, that he wasn't going to finish as high as seven under par. Yeah, and he's on his way to join Cat on 17, so he won't actually have heard what's happened to Scotty Scheffler at the moment. Was that, is that one of the few times you think, Trish, and I appreciate you haven't seen every shot that he's played around this course over the last couple of days, one of the few times he's gone risk versus reward? Uh, I, I, th I don't think he's a, a particularly a safe player in any shape or form. I think he's just so confident in what he does all the time. He he pulls it off. His iron play is absolutely sensational. I just think it's one of those shots that maybe just a, a, a fraction is only literally a fraction out. Um, there's no way he wasn't going to go for it without a shadow of a doubt because he's such a good long iron player. But you know, there's no room for error on uh, on this particular hole. It's uh, as, as Nicholas said. You know, the first the, the drive and the second shot here are two of the most important shots on the whole golf course and if you can pull it off you end up with an eagle putt but if you don't you, you're staring bogey yeah. in your face yeah and that's the beauty of Augusta National Mark we'll talk about it time and time again over the weekend the risk reward nature of the holes and the way that they're set up and, and make the shot so tricky for you to hit so Scotty Scheffler at the moment is lining up uh, exactly where he's going to drop this ball to play his fourth shot um, while you were talking there, Trish, I think you had eyes on Rory McIlroy as well. So he did lay up. Third shot with the wedge has come up well short into that 13th green. And, you know, a bit poor, isn't it, really? 35 feet from the flag yeah. with, a, with a half a wedge in your hand. I mean, to be fair to him on this particular hole, we haven't seen one single player within 10, 15 feet anywhere. Everyone's been short because you cannot go, you cannot get the ball bouncing and go over this flag because you'll, you'll have a 35 footer coming back. But we were just talking about Rory earlier and, you know, I, I know 11 was a, a mistake, but the, the trouble is he's missed, a, he's missed a five foot putt at nine. He's missed a six foot putt 
at 10 and he's missed a four foot putt at 11. It doesn't matter it's, how well, and I think that's why 11 has happened. He's missing these short putts. He's not making anything, and that's making him push. And you can you can stay patient all you like. If you can't make four, five, six footers in professional golf, you're not winning diddly squat. So is that the difference? Is that the difference on the putting here, which was which is why some people can be could be critical of him today because to play devil's advocate I could also say we spent a lot of time today talking about how difficult it is out here how tricky the conditions are the wind and it's almost as if some people might say well everybody else is being given leeway for the conditions but not McElroy but you think it's 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 less about the conditions with him okay, do come you? to that in one second Mark Scotty Scheffler with a slightly sort of awkward stance here so he's his feet are either side of the hazard line, just short of Ray's Creek. So the ball is uh, above his feet there, and he's bumped this one in low and hard and trying to roll it up towards the flag. And as Trish has been saying, no one's gone past that flag. It's a very risky thing to do. Probably left himself maybe 12 feet or so for his par. Yeah, that's a really interesting... Uh, it's hard to explain quite what he did there. So he dropped it within about an inch of the yellow line. Now, he's got the choice to go further back, but there was one bit of grass there just by that yellow line that was a little bit more, let's say, a bit more grass than just before it. And it's a very much a downhill lie. And I think he just wanted to make sure he had that little bit of extra grass because otherwise it's a really bare lie and you're going uphill. You're coming off a downhill slope to go uphill and it's not a very pleasant shot. I think that's one of those things, Trish, that people don't necessarily appreciate when they're watching the Masters on television. So everything looks so sort of lush and verdant. And obviously we know that the greens are slippery and quick, but actually... That, that grass so close to the greens, e even on the fairways, is so tightly Absolutely. mowed, isn't it? Absolutely. So, um, Scotty Scheffler's making his way, Mark, on to uh, that 13th. Okay. And just to remind you, having well, found Ray's Creek with his second shot, he's played four, so he's got a 12-footer for par. He leads by one at seven under par. Okay, well, go back, go back to that point then, Trish, on... Are we giving other players more leeway than McElroy for the conditions? But I'm, all I'm saying is I've watched most of the golf this afternoon and any of the players, uh, including Tiger, including whoever you want, that's had any chance to make any leeway, they're not missing three, four, five foot putts. I mean, he's missed five... He's missed four of them today, and he's only played 13. He's only played 12 holes so far. Um, that's just not, you know. The thing is with Rory, when his putting's on, he wins tournaments. But when it's off, it's off, and it's way too. It can't be that off. You can't be missing. And he's not even hitting the hole. And he's up and out of it before he's even, you know, made contact with it, which shows you that he's got no trust at the moment in what he's doing. He's spooked by these greens at the moment. Maybe it's the pace, whatever. And I'm, I'm not making excuses for him. I'm just saying that is why he's hit the shot on 11, because if he's missing, you know, it's all very well saying, knock it down the right-hand side. He's got diddly squat chance of getting up and down if he's not holding putts from inside six feet. Um, and I think that's what's made him push that, because obviously it's a dreadful shot. To go in that, to pitch it in that water on 11... That's 30 yards, pretty much, from where he wants to start the ball with that right-to-left wind and with that pin. So it's, uh, yeah, it, and as we talked about, it's Augusta. It makes you do that. And if you're missing those short putts, you've literally got no chance of winning anyway. Ian? Yeah, I've just been looking, actually, at uh, his figures for this 11th hole because I'm just intrigued um, by it. And... Um, it's it, it, it's just so frustrating. He averaged coming in this week 4.35 on this par four hole, and that average has, has worsened even further. Ian, just going to see if he can make a birdie from long range on the 13th. That is a good putt from long range, and it comes up a couple of inches short. Now, he's not missing that one. That one is so close, you can just basically walk up and kick it in. So Rory McIlroy will make his par, but th those aren't the kind of putts we're talking about. We're not talking about him trying to make birdies, you know, from 20, 30, 40 feet. Those are those are the ones that are an absolute bonus, and you go striding off the green with a real bounce in your stride. It, it's the ones you have to make to win major championships that Scotty Scheffler and others are making time and time and time again. Well, he's played this 11th Trish 56 times mm. he's had 15 bogeys now four double bogeys and one worse than that um, I have half a feeling it was an eight but even if it was a seven a treble treble bogey so that's 20 times out of 56 
that he's not been able to par that hole. That is a hole that is in someone's head, isn't it? Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I, I totally agree with you in, in general on that comment, Ian. It's, it's just the fact, I'm just thinking today, I can only remember him holding one putt, which is a one putt, which is when he missed the green from 30 yards. Scotty Scheffler's missed it for par on the 13th, so he's going to drop a shot there. The putt from 12 feet was a left to righter up the hill. It looked good from a few feet away, and then it just continued to take the break, slid by on the right-hand side. He taps in for a bogey six on the par 5 13. Three birdies and three bogeys in the round so far today. Six under par overall, level with Max Homer and Bryson DeChambeau in the clubhouse. So Scotty Scheffler dropping shots as well as making uh, the birdies today. And the more he comes back to the field, Ian Carter, the greater the confidence of the field. Exactly. And the, the more people, you know, start to think, hang on a minute, I've got a chance here. And as we discussed very early on in the programme, when Tiger Woods went into the clubhouse at one over par, you know, if the leaders start coming back towards him, the more he's going to think, well, this is going to be a weekend that could potentially be well worth sticking around for. Uh, absolutely. We're going to be keeping an eye on... Uh uh, who was I just thinking of then? And I've got Matt Fitzpatrick. That's who I was thinking of, <laughs> Ali, because he yep. must be on 14. So you must have pictures of him. And then he will loom into view at some point uh, down 15 for myself yeah. and John Murray, because it's just a little bit of a lull yeah. at the moment at this part of the course and certainly where Kat is on 17. In fact, Kat, as I look through to your stand on 17, what's that, half full at best? Yeah, I think, you know, everything's taking a bit of a pause. We've had a bit of an influx because Phil Mickelson is here and he's always uh, been an entertaining character to watch around. Augusta knows his way around, plays some good golf here, doesn't he? Runner-up last year, you'll remember, coming steaming through the field on the final day. Tony Finau's in front of me as well, Sepp Stracker on one under par. But, yeah, I, I imagine they're waiting. They're keeping yeah. their powder dry, the uh, the clientele here. They might have gone off to find, a, I don't know, a, a souvenir or a cocktail or... It's it's definitely go feels like cocktail. Like cocktail than, yeah, hour. I'll go more yeah. cocktail than souvenir at this, <laughs> at this time of night. Garden gnome sold out. Uh, hang on a minute. They've sold out. They've sold out of the Augusta well, Garden. Well, I, went, I went into. You must on. have asked for one. No, I didn't. The person next to me asked for one. Oh. The first thing he asked for when he got into the merchandise shop, he did the, that's exactly what he said. Like John just said, he went garden gnomes, and the and the chap said sold out. They've sold out in, you know, with a couple of days before the weekend. Very very. It's, pro it's the most popular purchase here, the garden. Gnome. And the thing I don't get about it, Mark, it is your classic garden gnome so i well, thought uh, well hang on a minute what do you expect i mean the clues well, in the title what yes, do you expect let me, you finish, expect let me to finish because i would have thought a very clever thing to do possibly would be what about sort of caricature garden gnomes your rory McElroy garden gnome your tiger woods garden well gnome. then you're into image rights well i know exactly that's the problem listen rory McElroy is standing on the 14th tee par four and it looks like it's showered in confetti with all these catkins and burrs and pine cones all over it out of the shade into the sunshine he hates it he's pulled it to the left hand side you heard the thud of the driver head go down into the turf it's crashed into one of those tall pines away to the left of the 14th and Rory McIlroy's day going from bad to worse three over par for the tournament still looks like that's going to be good enough to make the cut but he's missed the 14th well, he's not got much leeway Ali no. has he the projected cut shots. is five yeah and he's He's on three, so yeah. you know, and we, you know, we keep going back to it. 18 is is not is playing mm. very very hard mm. today. Uh, we'll come back to the Garden Gnomes in a second. Scotty Scheffler though is our joint leader now at six under par, having dropped one on the 13th. So Homer, DeChambeau, Scheffler, three leaders at six under. Uh, this hole, no bunkers on it. 440 yard par four called Chinese Fur shapes from left to right. Scheffler steadies himself. Again, the right foot swings away loosely behind him and the ball is shaping from left to right. Down it lands on the fairway, but then everything on that fairway rolls away to the right-hand side and just comes off the fairway onto that little carpet of first cut. Trish? Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Could be, you know, would have been easier had it been just uh, maybe a couple of yards further left, but uh, that's no problem at all. 
Okay, so Scheffler and McElroy away. We'll have to see exactly where Rory McElroy's ball ended up uh, in the end, Mar, but he's missed that 14th fairway a long way to the left. And still waiting for news of Matt Fitzpatrick uh, on the 14th as well. He is two under at the moment. Interesting the career interview here on 15, and I'm, I'm not sure we'd have necessarily John Murray being drawn to them at, at this stage. I'm looking at Will Zalatoris. I'm also looking at Justin Thomas as they come down here. Zalatoris one over, Thomas is level. And and because Scheffler's just come back to six over and Bryson DeChambeau in the clubhouse on six over after a one over past 73 today, that there are those you know, who are in green numbers, which is over par, that all of a sudden we've talked about Tiger, obviously, that are most definitely not out of this. My thoughts entirely, and and they must be keeping an eye. You can't miss them, can you? These these huge leaderboards. So here they come down the uh, 15th. Will Zalatoris, Justin Thomas, who we've barely mentioned this week. Uh, Zalatoris won over Thomas level par, and also Patrick Cantlay, who has just come through here. And actually, that's the noise of him just teeing off on the 16th behind us. He's also level par for the tournament. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama in this group as well coming down uh, 15 former champion uh, he is four over uh, back to Ali any sign of Fitzpatrick do you know what Mark we, we, we've not really had him picked up on the screens have we Trish we've, we've not are you on the right channel <laughs> Well, yeah, we're on the Sheffield Wednesday channel. It's the wrong one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so Fitzpatrick, I mean, Ian said it earlier in the coverage. It's sort of uh, Faldo at Muirfield in 87. He birdied the par five second to get himself to two under par. And since then, it's been pars all the way through. He's made one on the par five 13th. So he's on the 14th ahead uh, of Scotty Scheffler and Rory McIlroy. But, but we've not seen any footage of him. And as you know, I mean, there's one, Mark. You're, you're talking about that. He's in great shape mm. at the moment here with Scheffler, DeChambeau and Homer at six under par. And Matt Fitzpatrick, Tristan, is, is a golfer who likes likes Augusta National. Yeah, do you know what I, what I like about Fitzpatrick as well? I think he likes tough golf courses. I think he really does, and tough conditions suit him as well. I think the conditions are going to get you know easier over the weekend. But if he's you know if he's in the thick of things, I, I don't think he's a one-time major champion. I've got a funny feeling he's a, at least a two or three-time major champion, and I like his demeanour and my, my work. Can you imagine? Billy Foster wins this. <laughs> oh, but, but also more than more than just a tough weather condition player. Oh, he's a top. No, he's a top yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I mean, I think what he I mean does... is he could. You know, if if he if he stays at two under, if he, if he can pick up one more, if it's more benign over the weekend, he's right in. You know, he doesn't need the win to make oh, no, no, to, no. to give him an advantage. That's what I'm trying to. No, absolutely not at all. No, he can go as, as as low as you like. But I just think he's got that mentality that if there are tough conditions, he's quite happy about it. And no sooner did we mention Justin Thomas, than he's landed his approach shot in the water here at 15. So level par but in the water in two uh, we're waiting for Rory McIlroy news of Rory McIlroy uh, Mark having hit the tee shot off the par 4 14th if anyone is just tuning into our coverage of the Masters second day Radio 5 Sports Extra glorious weather bright blue skies and sunshine but testing breezes buffeting winds all day three way tie for the lead Homer DeChambeau both in the clubhouse at 6 under Scotty Scheffler playing the 14th alongside Rory McIlroy uh, at 6 under par Nikolai Hoygaard their closest challenger at the moment uh, at four under par but McElroy off that 14th tee at three over par uh, went way way to the left hand side and he's gone off in search of his ball and they've still not picked him up as yet uh, on the cameras and that's about as much filling as I can do uh, for now because the only pictures I've got I think are what's happening in front of you on the 15th and if I start commentating on that you're going to give it the old Alistair Bruce ball show again so I'm definitely not doing that yeah we have Matsuyama and Zalatoris in front of us John Murray we do so Hideki Matsuyama Matsuyama, who has an excellent record here, a winner of course, and uh, he is right in the middle of the approach to the 15th green. So this is his second shot, uh, his third shot, having laid up, and he lands it over the water and onto the front of the green, and it takes a hop forward, but he's still 35, 40 feet away. So we will have a birdie chance from there. But he is four over. The projected cut right now is at five over par. But Will Zalatoris is to play next. Justin Thomas just standing to one side, having gone in the water here. So Zalatoris, the tall, lean Will Zalatoris, fair head, missed almost the whole of last year. When we came here last year, 
you know, there were suggestions that he wouldn't make it into the field because he had a back problem. He did pull out on the eve of the Masters last year, had a back operation, and has been out of action, you know, for the whole of 2023. So he's certainly someone who I'm sure, a little like Danny Willett, really, will be so relieved and pleased to be back in this environment. So with the sun shining, but the wind still swirling around through the pine trees. And actually because of that, Zalatoris backs away and just puts his hand to his capped head, possibly to make sure that his cap stays on his head. And there's a couple of swishes of the club head, just waiting for things to settle again, but he might have to wait a while. Again, just, just backs away. The water in front of him is rippling wildly in all directions. I'm going to hear about Rory McIlroy in a moment, but let's just see what happens to Will Zalatoris' third shot. On its way, we can clearly see the ball against the green, lands in the middle of the green and then hops on and is through the back and is rolling down the slope by eight or ten yards. So through the back, Will, Will Zalatoris, more to come from here, Ali. Go. Rory McIlroy entertaining the galleries, trying the spectacular, found his ball in amongst the pines down the left of the 14th. Saw a gap, Trish, but the gap that he'd seen, it needed some incredible launch angle to sort of get it up and out of the trouble he was in. He's actually gone over the back of the 14th green. That's a pretty remarkable shot from there, though. Yeah, it was. Um, you sort of looking at it thinking, oh, he's going underneath there. And you suddenly look up and you think, oh, my word, he's going over the trees. Hit an amazing shot, but just got a little bit too much release on it. And he's got a tricky up and down from the back of the green. A couple of shouts to get in the hole for Scotty Scheffler's ball from the right-hand side of the fairway. First cut, actually, just off the fairway. And it's hit the left-hand side of this 14th green, this enormous 14th green. The pin is cut away back in the left. Left and Scotty Scheffler's ball has just run round the back left of that green and just toppled off over the back onto the fringe. He'll be chipping back onto that green and he currently shares the lead at the Masters here, having bogeyed the 13th at six under par with Max Homer and Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, Andrew McGee has made his way from Amen Corner to join Catherine Downs on uh, 17. Were you, were you fighting against the wind all the way up there? It's different up here, isn't it, Andrew? Oh, my gosh. I just got here and I'm like, where? what kind of climate zone is this? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going up and up and up and on top of the Alps. It's uh, a little more windy, a little chilly. The cat's in a full rain gear. I'm going, I don't see any rain. Very sensitive, so I've ha Certainly. had to go for the full waterproofs about an hour ago. Oh, it's chilly and windy and... Let's see some birdies, let's go. I don't think we're going to see many up here, Andrew. <laughs> it's blowing an absolute gale and everybody's really struggling coming up the hill. I've got uh, uh, Nick Taylor walking into my sights. The American currently struggling on 14 yeah. over par. Ooh. That's a stinker of a day. You won't just see many birdies. Change really, the one. flight. Let's get out of here. <laughs> on 17, have you, Kat? There hasn't been many. There's been one or two, but uh, not many. It's been a hole for dropped shots. If you look over at the leaderboard, we saw High Guard drop a shot here. Uh, who else dropped a shot here? Ober dropped a shot mm. on the uh, on the 18th, didn't he? It's it's a really difficult closing couple of holes today. With I don't know if you can hear that wind on my microphone. <laughs> it is yeah. it is really something else up here. Uh, right at the top of the grandstand as well, at the back of the 17th. I can just see in the middle of the green, wacky Neiman just ducking for cover as the the sand comes. In, a, in an enormous tidal wave of white sand out of the bunker and down the back of his collar as he's pacing around uh, his putt, the uh, live golfer on five over par, Russell Henley six over par. So Neiman with a, a slight chance here of making the cut if he can he can get up and down from the sand. Um, let's, uh, let's get news of Matt's, Matt Fitzpatrick who has parred the 14th. Did you see it, Ali? No, no, okay. still not picked him Have up. Have you seen John Rahm double bogey the no, 14th? No, no. OK, he now goes to six over, mm. does John Rahm. So that means the defending champion, Trish, mm. is going to miss the weekend as things stand. Yeah, well, we did have a chat, didn't we, earlier in the week about, you know, whether we thought uh, John Rahm had a good chance to defend his title. And I don't know, I just feel like, uh, well, yeah, you know my opinion on on the, the live golfers. Uh, he doesn't look right. He just doesn't. He doesn't look like he's enjoying being here. He doesn't look like he's enjoying defending. Maybe he's just not playing very well, to be fair, and that could be all the reason you need. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's you know, he looked amazing. He looked like he had an amazing evening at the Champions Dinner. Obviously, his choice of dinner and all those unbelievable players of yesteryear and today, 
but he just looks as though he's he can't be disinterested i know we like to think that it's the be all and end all and then, you know it's 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 weird it's weird his body language is not good and for someone that uh, what three months ago four months ago was considered probably the second best player in the world uh, something's not quite right Salatoris within six inches of a birdie lovely lovely played it actually putted it from from off the back of the 15th green and as you say right up by the whole side and actually one or two of the members in front and their friends and family thought that was going to drop in but it's a par five for Will Salatoris to remain at one over par Justin Thomas though is struggling to make his par here he rather thinned it having taken a drop after going in the water rather thinned it over the green and so he is um, is just having a look at this I must, I must say as well you know if John Rahm misses the cut it's not it's not unprecedented to miss the cut as defending champion I was looking Sergio Garcia and Danny Willett as well both missed the cut as defending champion but different circumstances yeah, yeah absolutely so Justin Thomas now from off the back down down towards the hole and it's rolled by on the left hand side and it keeps going and he's still got work Justin Thomas to hold from there he's, he's rolled that four or five feet past have you seen those golf shoes close up that Justin Thomas is wearing you might need binoculars to actually see them properly which I do now own oh Scotty Scheffler uh, pitching up from the back of the 14th green here using the slope just to kill the pace of the ball it rolls away uh, from right to left I beg your pardon Rory McIlroy it was playing the shot now he needs the ball to stop McIlroy but it's not stopping it's gently rolling away from the flag all the time it got up to pin high it was about 10 feet away and he needs this to stop and it's just toppling and toppling and eventually it does stop and Rory McIlroy will walk onto that green and he will have a par putt from, well, further away than we initially thought it might be. But those are the contours of that green. So that's McIlroy on in three. Three over par, second round of the Masters on 5 Live, Radio 5, Sports Extra and BBC Sound. Scheffler, joint leader, chips onto that 14th green, plays it to the right of the flag, it takes the borrow, it's perfect. It's a foot or so away, maybe two, perfect for distance. Yeah, lovely little chip shot from Scheffler. We did say he's got a pretty tasty short game and he showed it once again. So Scotty Scheffler will have that uh, mark to uh, pop it in for a par with four holes to play. He'd be joint leader at six under par with Max Homer and Bryson DeChambeau. But testing par putt to come for Rory McIlroy. If he doesn't make that, he's at four over and then it's four holes to play. And he's really battling to try and make the cut. And here he is, Rory McIlroy. Glorious sunshine on the 14th green. And you can see the... The little bits of branch and Katkins on the green as the ball comes speeding towards the hole. It's going to miss on the right. It's another drop shot for Rory McIlroy. He leans over the putter, sticks it between his legs, topples forward uh, off balance to express his disappointment. Taps in. Bogey on the 14th. Four over par. Rory McIlroy trouble off the tee there. Trish went way left and tried to escape from the trees on the left-hand side. Went over the back of the green. Couldn't get up and down. Yeah, tee shot was pretty awful. Gave him, you know, little chance. He did hit an amazing recovery shot. And the up and down, well, it wasn't that difficult, to be honest. But he just didn't give it anywhere near enough borrow. Hit it straight at the flag. And the first bounce went straight left. And that's just, you can't do that on 14. You know where it's going to go. So just, just had a stat there popped up on the screen, Trish. Did you see that? So no birdies so far in 14 holes for Rory McIlroy. The last time he played a round at the Masters and was birdie-free, and he's still got four holes to go, I know, was 2016. That's eight years ago. Yeah, and I'd also look at this round today. I'm trying to think if he's one-putted a single green today, and I think the only one he does, he has was early on when he missed the green from 30 yards short. So he's, he's on for sort of 35, 30, you know, 34, 35 putts. That's, in, these, in this weather, that's eight too many. So it's just not, you know, it's just, it's, yeah, it's not good enough. Double bogey for Justin Thomas here on 15. So that takes him to two over. And, you know, we've relied on others to bring us Matt Fitzpatrick news um, without success, John. So we might, we might as well do it ourselves as he comes down 15. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's not a good, uh, although I have to say, I did try to see the detail on Justin Thomas's shoes, yeah. and I, I couldn't make it out clearly enough. OK, white shoes with green heels, so it's the Augusta green with a pink azalea oh. on the outside, back right of each shoe as Scotty Scheffler taps in for his pass. So he negotiates the 14th safely, Scotty Scheffler. Three 
birdies, three bogeys on the card. Level par for the round today. Four holes to go. Joint leader at six under par. He's on his way to the 15th tee. Here's Matt Fitzpatrick. Yep, so um, Matt Fitzpatrick marching down. Ye lemon yellow shirt. He's actually just been given a little bit of encouragement. I mean, the galleries though, are quite thin now, it must be said, but someone's given him encouragement. There was a little wave and his ball. Now, has it has it gone in? Has it gone in the water? I, I have a feeling that he thought that that was his ball. Yeah. Because that's his he, he thought He thought yeah. that was his ball. He walked to it, saw it wasn't, looked towards the rules official, away to the right has got his hands a bit like we saw Bryson DeChambeau earlier on the 16th tee arms outstretched palms upwards as if to say what on earth has happened there and he is still chuntering away to Billy Foster yeah and it's it's actually Neil uh, it's actually Nick Dunlap's ball that is has pulled up maybe five yards short of the water and so it's going to have to be a drop for Matt Fitzpatrick this is this is almost exactly where where Justin Thomas was a few moments ago and he ended up taking a seven so that shows you what what might lie ahead here for for Matt Fitzpatrick who's parred every hole since the second and a, and a rules official in a blue blazer is now being called across meanwhile John Rahm who if you've just switched on is six over par and and right now on that mark is missing the cut. He is about 50, 60 yards short of the green. He's laid up there and is preparing to play. But first of all, they're trying to work out exactly where Matt Fitzpatrick is going to be able to drop this. They, I'm guessing, Trish, they'll be asking, trying to get from the rules official who, who doesn't, I'll be honest, hasn't appeared that cooperative, <laughs> to, to try and ask the rules official where his yeah, ball yeah. Where his ball went into the water. Yeah, that's exactly and, right. And I mean, Fitzpatrick is sort of gesturing. Well, was it here? Was it there? And and the rules official only now has sort of, in a vague way, pointed, pointed hasn't he? Pointed to a po a, pointed to a spot on the line for the hazard, which is just where the where the grass falls away into the water. Just sort of perfunctorily pointed yeah. at that. And Matt Fitzpatrick, rather quickly, w walked up, stuck his tee in there to show where he's going to need to drop it. So. Um, Fitzpatrick is going to be struggling to make happy. his part. He is not happy. He has got hands on both hips and he will be struggling to continue this run of pars here at two under Ali. He's gone the double teapot, he has, has he? Yes. That's what happens, isn't it, when you when you run into bowl and your best delivery gets smashed for four and you stand there just or, give it <laughs> or someone's misfielded it all oh how annoying is that John <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh, Scotty Scheffler is back on the tee at the par 515 so he'll be with you shortly I mean you can hear you can hear just how strong those gusts of wind are and we can see it on the screens here we're uh, in it out of that 15th tee <laughs> you're in it as well but the branches of the tall trees are just swaying around furiously either side of Scotty Scheffler here he is joint leader at the Masters six under par small rectangle of closely mown turf the 15th tee needs a good drive away here down the 15th that one is heading down the left hand side he likes it they like it as well ball goes bouncing merrily along and he's found the fairway at the 15th and then as Trish was talking about the six key shots that Jack Nicholas talks about if you're gonna have any chance of winning the Masters second shot at 15 absolutely crucial trying to hit in from a long way out we still think Tiger Woods probably the best of the day uh, that we've seen at the 15th today Rory McIlroy is battling to make the cut he's only got a shot to play with on that front at the moment four over par cut at five over that's gone left from Rory McIlroy and stayed left the patrons quite like it you can sometimes Trish, mm. if you go too far left sort of get blocked off by that screen of pines can't you down the left yeah you certainly can I don't know if that he, he seemed to like it though which was maybe it is it maybe it's going to be far enough back. Cam Smith has bogeyed the uh, par 5 at 13, so he drops to one under. Matt Fitzpatrick here has dropped his ball and has maybe calmed down a bit. And John Murray, if he could do what his playing partner Nick Dunlap has just done, he'd be very happy. Yes, Nick Dunlap, the 20-year-old, the, the US amateur champion of last year, now professional, has hit a lovely shot right by the whole side. Uh, Matt Fitzpatrick, ready to play already, actually lofts this rather more than Dunlap did, and it is bouncing past the flag, and it holds up there uh, nine, ten feet past. So he is there in four so he needs to hold that to maintain this run of pars that he's been on since 
he uh, picked up a birdie at the second. Uh, and a bit like we talked about with the 16th earlier on, the shadows lengthening across this 15th green, which just adds a little bit of extra difficulty to those putting on it. Uh, he's inside John Rahm's ball, is Matt Fitzpatrick, but he's coming back down the hill, as John says, 10 foot for par. Yeah, birdie, birdie put for John Rahm, though, which would take him back to five under and would see him making the cut if he was able to hold this but this is we know don't we we've sat here for hours and hours we know that this and indeed matt fitzpatrick's put as well the, these are really really tricky puts if if they hold these well it's a case of well done to them we should stick with unless ali you have anything but we should nope. stick with ram really here because he's six over and the projected cut is five over so it's big john ram just hitching up his gray trousers with this heavy tread of his. I always think that when I when I see him. Big shoulders, big beard, black beard, big hips. <laughs> and uh, big knees. <laughs> yeah, they're big as well. Feet, yeah. feet, feet also large. And wearing this green <laughs> mottled shirt, battling to make the cut. So much talk this week about whether he could perhaps successfully defend his title. But that seems a long way away now. The lead currently six under par. John Rahm six over par. But this to get a shot back here at the 15th in amongst the long, long shadows that are being cast across the 15th green. Just a heavy movement from foot to foot. And then this from best part of 15 feet. He's only gone and hold it. And he's got his birdie at the 15th. And one or two people actually get to their feet and applaud. And there's a little wave from him to uh, the people in the stand. So he's back to five under. And now it's Matt Fitzpatrick who will, will take the stage. Well, John Rahm has shown him what is possible with the... The hole here at the 15th cut towards the, the back right. And this would be an escape after his approach shot ended up in the water, very much to the Yorkshireman's chagrin, as they say in Sheffield. <laughs> so Fitzpatrick is down on his haunches, white trousers, this, as I say, lemon yellow shirt, very sort of light powder yellow, matched almost by this late evening sunshine now. Short sleeves are all round, despite this talk about the wind. I mean, it's not cold, not by any means. It's just gusty, blustery winds. I suspect Andrew McGee, listening on 17, will be saying, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> but, uh, but for us, it's actually very, very pleasant, as it will be for Matt Fitzpatrick. Not thinking about the temperature, though, there's lots of fidgeting. He's all hustle and bustle. Steps forward, just m removes a, a piece of debris, and then... This, this for his par five. Here it goes. He's left it short. It's just pulled up short on the right. And it's a bogey for Matt Fitzpatrick. He was leading the UK challenge on his own, but now he's dropped back alongside his fellow Yorkshireman, Danny Willett, on one under par. So there we are. A drop shot for Matt Fitzpatrick, one under par. And uh, that leaves him, however, five shots off the lead and he's got the 16th ahead of him right now. Walking towards us now, Mark. Yes, he's uh, heading towards the 16th tee and it's a busy period here on 15-16 because Fitzpatrick goes to the 16th tee with Ram and up ahead on the 15th fairway, still bathed in sunlight, we have Scheffler and McElroy. So we are watching them coming in next. I think the difference between uh, someone who lives in the north of England, like myself and John, and Andrew McGee, who lives in Phoenix, Arizona, is that myself and John think this is pleasant. And the last time we heard from Andrew McGee, he likened it to being on top of the Alps. Mm -hmm. uh, we, that's that Scotty Scheffler yeah, there. That's Scotty Scheffler, ten yards, ten yards short of the water. So he's laid up there. Uh, so he's in a good position. And I think is that Shoffley playing through the trees? Yes, it is with the the dark top and the white trousers. Xander Shoffley again, a player many of whom thought might do very well this week. But uh, as the, the players at the top of the leaderboard come come back, you know, he's still in it. And indeed, his, his layup, his second shot, is right next to Scotty Scheffler's ball. They are, they are equidistant, probably 10 yards apart. 
something like 10 or 15 yards in front of the water. And uh, Rory McIlroy to play next, but I'm also having a look over my shoulder just to see what um, Matt Fitzpatrick is doing, but they're standing on the tee. So Rory McIlroy is also laying up. Here comes his ball down the 15th fairway and is just about 25 yards short of the water. So all three of them have laid up. They're short of the water in two here at the 15th. And what we have seen, actually, John, the, ma the majority, not, not, not everybody, as we wait for... There's a big delay on the uh, on the 16th green, so Fitzpatrick won't be teeing off for a little while. What we've seen is a, a lot of players from there have gone over the back of this 15th green, haven't they? F very few have, have left themselves an uphill putt, most of them, and they're playing into the wind. We have to keep saying this, you know, that flag is still fluttering strongly uh, on top of the yellow flagpole, but most have gone over the back of this green, which is what John Rahm did, and, and the, I know Fitzpatrick stayed on the green, but went beyond the pin. Yes, uh, and we know that, but in these blustery conditions, which again just ease for a moment and then it picks up again, and the and the and the flag on the 15th right now is not is not rattling away as it has been. But then, as I say that, here's another gust that comes up behind us. I mean, in terms of whether it's the, the whether these are the windiest conditions we've experienced here, I have to say, thinking back into the sort of 2010s, I remember some masters here where, I mean, the wind could be furious for a spell, you know, when we had storms blowing through and all that sort of thing, and trees would be blown down all over the property. But I think for, for sustained blustery conditions these have been and i'm sure we'll hear it from the players as well today these these have been a testing a, a wind conditions as you would get here at the augusta national anyway these three men have all arrived at their balls this is the penultimate match out on the course rory mcelroy four over par what a disappointment this is for him coming here for the tenth time this year where he had the opportunity to win the Masters and complete the Grand Slam of all four major titles and from a position now four over par ten shots off the lead this would be some turnaround some achievement if he's able to get the green jacket in 2024 he needs to make forward strides very very quickly and from what we've been hearing from from our colleagues out on the course and Ali back in the uh, in the studio at the clubhouse you know things are things are going in the trending in the wrong direction so he's 72 yards short and uh, he's over it now McElroy in these sort of beige sandy colours today ball lap, takes it on right to the back of the green and just as Mark Chapman said it takes a bounce and it's through the back by five yards and McElroy turns looks at his caddy Harry Diamond and wonders how it can be that that just skipped on through there so there is the there's the marker there's the warning for Sander Schoffle and indeed Scotty Scheffler the joint leader of the Masters. And first of all, it's the smaller man, the slicer man, the Olympic champion, Xander Schoffle, in his olive green shirt, who is over his ball now. This, from just short of the water, over it goes, over and lands on the green, and then actually pulls up short and rolls back after the initial check. So he got the warning from McElroy, and he's left it. He's left it short by a similar distance, actually, probably uh, 20 feet, 22 feet. He will have for his birdie put. And so, the world number one, Scotty Scheffler. Many thought that today he would step on the accelerator and perhaps have a healthy lead tonight well he has the lead the joint lead and here he is with his shot which lands right in equidistant position between the front of the green and the 
hole and then it just bounces on and rolls past but he has the best opportunity here it's actually not very far away from where John Rahm holed for his birdie just a few minutes ago so what is it something like 14 feet that Scotty Scheffler will have to take the lead again on his own at 7 under just want to go up to 17 because we've had Patrick Cantlay on this leaderboard throughout the course of the afternoon at one stage he got to 3 under as he approached the turn 2 under at the turn but like many as they've approached 17 he sort of drifted away Cat. yeah he found the sand just uh, in the big bunker at the front of the 17th and uh <laughs> spent ages in there trying to avoid getting the sand in his eyes in this gusting wind uh, picked it up out of the sand and just left it a little bit short couldn't couldn't sink the par putt yeah he, he looked disgusted he actually he didn't hit it hard enough and he had a, a downwind downhill you know 15 footer to save par and he didn't he didn't make it but he just swished his hand like oh, i've had enough of this or something like that whatever he, patrick cantley thinks like i don't think any of us could quite replicate that but uh yeah he's two over par yeah uh, probably gonna make the cut and we'll see him for the weekend best chance of the birdie here mark was for ricky fowler who's at six over par he put it in close with his second but couldn't sink the birdie putt so fowler goes to the last uh, with uh, one last shot at a birdie that would see him here at the weekend well matsuyama zalatoris and thomas have taken an age on the 16th green and it has delayed the matt fitzpatrick john rahm group and nick dunlap is playing first for them on the 16th tee as the McElroy and Scheffler group uh, reach the uh, 15th green. It is very difficult looking into the distance for, 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 I would say, seven-eighths of that green now fully in shadow. I was just going to say, Mark, this is going to be a good tester for us to see if we can actually see because half of the green is in shadow. Oh, well, more than that. And, uh, and there's a there's a shard of sunlight at the back and I have to say there was no applause. I can't see the ball. So I presume he missed the green. Right, anyway, back on 15. Back on 15. First of all, it's going to be Rory McIlroy from off the back of the green. Just bumps it up there towards the top of the slope and then rolling down towards the hole. But uh, just to the right, but it will be a, a par five <coughs> for McIlroy. So not able to take advantage of the 15th, not able to take advantage of the par five and make a move back in the right direction. So remains at four over par, Rory McIlroy. And behind us, we've got the defending champion, John Rahm. Right, all hands on deck here. They're staring after it. And there's a smattering of applause. And I think, Trish, have you got your eyes on the pictures? Yeah, John, he's, uh, he's, he's hit it on the left-hand side, long of the flag, and it's just gone down to, well, pretty oh, much to it. where Sunday, yep. Sunday afternoon's flag will be. Yep. Got it, got it, yeah, the the, uh, the big bunker with the white sand down at the front left next to the water. Do you want your binoculars? Well, the problem is I've got, I can't take my glasses off, put my binoculars on, so I've got to do it here with the naked eye. Why can't you take your glasses off? Well, because then I'm, I, I've then got to commentate on the 15th, oh, which okay. is closer to it. And Matt Fitzpatrick is now playing. Ball at its height now. And there is applause for that, which has landed front right. So it's on the green, but it's a long way from the hole. So yeah, he's it. got 40 feet yeah. at least there, hasn't he? Uh, and back on the 15th, this is Xander Schauffele for birdie. This, this is from best part of 25 feet. And I think he might have just oh. left it short. He has. Walks after that. So that opportunity has passed him by. So... McElroy and Shoffley walk away with par fives, but Scotty Scheffler for the lead. If he rolls this in from just on the back right of the green, so this is 14 feet. You can hear the wind whipping the papers in front of us. A man just in the front row, in the row in front, puts his hand right on the top of his straw cowboy style hat and actually then plucks it off his head altogether to make sure he's still got it and Scotty Scheffler I can see the 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 wind rippling his bluey grey shirt this for the birdie that would take him back into the lead on his own no it's by on the right and he stares after it that bearded face of his now 
as if to say, how could you? How could you not drop? But uh, I guess he will uh, haul this. This is just from a few inches, really. Just marks his ball, steps away from behind it, and now walks forward. And Scotty Scheffler, this to remain at six under par. In it goes, and he remains in a share of the lead with Bryson DeChambeau and the long finish now, Max Homer. Blimey, they're not hanging around for Cam Smith, are they? No, is the answer. Uh, no, they're not. They, they're off. They, that, that's Scotty Scheffler. That's who many of them came to see and have probably probably sitting there free thinking, these are the coldest conditions <laughs> I've ever seen for, at the Masters. And after <laughs> seeing Scotty Scheffler make his par five, they're, they're not even hanging around doing seeming play his tee shot on... On 16. However, you can hear there are still some hearty souls who are very well wrapped up, many of them, who are applauding Rory McIlroy and indeed Scotty Scheffler under the 16th tee. So we'll have a little delay while. Uh, oh, we've got now. Now you can take your glasses off and put your binoculars there and now we've got a great view or you should have a great view of Dunlap and Fitzpatrick and Rahm up on 16 Dunlap's just in the bunker yes he is he's in the uh, in the back bunker which is now has so many pieces of branch and cones and various pieces of debris from the pine trees but he splashes it out that's a lovely touch actually from the young man the US amateur champion of last year who splashed it out of the sand and he's left it uh, probably six, seven feet at that sort of range away from the hole. Next to play, it'll be John Rahm. Five under par now and in what will be a real tussle for him to make the cut. As it is, the projected cut is five under par, so he is five over par, so he's OK. He's OK with this mark. But uh, John Rahm, who's right down the bottom of the slope, as, as Trish Johnson said back in our studio up near the clubhouse, this is where his ball is, is very often where the, the hole is on Sunday afternoon. So that, that, that whole location where Tiger Woods on this 16th hole famously chipped in from off the back and it rolled in with that final roll and that last sight of the Nike logo on the ball before it dropped on his way to victory. So that's where the ball is, but the, the hole is up near the, the top of the green, right towards the top of the slope, and it's actually Matt Fitzpatrick who's going to play it first. So Matt Fitzpatrick, one under par. Five shots off the lead. Fitzpatrick from long, long range, rolling his ball up towards the hole, and is beautifully judged in terms of length, and there's applause for that. He walks after it in that, uh, in that style of his with the slightly drooped shoulders and it's close enough for the flag to be plucked out. He just removes, again, some little piece of pine cone or fur or whatever it is and then uh, rolls it in. So that's his par three. Comfortable for him to remain at one under par with two holes to play. Certainly very much in this, Matt Fitzpatrick, as we go into the weekend. Uh, and then it'll be John Rahm to take this put on from way down the slope. So this is a good 35, 40 feet. And this, this is one that certainly requires touch. John Rahm in that almost camouflaged shirt, actually, sort of mottled green. And in these conditions, he almost disappears into the crowd behind him. But I suppose that is the nature of camouflage. As Rahm stands up now. Such a big man that, that put ahead from this distance through the binoculars almost looks like a, a little toy putter in his hands. Hunched right over it. The ball now on its way, rolling up the slope. The flag tended by his caddy up the slope and in! <laughs> what a finish from John Rahm! Wow! I'm not sure he'll have held a longer one than that in the defence of his title. That was all of 40 feet, maybe even a little bit more than that. And it dropped into the hole, and it's a birdie for John Rahm on the 16th green and a clench of the fist for him. There's not been too much of that this year, but that takes him back to four over par and 
birdies in two consecutive holes for the defending champion. Exactly. Birdie, birdie. He's gone from wrong side of the cut to right side of the cut in two holes. And McElroy and Scheffler continue to wait on the 16th green. Just been a bit of a log jam here over the last half hour or so. Kat, do you have anything on 17? Yes, we've got uh, Matsuyama, Hideki Matsuyama at four over par. So the former champion struggling to make the cut here, which is currently projected at five over par. Will Zalatoris, who was going pretty well, wasn't he, uh, up until fairly recently. He's back at two over par now. And Justin Thomas, he's slipped back to four over as well. He was up at almost level par or something, wasn't he, earlier on today, Justin Thomas. He was doing pretty well, but uh, the conditions have got the better of uh, this three. Zalatoris and Thomas dropping shots. And uh, Will Zalatoris just strolling onto the green now to repair his pitch mark as he sizes up uh, a shot from the sand to the left of the green. Justin Thomas walking up at the moment in a kind of navy blue proper dress shirt that with the buttons all the way down the front for Justin Thomas. What do you make of that? Very stylish. I Ooh. like it. I like it nice and tight. I don't think Jason Day would wear an outfit like that. He likes that baggy stuff. Justin Thomas continues to walk over the 17th green. Of course, it is straight downwind. You have to really put some height on your second shot with some spin. Difficult to do on a downwind. Zalatoris in the bunker. Beautiful bunkers here at Augusta. Easy to spin the ball. The ball always sits up nice on this brilliant white sand that they're losing tons of today as it blows out. They'll be headed to the hardware store after this round and fill these back up. You mentioned Jason Day's trousers. There was a question buzzing around on the internet. How many golfers could you fit in Jason Day's trousers from yesterday? And I thought instantly of Will Zalatoris. He's one of the <laughs> skinniest golfers on tour isn't he? he could fit at least four Will Zalatoris's in Jason Day's trousers from yesterday and he's picked this one beautifully up from the sand lovely judgment from Will Zalatoris sliding it up to within a couple of feet of the hole here on the 17th and he should just be able to tap that into par and stay at two under par and safely inside the cut line for Zalatoris and uh, we now have a clear green on 16 for the McElroy Scheffler Shoffley Group Shoffley's gone first, John Murray. Yes, you've you've bullied me into taking off my glasses, so now I'm doing it through my binoculars. But I'm going to look without my glasses, without the aid of my glasses, to see that it, that is a Scottish Shoffley. <laughs> Thanks. <sir. laughs> right, I'll, I'll stick to the binoculars. I'll work on I'll work on sound. It's a Scottish Shoffley. He's waiting down to my left on the tee. Still, we've got thousands of people gathered around the 16th green here, even though the galleries are thin. And Scotty Sheffield to a murmur, a murmur. And the ball lands right in the middle of the 16th green, but then starts to roll, roll down to where John Rahm's ball was, and actually might continue to roll down towards the front right. No, it holds up there. So uh, a long, long put, almost across the entire width of the 16th green. This is Rory McElroy, John. Thanks very much, Mark. I don't know what I'd do without you. The water rippling in the pond that stretches most of the way from the green back towards the tee. And Rory McElroy now on four over par lands it right on the top tier of the 16th green. He went for it, McElroy, and it clings on up there. And this does give him a real live birdie chance from 10 or 12 feet. So McElroy with a chance to pick up a shot here at the 16th as he sets off towards the green. And remember, he is four over and the cut is five over and 17 and 18 are difficult today. Back down 15, the final three ball of this second round have all laid up. So that's Victor Hovland and Wyndham Clark, both over par, both in danger of missing the cut as well. Clark five over uh, and Hovland six over. 
Cam Smith one under as he plays 15. So this is the final group as McElroy and Scheffler and Shoffley head towards 16. We've got uh, Kat and Andrew McGee on 17 waiting uh, for Matt Fitzpatrick. Uh, they won't have come into view yet. Ian Carter has uh, headed back to uh, the media centre and is with uh, Trish Johnson and Alistair Bruce Ball. So we have everybody with us as we wait for this final group in front of us it, it's always you, we never fail do we to be taken by surprise but what the atmosphere is like when you're at the masters on the second round evening i mean it's unlike any other sporting occasion because the way that the masters works the way that the groups go out you have some high power high profile groups that are the last groups out on the course but the masters is such a social event and it's so exclusive and you come here to meet your friends and it's a tradition and this is what you do year after year that many people at this time of the day have just decided they've got better things to do they've had the, they've had their fun they've had their day out and actually so we've got hundreds of empty seats really in all of the sat stands that are here but there is also a mix of the and you've got three of the best players in the world in front of us in Wyndham Clark and Victor Hovland and Cameron Smith and and even better players in the world up ahead in Scheffler and Shoffley and McElroy. Yeah. But you've also got, you've still got a mix of ardent golf fans as well who are on their green masters picnic seats that are all around the, the back of the green in amongst the trees, up and down the slopes here. And at, at certain points over there, they are six and seven deep. And Xander Shoffley has climbed into that bunker right at the top right at the back of the green I can see him feet wide apart and he's actually he's actually bathed in sunshine in a, a sliver of sunshine as he stands with feet apart in the bunker and he just splashes it out onto the top of the slope and then down towards the hole and it rolls just by on the right hand side Xander Shoffley but that was very well played from him Rory McIlroy has this good birdie chance up there, but it will be uh, Scotty Scheffler to play next. He's just having a look at it, Scotty Scheffler from behind the line, up at the top of the slope, and then uh, we'll walk back down. He's actually, uh, he's now put a jumper on, hasn't he? Yeah. That's what, that's what, that's what fooled me on the, uh, on the 16th tee. <laughs> so a dark, rich looking navy blue pullover zip neck and um Oh, that applause, by the way, is just for Cam Smith, who has put his third to within about six feet of the pin to give himself a birdie opportunity here on 15. So it'll be Scotty Scheffler to play next. Just wait, just stops. There are strips of sunshine across various parts of this 16th green and they just catch his, his light coloured trousers as he walks and, and stops along the line of this ball, along the line of this putt and now gets down to the point where he is preparing now for the, the lengthy, lengthy birdie putt. 45 feet it is, similar sort of length to, to John Rahm who hold quite spectacularly here just a few minutes ago. Scotty Scheffler, the world number one, sends his ball up the slope and that looks as though it's pulled up quite short actually. I think he's still got probably four, four or five feet to, uh, to finish off there, to remain at six under par. And he walks after it and marks his ball, but it will be Rory McIlroy to play next. Now he needs this McIlroy, he needs something. He needs something to take into the weekend. Some forward momentum over the course of these final holes. It's been a tough, tough experience for him today. But this is the psyche of the top sportsman to put that behind him, to focus on the present, to try and shrug everything off. And so McElroy, this must be absolute magic for the, the great sports photographers that we have. The, the light here with the shadow and the sunshine is absolutely, it makes it all the more dramatic. And McElroy is now 
in that shaft of sunshine, sending his ball down the green towards the hole, this for birdie, and it will not drop. It will not drop for McElroy. It is one of those days. And he's actually going to mark it, so it has rolled by by a little way. And he turns McElroy, <coughs> and, and he looks up to the skies, and he twiddles his putter, and he hands it to his caddy, Harry, and the, the body language says everything there. The two of them talking to one another. I mean, it's not angry. It's just rather resigned, as I say. The sort of, it's, it's just not happened for me kind of body language. And now he's standing with his arms tightly crossed. And uh, as long as he holds that, McElroy will remain at four over par. Scotty Scheffler. Now, as I say, there is work to be done on this. Bryson DeChambeau and Max Homer, who are both long finished now, six under par. I'm not sure whether they'll be paying attention to this, probably going through their routine, wherever they are. They might be casting an eye on this and perhaps raising an eyebrow as Scheffler holds it and makes his par three at the 16th and remains in a share of the lead with his two fellow Americans. And it only remains for Xander Schauffele to, to finish off now and remain at one over par at the 16th. Uh, OK, uh, we're still waiting for Cam Smith as well in front of us, who has a birdie opportunity, which would take him uh, to two under. Matt Fitzpatrick has been standing in the <coughs> shaft of sunlight that I can see across on the 17th fairway for quite a while. Uh, cat with hands on hips. <laughs> yes, and uh, he's just been able to hit his second shot into the 17th. John Rahm as well with that punchy little short backswing thrashing one towards the green as well. And that's just skipping on from the front edge and getting better and better as it inches up towards the hole, coming up about 25 feet short. The shot of this three on the 17th, though, from Nick Dunlap, the amateur champion, who's put it to within a couple of feet. So he should be able to make a birdie here, but he's still eight over par at the moment. Moment, Mark. Uh, McElroy uh, just finishes off on 16, so he parred that, so pars for all three of them as they uh, move on. Victor Hovland has just, made, no, uh, Wyndham Clark, sorry. Yep, has, uh, has just gone for what I presume was his... <coughs> I think he's bogeyed that. Yep. So yeah, well, uh, and the uh, body language su would suggest that's the case. The way that he, the way that he um, allowed his putter to roll against the bag, and that actually, if he has bogeyed that, <laughs> puts him the wrong side of the cut line, takes him to six over. Well, I mean, that is quite a that's quite a, a tumble down the leaderboard, isn't it? From uh, from from yesterday morning when he was right in the thick of it and right at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, so it will be Cam Smith now. So this. This is for Birdie. So this is Cam Smith for Birdie. On the 15th, this to go to two under par. This puts him right in the picture. And this is, this is seven, eight feet. This, this is a real chance for Cam Smith, but he doesn't see it drop. And he turns away and he looks in our direction, almost as if to say, he might have even been able to hear what we were saying because it's, there are so few people around here now that it would be entirely possible that our voices would have carried. So, um, yours? Uh, mine and Brian's, who's working for American Radio to our left. <laughs> Let's go to Cass. Cam Smith taps that in for his bar. Yeah, Matt Fitzpatrick far enough away from us that he's not going to hear Andrew and I discussing this little chip that he's got to make. He was down the left-hand side of the fairway with his uh, tee shot and then you could see him turning his hands over, trying to bring a hook in around the overhanging pine trees, but it leaked out to the right-hand side of uh, the green. This is lovely. a lovely little effort from him, though, to within a few feet. Stop rolling. The wind just kind of grabs it. We thought it would be three feet now it's six feet but i just love the way how fast he plays he gets up 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 over and just hits away very confidently he's got a six footer for a four to remain at one under par so there we go ali what's going on with you well uh, a little bit further back down the 17th cat you're up by the green scotty scheffler down on the tee two holes to play of this is second round joint leader with max homer and bryson de 
shiny black-headed driver in his hand, long backswing, swinging drive with the fade on it from left to right, and the uh, ball bounces, slap bang in the middle of the fairway as it so often has this afternoon, and goes a wee way beyond Xander Schofle in the middle of that fairway as well, and that's another little challenge completed uh, there for Scotty Scheffler. So he's in the middle of the 17th fairway, joint leader at six under par, Cat. John Rahm just crouching down, casting a shadow across the ball, and then his shadow, because it's so long with the sun dipping down towards the top of those uh, pine trees, is uh, chasing up towards the hole. He's got a hit basically along the shadow cast by the shaft of his putter towards the hole, about 25 feet down the slope from the top of the green here on 17, for a birdie that would see him move to three under par and comfortably within the cut line. A bit of breathing space for the defending champion. If this drops, oh, just tickles the left-hand side of the hole and runs on by a good two or three feet or so. Some work to do for John Rahm to save his par now and to stay at four over. Ali. Uh, Rory McIlroy, Trish, has, has missed the 17th fairway. It looked like the fairway wood in his hand rather than the driver away to the right-hand side. Oh. Mate. oh, Victor Hovland, what's he done? Victor Hovland... That's on the 15th green, isn't it? Missed the putt. The ball ended up like a foot beyond the hole. He went to tap it in with his right hand, John, and he's missed it and had to go back and put another one out. That's a double bogey seven, I think. Yeah, it is. It is. Wow. Yeah. And, and also, after that, he, he threw, threw his ball in the water in the least angry way I've ever seen. <laughs> he just sort of tossed it yeah. over arm. Yeah, it, it wasn't with the Tyrrell Hatton fury from earlier on this afternoon. Strange thing to see, though. Professional golfer at the Masters, Trish. Oh, I've never. Well, I've only ever seen that one time before, and that's Mickelson when he was uh, basically playing hockey with a ball. And he was making it, yeah, he yeah. was making a point. But I don't know. I've, uh, the, the last person on earth I thought I'd see do that would be Victor Hovland. Uh, it was extraordinary, and yeah. it must have just finally got to him. So Rory McIlroy's got problems as well. Four over par, projected cut line at five over par, and he's missed that 17th fairway away to the right. It even looked like the ball struck one of those tall, thin pines and maybe went back the way as well. So we wait for confirmation to see exactly where that has ended up. And then McIlroy and Scheffler will play their second shots up towards the 17th green. Cat Downs is there. Yeah. Matt Fitzpatrick just rolling one in from about six feet away to save his par, doing the business. Matt Fitzpatrick, no hanging around on rails towards the hole, and he's given a really good read to John Rahm here, Andrew McGee. Yeah, John Rahm here to remain at four over. A little cushion for the 18th to make this cut. He needs to make this. You want a cushion, you'd make the cut. You don't want to be on the cut line, do you? Make it tough, because 18 is very difficult. John Rahm over his putt, backstroke, ball on its way. He's missed it. He pushed it to the left and it's gone round behind the hole and John Rahm, the defending champion, grey trousers, green top with the azaleas etched all over it, stands and just pinches the bridge of his nose in frustration, taps it in and he's bending down with an air of resignation, stares at the hole with bitterness in his eyes and off he marches back uh, towards his caddy with the putter in his hand. Matt Fitzpatrick standing with his hands in his pocket, looks a bit chilly. He is from Sheffield, I think he's feeling the cold. Cold a little, though, the Yorkshireman. Oh, get out in the sun. You're over in the shadows. I love this tour player action. John Rahm looking at the looking at the green like it's the green's fault. You know, he misread it, and it's his fault for hitting it poorly. But I love that all tour players do that for the television cameras. Best uh, second shot on this 17th of this three ball, though, for Nick Dunlap, the amateur champion, looking to make the cut at a major championship for the first time, but I don't think he's going to do it. That was a birdie take him to seven over par. If he can pull off some kind of miracle down the 18th, which is not looking very likely in these conditions, he might, might just do it. But it's uh, Fitzpatrick and Rahm marching off to the 18th tee as I look down the fairway here on 17 as the sun dips into my eyes and I can see Scottish Chef of the world number one in the middle of the fairway just about to hit their second shots in Mark. Uh, we've got news of Cam Smith here on 16. Yeah, Cam Smith's tee shot at the par three uh, actually went right but it's landed between the two bunkers and then curled around. So he's, he's, got a, uh, he's got a chip shot to play there from off the front right of the green and it's tricky with the, the flag cut towards the top of the green the uh, the back right uh, but uh, he is there and they are walking towards the green 
with uh, with Victor Hovland, who after his double bogey at the 15th, which has taken him to eight over par, Hovland has hit an excellent shot in there. There was a bit of anger in that. If there wasn't anger in the throwing of the ball into the water, and, uh, and he's put himself actually more or less where Rory McIlroy was, so he has a chance of birdie to get back to seven. Clark and... Uh uh, and uh, Smith uh, walking together, chatting, leaving Hovland ten yards behind uh, with his own thoughts. Ali, uh, Rory McIlroy, we were right about the tee shot, way right at the 17th. He's well over 200 yards away from the 17th green. So, Cat Downs is up there uh, with Andrew McGee, waiting for Rory McIlroy's ball to arrive. They've got absolutely no chance of seeing him here because Trish, there's a, there's a slope to climb, isn't there? The tee shot is meant to climb that slope and sort of get up on the flat. And Scotty Scheffler, I think got about 150 yards to the flag. McElroy's got something like 230, 240 yards from back here, right-hand side of the 17th fairway. And one of the spectator walkways, you very rarely see people back here. No, well, no. I think he's been pretty shocked where he is. I mean, this is a, an extraordinary shot to have to play when you're four over par. He's obviously... You would get a drop of that walkway, but he's decided not to because actually he either likes the lie, for starters, and also if you go further back, it's just making it more and more difficult. So he's got to squeeze this one out a little bit. Possibly he's got some branches just up there that he's got to miss, so squeeze it out low, left to right. He's not sure, is he? No, there's a lot of club in his hand as well. This is not a green that's conducive to hitting in a long iron either. Rory McIlroy, four over par, cut at five over par, in trouble here on the 17th. Cat and Andrew get ready. Rory McIlroy's second shot on its way to you shortly. Takes the club head about a quarter of the way back in preparation. Sets himself, then pushes himself through the iron shot. Looks good in the air. McElroy runs to his left. It's heading towards you, Cat. It's splashed down into the bunker at the front right-hand edge of the green. Those two bunkers just creating a little narrow neck in. And McElroy's ball sent up this puff of white sand that got caught think? by the wind and uh, he's come up short on the 17th here Rory McIlroy needs to get up and down from the bunker to stay at four over par and inside the cut line so my eyes now train back down the fairway back towards the Olympic champion Xander Schauffele who's standing uh, in the middle of the fairway Scotty Scheffler in that little dip that we saw John Rahm play from uh, just a short while ago towards the right hand edge of the fairway but uh, McIlroy did pretty well to get it that far that close from there. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't practice something like that. This is usually a, a short iron coming into this into this really difficult green. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have to see some golf game here with this sand shot. We just saw it from John Rom, or excuse me, who was that that left it way short and they didn't quite get it there. It wasn't Rom. There's was Cantley. So pressure's on. We got to make the cut, Rory. We got to make the cut. A ball has appeared on the green and it is right in the middle of the green and just a couple of paces away from the flag. It is an absolutely superb second shot from, I think, the world number one. And that, no, sorry, that was Xander Schauffele and being corrected in my ear. Thank you very much. And that is uh, the Olympic champion then with a really, really good birdie chance here for Xander Schauffele that would move him to uh, five, I know, Back to level par, sorry, I should say, and uh, he's uh, comfortably inside the cut line anyway. So uh, Xander Schauffele with an absolutely glorious shot into the penultimate hole here on the second day of uh, the Masters and Scheffler's ball just reaching the front edge of the green as well. So uh, the world number one and the co-leader of the Masters at the moment at six under par alongside Bryson DeChambeau and Max Homer at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, he has found the front edge of the green as the uh, wind is tugging at the flag here on 17. Eyes now turning to the tee box on 18, which is a little bit sheltered now and in the lee of the wind, thanks to uh, the knot of spectators that have gathered around there. And I'm looking down through my binoculars towards uh, John Rahm, the defending champion. Grey trousers, green T-shirt with those uh, black azalea flowers etched all over it. And here he goes, that punchy little back swing and the 
aggressive follow through the ball low and long and leaking out towards the left hand side of the fairway shouldn't be in too much trouble down there there are of course those big sprawling bunkers on the turn and Ali I think you can see where it's landed yeah skipping its way through uh, the leaves away to the left hand side of that 18th fairway first cut on the left for John Rahm but no further trouble uh, than that so he's okay on the cut line John Rahm defending champion five over par needs a par up the last Rory McIlroy then walking onto the green here at 17, having found the bunker with his second shot. His drive out of position down the right-hand side of 17. The second shot splashing down into the white sand of the bunker. Head-to-toe cream for McIlroy today, and it has been a struggle for him as I glanced over at the leaderboard to remind myself of the scores. Uh, Xander Schauffele's name has uh, been blown off the leaderboard. I can barely read uh, the end of his name. I can see the S, the C and the H as the rest of the label dangles down from that big white leaderboard. Roy McElroy, four over par, the cut at five. Needs an up and down from the sand here, Andrew. Yes, he's looking at it. He's got this same shot we saw Cantley hit earlier. He's got to fly it halfway to the hole, take the ridge, downwind, balls in the air. Oh, yes, yeah, sit now, right? Oh, lovely. Will the spin just left of the hole, five feet, excellent. And now Maury McElroy has about five feet then to save his par. But these aren't the distances that he's been making today. Heard Trish Johnson saying he's missed four or five from this distance, and that's really what's cost him today. Well, I mean, I can say the wind is buffeting and it's hard to stay still, but um, he's missed too many to really believe all that. Um, let's, uh, let's see if we can make that. Let's go to John. Yep, in the last group out on the course, Andrew on the 16th, Cam Smith, one under par. He's got a tester here to stay at one under par. This from six feet or so for his par three, and he has holed it. It was a little longer than that. It might have been eight feet, actually, but he rolled it in very nicely, the Australian, and he remains at one under par, and he'll be heading your way very shortly up the 17th. Yes, the final groups coming through these closing holes here as the sun dips down towards the horizon. We're just about to lose it. Golden and bright from the blue sky heading down towards the tops of those fir trees, reaching up towards... Uh, a couple of fluffy white clouds that are appearing as we head towards the end of the day here at Augusta, Georgia. And Scotty Scheffler, the world number one, casting a really long shadow towards the hole. The ball coming up 40 feet or so over the crest of a ridge on the green. And this looks incredibly Ooh. good from Scotty Scheffler, the man who struggled with putting whilst dominating the game of golf. And with a putter like that, oh you wouldn't bet against him, would he? He's put it a couple of feet past for his par but that was a good birdie attempt from chef of the co-leader yeah it's amazing how many how many putters have become famous at augusta was it was it faldo that made everything with a with a mallet putter one year and everybody went out and bought that particular putter you know it's uh, maybe uh, the u.s open wyndham clark made a bunch of putts with that putter everybody went and bought that putter but of course this scotty scheffler almost hold it from what 50 feet crazy yeah, he's been uh, working with his new putter for the past few weeks or so. Those back-to-back -back wins for him on the PGA Tour, including, of course, the players' title, back-to-back -back players' titles for the first time in history. And then the, the runner-up a couple of weeks ago in Texas. Many people said it could have been because of the beard. He had the beard for the first two wins and then he shaved it off. Why would you do in that? In Texas and came second, but the beard is back. And the putter is hot once again for Scotty Scheffler. Is it the same for Rory McIlroy? Putting for par from five feet up the hill towards the hole here. Lightest of touches and in for Rory McIlroy. Safely done. He's safely navigated the 17th. It's been a real roller coaster for Rory today. He's got one more hole to navigate and currently one shot inside the cut line, but not the day he'd have been hoping for. Scotty Scheffler, well, he has played some tenacious golf. Couple of uh, drop shots, couple of birdies. Six under par, level par for his day. The world number one down on his haunches. White trousers, navy blue, long sleeve top, white baseball cap. And uh, about the same kind of length as we saw from Rory McIlroy. And the same kind of length we saw Matt Fitzpatrick sink a few moments ago and Scotty Scheffler does just the same. And it goes for par for the 2022 Masters champion. 
you just you just can't imagine him missing a short putt like several weeks ago. I mean, he's just he's just holding him right in the middle. They're not lipping in. They're not lucky. They're going right in the middle. And how could he? Would he miss a tiddler a couple of weeks ago in the final hole? I'm like what? <laughs> oh, here we go. A birdie. We got a birdie putt. Very very nice. Andrew Shoffley just plodding along, doing his Xander Shoffley shuffle. Can I say that? Yes, you can. Okay. Well, it's it's not easy, but you did. I did it. I did it, and here we go. The long shot. Is that the longest shot I've ever seen? It starts there. It's 30 yards long, maybe 40, where his head is almost touching the patrons way down there. Okay, downwind, downhill. Just touch it, touch it. Easy? Yes. And it goes for Xander Shoffley, and that's one of very few birdies we've seen on 17. The wind perhaps dropping just a touch as... Uh, the world number one, Rory McIlroy as well, and Xander Shoffley, the Olympic champion, heading off to the 18th tee. Looking back down the course, we'll see uh, Wyndham Clark, Victor Hovland and Cam Smith appearing over the crest of the hill shortly. But uh, Xander Shoffley is just chasing down Rory McIlroy and uh, Scotty Scheffler as they head to the last. Scheffler at six under par. DeChambeau in the clubhouse alongside Max Homer at six under par. Scotty Scheffler has one hole to try and claim the outright lead here on day two of the uh, 88th Masters mark. Just going to go back up to 18. I think Alistair Bruce Ball will be watching this as well. But it looks like a former champion, another former champion, will be going home this weekend for after a, a terrible final hole. Well, it's interesting. You're talking Hideki Matsuyama's just taken a double bogey six up the 18th to move out to six over par. The projected cut line still at the moment is at five over par. But Ian Carter, our golf correspondent, is just back in from the golf course, having spent his afternoon at Amen Corner, back here with us in the studio. And you were just saying to me, Ian, if John Rahm were now to bogey the last and move to six over par, then six over par, is that right, will become the cut line and a whole load of players are going to get in that didn't think they were going to be here for the weekend. Exactly. There are 50 players at... Uh, well, in fact, the cut line has moved. It has moved to that six over par mark because there are now 50 players at six over par. Well, there are, in fact, 61 players at six over par or better. Um, and those at six over par are, are in a share of fifth place. So it looks like the cut has moved to that mark, which gives a little bit of breathing space, obviously, oh for Rory McIlroy and for John Rahm. Oh. And that double bogey... From Justin Thomas. From Justin Thomas has taken him out to yeah. seven over par. Yeah. But the double bogey of Hideki Matsuyama contributed to that shift in the leaderboard and allowing the six so overs to make you, it. Do you have, just out of interest for Justin Thomas, he came down 15 with, with myself and John level... What on earth has happened on 15, 16, so, 17 and 18? Double bogey at the 16th, so took a five at the 16th, has bogeyed the 17th and sure. then has double bogeyed the 18th. And we've got Matt Fitzpatrick in sight in the middle of the 18th fairway at one under par. That's just five shots off the lead. Approach shot into the 18th green. Trish has just hit the bank on the left-hand side of the green and tumbled away to the left just in front of the, uh, the patrons' feet who've got their seats planted there all afternoon watching the action close up. Yeah, not the best, uh, not the best shot he's ever hit, but to be honest, it's one of the better shots we've seen into 18 in the last hour or so. So John Rahm at five over now. Cut mark is at six over. Left-hand side of the 18th in the shadow of the bushes and the trees fearsome swipe clatter of ball towards the green hits the upslope in the middle of that green and rolls all the way to the back of the green and we've seen trouble up there for the likes of Danny Willett and Bryson DeChambeau earlier on today yeah that's not easy it's uh, you'd expect him to get down in two from there he knows probably that five over is going to be the cut. You just get a, a feel of things. They might even be on the leaderboard. It might tell them that it'll be five over. Uh, but obviously, it's six at this moment in time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be a tough two-putt. I just remember 12 months ago, Justin Thomas capitulating <coughs> around the cut line on uh, the Saturday as it was. And by doing that, he missed the cut and brought Tiger Woods in and maintained Tiger ah, Woods' record sure. that enabled him to make the cut, albeit to withdraw later through injury. Uh, and Cam he was in tears, Justin Thomas, at that time. Now this. Yeah. I well, mean, he goodness. looked not far off tears there on the pictures yeah. I, I was seeing. Cat. 
Just watching Xander Chauflet teeing off after making that birdie on uh, the 17th. This one looking at nice murmurs of appreciation from the patrons down the 18th. And the indication is that that is straight down the middle, Ali. Can you see straight it? Straight down the middle indeed, right in the heart of the 18th fairway. That's the tee shot from the back of that long, narrow 18th tee. All you can really see are those two bunkers, the white sand away to the left. You can't really see the, the 18th fairway, which hides away to the right-hand side. So that's the shape the right-handers are trying to hit. And now, Kat, uh, it's Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, the world number one. One more chance then to get to the top of the leaderboard on his own. Currently in a three-way tie at the top alongside Bryson DeChambeau and Max Homer at six under par. He's been playing steady, patient golf. The world number one, the 2022 champion. That one heading down towards the left-hand side, I'd guess, Ali, as it lands. Yeah, no, that's safe as houses as well. It's come up maybe 10... 15, 20 yards short of the bunker on the left-hand side. As soon as he hit that, Scotty Scheffler knew that was OK. You heard the uh, the polite applause from the uh, the horseshoe of spectators that lined themselves all the way along the length of that 18th tee. And now Rory McIlroy. Yeah, just picked out in uh, cream, a shaft of sunlight slicing through the spectators and uh, bringing out a glow on those cream shoulders of Rory McIlroy, who just backs away from the ball, gust of wind perhaps, and he won't know, will he, that the cut has drifted out to six over par and that he's comfortably inside at four over par. Can't afford to make any mistakes, and we've seen a number of double bogeys squandering chances oh up this God. final oh, and that looks absolutely awful from Rory McIlroy he's let go of the club with one hand that one looked like it was flying off to the right hand side I think Ali yeah I've no idea where that has ended up but as you say let go of the club Trish that's gone flying off to the right and lap of the guy I mean you've no idea I, how far that's gone I don't think it's gone anywhere yeah. I think he's got absolutely bundles in there I think that's hit the trees probably not that far off of the uh, off the tee box maybe 150 180 yards off the tee box he's going to if he's lucky enough to have a shot at all he's He's not going to be able to reach the green, no chance whatsoever. It was almost like he heard something at the top of his backswing, you know, someone shouting or something like that, the way he looked round afterwards. Weird, and it? just It was a weird is the word. Uh, Matt Fitzpatrick uh, chipping onto the 18th green from the left-hand side, one under par, right in contention for this year's 88th Masters. He's knocked that into about 10 feet, uh, sort of around taking the curvature of the slopes behind the pin. It's all the way over to the right-hand side of the green and 10 feet. Uh, on the way back and I would say he was chuntering away there uh, Trish doesn't look best pleased there uh, uh, yeah so definitely a words of um, not too chuffed with, with himself with Billy with life I think, not sure I think Trish his demeanour has changed since here at 15 he walked up to what he thought was his ball and realised it wasn't it was Nick Dunlap's and his had gone into the water and, and nobody at that stage was able to tell him where or why it had gone into the water. And I think th since then, that may have just changed his demeanour. Well, to be fair, and, and I, you know, you, I, can't, I didn't see the shot. We obviously, none of us really saw the shot, but if you lay up into water, then um, unfortunately uh, the caddy tends to take uh, most of the abuse because that's just a no-no. So even, <laughs> even though you've hit it. Well, absolutely, because he's given you the number. <laughs> no, but no, you, no, no, no. You but you've hit it. I don't think I'd be a very good caddy. I don't think you would, Chippers, no. no. goodness. I don't think you take the abuse that's required. <laughs> I'd be dropping the bag at your feet and go <laughs> carry it yourself. Um, <laughs> I've had that done to me, don't you worry. <laughs> Defending champion John Rahm, putting for birdie, outside, outside chance of birdie, uh, from the top step at the back of the 18th green. Got to be at least 40 feet prods the ball down the slope picks up speed as it takes the slope towards the hole here we go oh hits the right hand edge of the hole John Rahm very nearly makes an outrageous birdie on the 18th he should be able to tap that in for par and that will keep him at five over par and he's going to be here for the weekend as the defending champion what a putt oh, it was a sensational putt wasn't it I mean really we all thought that was in no question about it and do you know what short. Trish his demeanour has changed since here on 15 when he, he sank his putt on 15 and then a long birdie putt on 16 so the gist of it is it's either you or John yeah absolutely that are getting to these just, players one way or another things. isn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kat hello 
How are you? Uh, <laughs> just Good time. An unexpected cat out, out of nowhere. Thanks, Chappers. I just wonder what Cam Smith was doing on 17. Cam Smith had a moment of magic. It was one of those chips oh. that just puts the fear into any amateur golfer. You, your ball comes up just short of a bunker. You've got to pick it up and put it over the sand. Then you've got to get some kind of control on the ball because it's such a steep slope coming down towards the hole. Cam Smith, he's a good golfer, we decided, didn't we, Andrew McGee? He picked it up over the sand, landed it halfway between the, 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 the hole and the, and the edge of the bunker, and it just crept gently down the hill and came to rest a couple of inches from the hole. It was spectacular. <laughs> just a tap in, he's off to the side of the green, just quietly watching, just scratching his face like that wasn't a big deal. Really easy for Cam Smith, just a, a tap in for his par. He stays at uh, one under par, the uh, Open champion from a couple of years ago at St Andrews. And uh, Wyndham Clark now putting for a birdie that would uh, see him slip inside the cut line. Currently six over par, the US Open champion. And he's left that well short. Oh, he's left it six feet short. That is no way to try to make the cut there. What What is he at? Eight over? Six over, Rory McIlroy. Rory McIlroy, oh guys. Uh, right so of the 18th, playing his second shot. Fairway Wood having a right old thrash at that, trying to turn it round the corner. The ball will have hit the trees on the way up out of that corridor from the 18th tee. They've not even shown us where that ball has ended up, but he was trying to work it away from the right-hand side, short of the 18th, up into a position that he can attack the green and try and knock it on in three. Remember, McIlroy. Uh, at the moment uh, is currently at four over par, five over for his round today. So if he pars this 18th, that's going to be a 77 today in the second round of the Masters. Ian. So on the 18th, it's Matt Fitzpatrick, this four apart to finish his round from around about 10 feet, sending it on its way, shaving the right edge of the hole. And he offers up his right hand in frustration and he utters a couple of oaths and then bends down and marks his ball. I think he will just uh, finish off here, and that means he will finish at level par, and it's kind of like yesterday when his round promised so much, but then just ran out of steam towards the end, and that's set back on the 15th, and now the bogey on the 18th means that he go, reaches the halfway stage at level par. A first round 71, a second round 73. So, Matt Fitzpatrick, that puts him six shots off the lead, held by Max Homer in the clubhouse at six under par, alongside fellow American Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler coming up the 18th. Drive off the 18th tee, found the middle of the fairway. Cap, what's happening with you on the 17th? Wyndham Clark hoping to uh, slide this one in for a par after leading, leaving his long range birdie putt very short. John Ellis, the caddy, just they've always got this uh, little routine, he and John Ellis, where John Ellis comes along, they read the, the, the line together from all angles, and then John Ellis comes along with a wedge and just slides the face of the wedge behind the ball to show Wyndham Clark the line. How does that work? Um, I'm not really sure, but Wyndham Clark is looking all around, looking at the wind. He's noticed the six over projected cut on the board over here. This is a big putt for him. Let's go to Ali. John Rahm tapping in on the 18th, defending champion, picks the ball out of the hole, pops it in his pocket, takes the baseball cap off his head, ruffles the dark hair on top of his head and goes for the handshakes uh, of his playing partners and their caddies. Not best pleased with that. Rye grinned to himself, but he's here for the weekend, John. John Rahm, Champions Dinner, he hosted on Tuesday night. It's going to take some going to become champion again uh, this year. Hard work for John Rahm today, but five over par here for the weekend, a full 11 shots off the lead as he marches his way off the back of the 18th green. Ian? There's quite a little byplay there between John Rahm and Billy Foster, the caddy of Matt Fitzpatrick, and I may be misinterpreting this, but the kind of bemused look on Rahm's face as he was looking at Billy Foster suggested that um, potentially um, he had some sympathy for a, whatever um, admonishments might have been coming from Fitzpatrick, who seemed very animated after he'd finished his round. Well, he was, Ian, he was still, he was still, wasn't he? To, talking to Billy Foster oh, was, and, yeah. and gesturing at Billy Foster once he'd completed his round, picked the ball out of the hole. I mean, he was still going, Billy Foster just yeah. kind of looked into, I mean, 
didn't he's even had... make eye contact with him. He just looked into the distance with his arms crossed. Yeah, no, no disrespect to Matt Fitzpatrick, but he's had bigger stars than no. Matt Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Have a go at him on <laughs> green. Yeah. Caddy for Seve, uh, amongst others. Right, Scotty Scheffler, world number one, with the long sleeve dark blue top on now. Sleeves sort of pulled up almost to the elbow, just to free the arms up. White golf glove on his hand. Pine cones strewn at his feet. They've been tumbling from the tops of the tall pines all afternoon at Augusta. It's, it's an incredible picture. The setting sun, that sort of golden tinge that it's put on everything. Trees are swaying in the breeze. Important shot for Scotty Scheffler. Hasn't had it all his own way this afternoon. Three bogeys, three birdies. Level par for the round today. 167 yards up the hill to the 18th green. Seven iron in his hand. Stands over the ball. He was distracted initially, but he's ready to go and sends it high, arcing towards the TV towers behind that 18th green. Lands in the left channel of that 18th green, climbs the slope up towards the top tier. Trish and stays there. Yeah, and that'll be a tricky putt because it's on the left-hand side. It's not even sort of straight where we've seen most players coming down the hill like John Rahm. He's going to have a huge break to begin with, which is going to be massively left to right and then maybe just come back a little bit at the end. Here on 15, there are so many players today that have laid up. They haven't gone for the green in two, although Tiger was one of the ones that did, but most laid up uh, and then took a third into the green. That obviously there are, there are a lot of marks on the fairway, maybe sort of within 100 yards of the green. And there are at least a dozen members of staff here with buckets of green sand and little cups to be able to tip out into all of those small divots and little pitch marks that they just need to fill in here so that everything looks green on the telly and now the 12 of them are working their way back up the fairway to where the players hit their second shots it just gives you an idea into all of the work that is done here as soon as a hole is completed for the day back to 17 which has finished cat it has finished Wyndham clark victor hovland cam smith now standing waiting their turn on the 18th tee Wyndham clark i have to say he was lining up that to six uh, feet or so putt for his par and he looked to his left I don't know whether he was testing for the wind or just waiting for a leaf to make its way across the green but he looked up to his left and he must have caught his eye on the big white leaderboard to the left and saw that the projected cut had moved to six and then all of a sudden that putt became so important to him backed off it he thought about it over again and he just seemed to overthink it and he pushed the putt and it missed and now he slipped to seven over par so he needs to make a birdie on the last if he's to make it into the weekend and a Masters debut that promised so much for the US Open champion is currently hanging by a thread. Victor Hovland he managed to make his par, eight under par Victor Hovland though it's been a really dreadful day for him after a good opening day yesterday and Cam Smith a par for him as well after a beautiful chip from the other side of the bunker onto the green. He is at one under par and just teeing off now on uh, the last hole heading up towards uh, the cabin and the and the big crowds up at the top of the hill mark uh, let's find out uh, where rory went with his second any any ideas trish or uh, ali or ian it looks like it went just down into the gully to the left of the green so he gave it the the absolute kitchen sink and that's exactly where it finished up there's a little horseshoe of spectators that have moved back behind him so they don't get clobbered by his backswing on this delicate little chip here for McElroy. I was trying to think of a colour for his... It's just a very anemic colour for his outfit today. It's almost emulsion, isn't it? Anyway, here he goes and bumps this forward into the bank, not with quite enough impetus, and the ball dribbles <laughs> forward but comes to rest 12, 15 feet short of the cup. So... He's got that for a round of 77, a 78 potentially here for Rory McIlroy on a very windy second day. And the strange thing there is actually when we were seeing that Fitzpatrick was putting, so McIlroy hit his second shot there. He's pretty much green high, isn't he? Because uh, when John Rahm was on that green, we were saying, oh, well, McIlroy must have come up short. <laughs> well, he wasn't. He was pretty much pinned. Good job he didn't nail it and hit it dead straight. Mm. Uh, so, leaderboard, closing stages of the second round of the 88th Masters. Uh, Scotty Scheffler is on this 18th green. Two putts from here, back right of the green, 40 feet or so away. You can see the way he's lining this up, actually, Trish. He's going to have to aim away high above the hole. I mean, a, a good 
oof, I don't know, 20 feet, 25 feet wide of the hole. He's going to try and sort of get it to a certain point on the green, get it to die, lose its pace, and then come tumbling down that hill, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Ali, that's exactly right. It's going to be hugely left to right to begin with. and then it's, So he's picking a spot, basically, about 15, 20 feet in front of him that he wants to get it to, which will be about 10 foot left of the flag, and then just gently let it go down the slope, and it will turn at right angles, and hopefully, if he gets his angles and his pace right... Be good. Here we go. On its way. Roller coaster ride towards the hole on the 18th green. Picks up speed as it takes the slope and it's not going to turn as much as he wants it to and he's leaving himself five or six feet for the par on the 18th green. Joint leader at the moment with Bryson DeChambeau and Max Homer. Scotty Scheffler as well at six under par. Nikolai Hoygaard, the Dane, finished hours and hours ago earlier on today and just two shots off the lead at the Masters on four under par. What a weekend ahead for him. Uh, very, very exciting weekend ahead. The first time that he will have tasted the sharp end of a major at a weekend, but with a, a Ryder Cup experience in his back pocket. Uh, let's see how he copes with that. He's such an exciting talent. Both the, the Hoygaard twins are, one of them plying their trade. Rasmus on the DP World Tour, Nikolai graduating to the PGA Tour after winning the DP World Tour Championship. So a big weekend ahead for him. Now, Rory McIlroy, this for par, this to go into the halfway stage at four over. Sends this forward and in. Well, that's gutsy. That is gutsy from Rory McIlroy. It's been a, a really trying day. He will go away, ruining that 11th hole, not for the first time at Augusta. But that will cheer him up somewhat. It's a round of 77 today for Rory McIlroy to go with his first round 71. It is highly, highly unlikely that he's going to break his master's duck this weekend. But he is going to be there after that 77, which means that he is at four over par. And that is fully 10 shots off the lead at the halfway stage. Yeah, and the irony is kind of not lost on us that when it doesn't really matter, the pace that that putt went in at was just absolutely glorious. And it's the, putt, the, the That pace has not been seen all day long, not the confidence to go and give it a rap like that, and that's the first one he's held all day. Xander Schoffler is only six shots off the lead. If he pops this in, it's just five shots off the lead going into the weekend. Form golfer uh, at the moment, Xander Schoffler with the dark red-headed putter. Two forks that poke out of the back. He's missed that to the left-hand side. Never really moved. He was looking for the left to right turn and it's come off about a, a foot away to the left. So Xander Schoffler will walk round. I imagine he's going to tap that in for par, which he does. Leans forward, prods it in. Good round of golf from Xander Schoffler. Level par, halfway stage, 72. 72, definitely a live contender this weekend. Trish. Without a shadow of a doubt, he's played some really decent golf. Hasn't hold a great deal on the greens, but I think Tita Green today, considering the conditions, he's been one of the top performers. Very impressive. Still looking to win a first major, playing in a, a dark green polo shirt this afternoon. Four-footer then, Scotty Scheffler for the par on the 18th. Mallet-headed putter behind the ball on its way, and in it goes. So Scotty Scheffler, the world number one, the red-hot favourite, stays right at the top of the leaderboard at the halfway stage. 66 in the first round, couldn't be quite as good as that today. Three birdies, three bogeys on the card, level par 72, but exactly where he wants to be. Sun is setting as he marches off the 18th green, and he very much remains the man to beat. Six under par, sharing the lead with Max Homer and Bryson DeChambeau. OK, let's, uh, as we wait for uh, Cameron Smith to finish on 18, let's just bring you a couple of interviews uh, from the day. Seems a very, very long time ago uh, that Tiger Woods finished his round, but uh, he has made the cut. It's the 24th time that he has made the cut at uh, the Masters in a row. That is a new record, and afterwards he was asked what he thought about that. It means I have a chance to go on in the weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I got a chance to, to win the golf tournament. Um, I don't know if they're all going to all going to finish today, but uh, I'm I'm done. I got my uh, my two rounds in. Just need some food and some caffeine. And I'll, I'll be good to go. I'm right there. I'm only what eight back as of right now. Um, I don't think anyone's going to run off and hide right now. But it's really bunched. The way the the ball is moving on the greens, uh, chip shots are being blown. 
it's <laughs> it's it's all you want in a, in a golf course today. Um, I've been off for a while, uh, competing, um, grinding. It's it's a it's been a long 23 holes on a, a long day. Uh, uh, but uh, Lance and I really did some good fighting today, and was um, we got a chance. He's actually seven off the lead now. Uh, he was he was one over, wasn't he, Ian? If I remember rightly, finished that is one correct. over. Yeah, so one over. Yeah. So uh, leaders are six under. So he's seven off the lead. Uh, Cam Smith second at 18, Ali. Yes, into the heart of the 18th green. We've just seen him marching up that 18th fairway, staring maniacally towards the 18th green. But the ball is safely on the putting surface. One under par. So also. Uh, very much a contender over the weekend. Cam Smith, three top five finishes uh, at the Masters for him. So I keep looking out for him this weekend. Victor Hovland, though, don't think going to be here. He has found the 18th green with his second shot. But goodness me, what happened with him and that tiddly little putt on the 15th? Had a swing at that with a, a one-handed effort, missed the hole, and it cost him a, an extra shot, Mark. Yeah, um, no surprise, really, is there, Ian, that, that Tiger's response to what you make to, to, to making your 24th consecutive cut of the Masters isn't, yeah, I'm really pleased about that. It's actually, I have a chance of winning. That is the Tiger Woods psyche. It's remarkable, isn't it? And I, I, I honestly felt that if he gave us that shtick ahead of the, the, the Masters, he would potentially damage his own credibility. And frankly, my thought processes damage my credibility because every time you dismiss that notion that he feels he can still win you actually diss what his psyche is and the psyche that made him such a great champion that's not me saying he's going to go and win the masters or even contend but that's what he feels and that's why he's able to do that i mean to make the cut in those conditions having not played basically having not co completed a tournament for well over a year is is just ridiculous it's it's it, it speaks to someone who is unique in the game um have we got time for Bryson DeChambeau, Ali? I don't have pictures, so I don't know how long this well, is. Well, uh... the, the last group are marching up towards the 18th oh, green. Cam Smith's, of time. Uh, uh, yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here is our co-leader, six under after two rounds. He shot a 73 today, Bryson DeChambeau. I wouldn't say I'm playing it differently necessarily. I, I'm able to hit the golf shots exactly, well, for the most part, where I want them to go. And I'm a little bit more conservative in certain situations. For example, seven today. Normally I'd be like, all right, let's let's hit one really close to the, the flag, but there's just really no place to land it. But by the hole, you, you get a four or five yard area, and you know, Jibo was like, dude, just hit a left, take a 20 footer, and knock it in. And that was one of the first times in my professional career where I stood up there and I said, I'm gonna hit it over here, and I'm gonna make a 20 footer, and I did it. And he was really proud of me actually at that moment. He's like, dude, look at you hitting away from a flag, which is not normal for me. <laughs> So that would be one of the scenarios where I'm playing it strategically a little different and making sure I'm using slopes uh, when I can and trying to take in as much information as I can with the wind and um, use what I've um, accumulated over the past few years. And funny enough, Jibo was uh, in the final round with Tiger in 2019 with Tony Finau. So he, he knows a bit of pressure. He knows and understands the situation. Uh, and having me um, kept calm is always a, a good thing, and he's able to do that really well. Feels Trish Johnson like what we've been saying for the last couple of days. That that, that sums up the new Bryson DeChambeau. Yeah, he sounds very chilled, doesn't he? Very happy, obviously, with his uh, two days' work. And I think in those conditions, I, he's not one of those players that I really feel like in tough conditions like that would be, you know, up at the top of the leaderboard. I just think that you know, short game-wise as well, with his, the, the you know, the, the length of the clubs all being one length, his irons, when he's playing these short shots around Augusta, it must be very, very difficult, especially bunker shots. But he's been, he's, he's obviously looked at a different way of playing the game and uh, it's working for him. And he was very, very good today I must admit and he looks in a he looks in a good place both professionally and personally Cam Smith and Ali yeah Cam Smith can definitely tell it's him because there's a big yellow yardage chart sticking out of the uh, the back pocket of his trousers and in bold block red capitals says Smith 
uh, on the back of it, just to confirm that that is the Australian uh, with the mullet, the long hair poking out of the back of the white baseball cap. He's at one under par. Interesting putt coming, actually, on this 18th green for the US Open champion, Wyndham Clark. Downhiller from about 12 feet at seven over for a birdie, though. So if he can make that, that would get him in uh, for the weekend. So let's see what happens with that one a little bit later on. But Cam Smith, just five shots are off the lead. Trish, in terms of this putt, Scotty Scheffler, it's sort of similar, but he won't have to aim quite as far left, will he, as Scheffler? No, and, and we've seen this putt, or and any putt from the top here, everybody has misread it. They keep thinking it's going to go left to right, and at the end, it goes right to left. So everybody is playing this way too much left to right break, and I've got a funny feeling Cam Smith is going to do exactly the mm -hmm. same. Here we go then, Cam Smith looking to get the perfect pace, sets it on its way, rolling down the slope. It's going to miss on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. Perfect for pace actually rolls up, cozies itself up and parks next to the hole. Foot and a half or so for Cam Smith to deal with. Taps that in and he'll be in at one under par. Five shots off the lead. So Cam Smith on that green with Victor Hovland and Wyndham Clark. So we're just waiting to see whose turn it is to putt next. Hovland is at eight over par, so his chances of making the cut, having played two shots on this hole, Ian, already gone. Yep, they've gone. He's had too many shots already. And uh, how he's going to rue that very careless one-handed putt from a couple of inches on the 15th. He puts across the green for birdie on the 18th and the ball just stays up on the high side and it's a disappointing Masters for the Norwegian an 81 today and he finishes at 8 over par had a treble bogey on the par 5 second today and then that swipe at the ball which cost him a double bogey on the 15th yeah strange uh 71 81 i bet yes the last time he did that was a good few years ago to say the very least and a very happy chappy in general but that's as miserable as i've ever seen victor hovland look on a golf course he always has a cheery look on his face but yeah. that's utter misery that's written all across his visage right now so victor hovland won't be here for the weekend at the masters wyndham clark has a chance though to play the last two rounds of this tournament he's got to hold this putt coming down the slope just inside 15 feet and it's a putt again, Trish, that we've been talking about all day, haven't we? What's, what's, what's... Well, this one is slightly different angle. This is the one that everybody just thinks is going to break right to left and just seems to hang out on the right-hand side. So it's pretty straight, this one. Most players have just let this just feed out on the right and miss it there. So he, I think he needs to start this just left-centre. He's a gutsy character. Yeah, this is the man who had that putt lip out to get into the playoff at the Players' Championship. Ball on its way down the 18th, heading for the hole, misses on the right, and he won't be here for the weekend. Millimetres away, just gliding by on the right-hand side. Par for Wyndham Clark, had a great try at that, but not going to be here. Uh, on the weekend of his very first Masters, he'll be hugely disappointed with that. Finishes at seven over par. Cam Smith, Ian, uh, taps in for his par. He's at one under. Yep, the cap comes off the head, and uh, there it is, a level par 72 today. That is really, really good play in what were as difficult conditions, without rain, certainly, that I think any of us uh, have, have experienced and witnessed um, here uh, at Augusta, and we've got a fair few moments masters between us haven't we Ludwig Ober only man I think to break 70 69 today yeah. Patrick Reed shot a 70 and no one else better than that 71 and above for everyone else Mark yeah tough old day for the golfers a dramatic day for the rest of us it has ebbed and it has flowed and it is a tight leaderboard with plenty of storylines for you to follow throughout the course of the weekend thank you to the whole team here at augusta thank you to you for listening such a busy day of sport across five live tomorrow including the grand national which gets underway at four o'clock we'll have updates from here at the masters throughout the course of the afternoon on five live sport and then we will have full commentary uninterrupted on five live at one six oh six is done from nine o'clock so updates throughout the afternoon but we'll see you uninterrupted from nine o'clock tomorrow evening sleep well